right, you get to look at me looking around like an idiot as I try and restart this thing in all the places. Where's Twitter? All right, you get to look at me looking around like an idiot as I try and restart this thing in all the places. Where's Twitter? It's working on it, guys. I gotta add the, the title card. Customization. Save. And customization. Save. Customization. Okay, this time it defaulted to live chat replay, which is good. I had to set it on the other one. Got subscribers. Okay, this time it defaulted to live chat replay, which is good. Pop out chat. Gonna get my new chat window. Pop out chat. Chat window. Okay. All right. Let me get this. Uh, did I post that on Twitter? All right. Let me get this. I did tweet that. Okay. Did I post that on Twitter? It's doing the echo thing again. Stupid. I don't know, I'm gonna start it going anyway while you guys are here. Tales from my D&D &D campaign. Previously. They are all casters? At least they're all using oh, fire. Uh, we can take yeah, them. I found they the echo. Hurt us. Easy for you to say. I think it's time to teach y'all some respect. Back. <laughs> I have made him vulnerable. So, did he teach them some respect? So he can't transform? Is that what we missed? Get out of my way, you little shits. He can he's so rude. Transform. But those rooms are gone. Black. Black. I think Sirius is telling me. There should be no echo now. Yet. Did she sound a lot like a wand of cure light wounds? Wait a sec. Are you going to try to count this for our bargain? No. To interpret this as one battle of your choosing would be against the spirit of our agreement. Regardless, it sounds as though our interests oh, may is. coincide regarding the uh, vampires. We may oh, contact yeah. you again. After their return from the strange and perilous Feywild, the party's first days back were not completely uneventful. The first night after the plane shift, Draven was right out there observing the stars. He wasn't hauling around Observe any those stars, Draven. astronomical instruments, but he didn't need a big fancy telescope to locate the star corresponding to where the Tall One had placed a pebble in the sky of another plane. But like any good wealthy int-based arcanist with extra-dimensional storage space, Draven did have his basic star charts, and they confirmed that star shouldn't be there. Or at least, it hadn't been there in the past. That's insane! I wonder what the fox that's all about. In the morning, Angel had a surprise of her own. Last time they were in Bankton, the party had picked up minor magic traveling cloaks with Endure Elements enchantments against the cold. They also conjure hot and cold drinks, and even transform into weather-resistant tents. Those cloaks yeah. are such a good bargain when for the price. you wake up, your cloak is gone, Angel. The hell? <laughs> oh, After yeah. some investigation, they figure out that <laughs> Angel's new self-repairing outfit had actually absorbed the lesser magic item. The old guy's clothes ate her the, cloak? The weirdness just absorbed. never it ends, ever. that the brown ever. and checkered outfit, crafted <laughs> with the fragments of two unwilling souls, could consume other magical clothing. 
But in the process, those same clothes took on the absorbed item's powers. Using the traveling cloak would still occupy Two the same magic item Two threads are better than one. Good, good achievement. Would, yep. But as the outfit absorbed more items, Angel would be able to almost instantly switch between different cloth items which occupy any given slot. This is such cool. a cool power. It's not cool, it's creepy. Your soul clothes <laughs> eat other magic items. Absorb. That is actually very cool. And also creepy. When they got the Kalana Dialia back to the Basilica, several of the Hand's artificers lent their aid to Draven for a while, helping him to upgrade gear and work more on his theories regarding the Astral Plague. Among the gear he crafted were upgrades to give his artificing goggles dark vision, and adding the haste property to Angel's armor, which could give her an extra attack a couple times a day, as well as making her a weapon crystal. Gotta get that dark vision item, because you don't want, want to be the only person army. Like, which in the, in the world, the only PC in the world who doesn't have dark armor, vision, just because you're swap human. It instantly with what you're wearing. That way, I can use light or heavy armor depending on the situation. Better. And maybe go between two-handed style and shield. Why would you need two of the rings, though? Do you need a third set of equipment? I'm going to send one to Chrysanthemum as a courting gift. Ah, interesting. She was running back and forth, like, I need my good armor, and she doesn't seem like the type to care about flowers and jewelry Always and thinking. stuff. thinking. Seems like Still. a really good gift for her. Sounds pretty damn good to me. And you know she doesn't have one. See, I've been thinking about taking leadership when I level up. Me too. Eventually, I want to recruit some kind of force to take the war Party to the Luvians, all leadership but all the now time. I'm wondering, Maybe if a I managed to marry Chrysanthemum, would I be able to take her on as my cohort? Assuming you were successful in courting her, I don't see why not, apart from the danger to your significant other. I'm pretty sure she'd be fine with the danger part. I don't know how she'd feel about the relationship part. I'll probably recruit a henchman from the organization. Future plans aside... They had Draven uh, and his helpers. I, I think working most of the cinematic the things the laboratories of the basilica that are not bad guy Kiswell, vision who kept are things that every now and then. I read the players, players but I mean, obviously, the, the, the stuff that none of the characters Black, are present for, very unless it's being told to them as a legend or something, series, they probably don't see it. Nothing about what was to be done with the amulet beyond some vague notion of giving humankind a way to combat the dreaded Kuatoa monitors. Wild Reason's crafting and stuff, I want to poke around. See if I can learn any more Wild about Wild Reason's crafting, if according to the subtitles. Uh, roll a skill check. Yeah, I got 30. Sounds like an Etsy store. Wow, okay. Well, you start chatting up a few of the staff of the Basilica. Most of the people you ask don't seem to know anything about the amulet Angel, or the program. Angel, chatting up the staff of the Basilica people, for information. Artificers, Where would you get information, heard of it. Angel? So they naturally veer away from the who, subject. Who would be willing to talk to you? They clam up quickly as soon as they realize you're trying to learn more about it. Without drawing too much attention to yourself, it's hard to go much further down that track. You do at least get the idea that it's a project they've been working on gradually for a very long time. By human standards. But with the little bits of information you've gleaned, you're well positioned to spend some time talking to Thiswell, who is likely your best avenue for this information. You should sleep with him. No. I do draw the <laughs> line somewhere. When Angel visits Thiswell's office, close to the main labs in the Artificer's Wing of the Basilica's underground complex, he's already interrupting her before she can get through a greeting. Good news! We've been able to positively confirm that the artifact you recovered is, in fact, with certainty, the Kalana Dialia. It's a fascinating story, though there are still major gaps in the timeline. Now, I am taking into account your gather information role in this, but what do you want to ask him? When will the project be ready to use? Okay, so you're implying that you know more than you do, that you're somewhat in the loop? Thiswell seems to be having a very hard time answering that question, not just figuring out how much he can divulge, but actually answering it. I can't really give an ETA, but it has come a long way over the last generation. Now that I'm involved, and with the artifact <laughs> you and your friends recovered, the project should be completed much sooner than expected. They have high hopes of soon showing the Trouts that the invincible monitors can be beaten by humans. With a little gnomish help, right? Of course. <laughs> to avoid pushing too much all at once, she backtracks in the conversation and asks him what he obviously wants to be asked. So what have you learned about the amulet's path? Yeah, I'd like to hear that. According to Thiswell's research, soon after King Calvoras fell, in the Battle of Red Rock, last major action of the Shatter War, someone grabbed it. We know this because it was less than a half hour later that the Prince and other surviving Alliance leaders returned for his body and found the Divine Necklace missing. Records have surfaced from two centuries later, so a little over 800 years ago, when accounts and descriptions indicate that some people suspected the Kalana to have been worn by a half-elf named Valmont. 
Valmont, the bastard son of a count in the royal court of Corstrad, had seduced multiple women of the court, stringing along at least Valmont, three outstanding and well-placed women at the same time, including a countess and a duchess, both married. They say his game only fell apart when he tried to add a fourth to his harem. The fallout and squabbling this <laughs> caused is arguably one of the final straws in the disintegration of the kingdom of Corstrad, which was already fighting two minor secessionist claims against the weak heir of the Corstradi bloodline of the Sons of Smith. The amulet was confiscated when Falmont was arrested by one of the woman's husbands, and the half-elf was hung, though it's unclear what charges were laid, or if there was a trial at all. But his captors Lovely. didn't recognize the amulet for what it was, and it was soon stolen by an unknown man who rose to become known as the King of Rogues, creator of a so-called Thieves' Guild that ruled half the highways of Corstrad for 20-some years during the height of the feudal wars. By the, the way, the, had to court his criminal the King of Rogues to have any is hope of yet another example of, and soon every side like, of the conflict was paying him off. So ma so there's the so King many historical figures that are the uncredited tribes, as being female. The King of Rogues was actually a woman. She called tribes, herself the King of Rogues after, to throw everyone off. This, <laughs> he was devoured by a giant bear of the sort which was a thing of myth or legend. Few at the time believed it, thinking it was a tale to cover up his murder by a jealous or ambitious lieutenant, though of course, centuries later, such dire beasts, and worse, were to become commonplace in the barbaric northern wastes. From there, the Kalana passed out of our knowledge for some time, resurfacing about 370 years ago in the Feywild. Our people became aware of it because it was used by Rylona, that renegade whisper gnome who led the Blackwood Treants. Oh yeah, thanks to the I keep forgetting this thing even happened. Her twisted but, yeah. revenge campaign was able to threaten all gnomes, not to mention the other races who eventually joined us in the Pact of Jeremiah. You know the rest. By allying temporarily with the Woodwobes, Lizard Folk, and a few of the Batine, we managed to fight off the Blackwoods. But Rylona escaped. She did, yet was found dead several months later without the amulet. The trail beyond that grows very murky, and I won't bore you with all my guesswork and speculation, but I'm glad to see my detective work and theories proven correct overall. That was great work you did. Angel wasn't able to learn much else about the project for now. But soon after, they were contacted again by the Rajs. Yes? In the wake of your encounter with Mordival, our analysis has uncovered an opportunity for you which may prove mutually beneficial. We're listening. You've been to we the Feywild and didn't like it. The Maybe you prefer the Shadowfell. Spirit shackles, one of the physical sites of the rituals which grant vampire kings a spirit It's like power. the opposite, Breaking so you should love it, right? Shackle would damage Swain's bond to the Denevan Aerolach. The what? A spirit of darkness. You would consider it a gargantuan, ravaging shadow monster. It is an ancient undead power, a being of darkness with no fear of the sun. The nature of the its name didn't even Aerolock is just made up living, out of nowhere. I don't know, like the struggle between it just sounds mysterious and surmise, it would be like, turned against either the denizens of the Underdark or whatever another it, plane. It, it, it you sounds right. Fight this thing? No. The monster, just, as you would call like it, will be quite not far to mess from your with. position. But losing this node should either cause Swain to lose control of the creature, or force him to devote more effort to maintain his hold. Weakening his grip elsewhere. Okay, what's in it for us? If you set forth in the next few days, we estimate over an 80% chance that, at the time of your arrival, this particular shackle will be guarded by a band of Swain's deadly riders, three dangerous horrors who rely more upon trinkets and might of arms than one such as Mortival. I like those big block so font the titles. you're offering is a They're difficult kind of nice. fight? A fight against well-equipped enemies. <laughs> hmm. I like it. If the treasure is their gear, some of it's bound to be useful. Little one likes it. know so much, what happened to Zaheer? We do believe that the shepherd was taken to the Shadowfell somehow, but our prognostication in the Deadlands is very incomplete, disrupted by the gaps created by the many spirit shackles. Each spirit shackle grants the king a degree of clairvoyance <laughs> over an extended area around it, while blocking out other divinations. They also create an area where extraplanar transit is barred. 
And of course, Swain knows so the no one listening asks, how many planes has the party been to? Martin's fellow is like four, appear which you instinctively think would be wrong in this setting because you can. There are only but three planes you're supposed to be able to go to, but an opportunity for us to due to a certain ninth level equivalent ability, they did temporarily get banned, like for very briefly, get banished to the plane of shadow, which is not a place you're supposed to go. I do need dirt samples from the Shadowfell for my research into the Astral Plague. Will we have to go into the Underdark? Although this shackle is underground, it is not connected to the Endless Depths. Been, Been there, there, done, done that. that. What I want to know is, who are these enemies you keep mentioning? They are the enemies of yeah. all living things. The rulers of the oceans of the Shadowfell. They've been there, done no that of the, the Underdark is of something of the an overestimate hunters. of what they experienced. Mind like in those comic books? The Mind Hunters are extremely powerful and dangerous. They hate the existence of sentient thought other than themselves. They can feel it all the For time. We are giant and therefore brains. seek to destroy, wipe, or dominate all other minds. It is no surprise that they have allied with the vampire Swain. It is concerning that they are so blatant, that they feel no need to hide it from us. I'm pretty sure we can kill some mind players. Mind hunters. I think you will find that those legends describe their true nature about as well as uh, the, the children's the, tales of the backpacks and the uh, rope trick are like it is little pocket dimensions, but they're not like it's not like a point. Point. real plane Rogers gave them that the only exists in that and one item the or when it's when that one magic, spell is open. Lady Hesimura no, no. assured them could break a spirit shackle, and soon they were riding out. Since you can't plane shift too close to a spirit shackle, and since they had been warned that the perimeter of the plane blocked area might have defenses. The party crossed over from several kilometers away. There hadn't been a lot of time to look around when they strayed into the shadow fell. Oh, it is an ugly, messy shot. After crushing the necromonster. This time, they found themselves in a much quieter spot. Only a couple zombies in sight. Like, two. The terrain was similar to the spot they had just left, though the vegetation was more sparse. And where there was rock, it tended to have sharper edges, in some cases being formed into curved points. It's like the forces of erosion work differently here. Crossing over I feel like if I were showing that day, again now, when I said sun in the there same hardly any zombies at all, like dimmer. two, the, the, the thing you do would be to immediately show little like one flaming dimmer. charging him and like killing them both, just because they were there. Only a dim shadow they might have missed if they hadn't seen them back in the Fadelands. Wait a second. Go ahead, Draven. I'll fly up and try to get a better view. Okay. You cast the spell from your eternal wand and start rising up. But at about eternal wands are cool. altitude, you start to notice resistance. <laughs> I so called it. The Shadowfell has a ceiling. I guess that makes sense. They have the Underdark, so it goes so down all the symmetry. way. The limit, the point where pushing higher becomes ridiculously slow, is at around 17 feet. The actual max is probably a foot or a half a foot higher, but that's the practical altitude ceiling. Clearly there is stuff that is higher. You can see those mountain peaks, and from what Tobin has told you, Swain's fortress of Old House is up in the Twin Peaks, just like Castle in Vistria. This means to fly upright, my feet only get a little more than 10 feet off the ground. There's no way to fly higher than a 10 foot reach can attack you. You could like- That's right. Thing. That might work against a medium or smaller creature with a pole arm or a spike chain. But usually anything big enough to have a 10-foot reach is going to be tall enough to punch the ceiling anyhow. Kings beneath a shallow sky. Wings they have, but not to fly. Huh? Just a rhyme from my dad's old stories, but it makes a bit more sense now. Well, I'm collecting my dirt sample right now. Let's just find the spirit, whatever, so we can go home. They make their way across the dimly illuminated plains. This is fine, they whatever. They don't any of the expected traps or guardians as they cross into the area where extra-dimensional travel is blocked yeah, by the spirit Later, Nightmare shadow. Warden. But in place of the slightly marshy area found here in the Fadelands, the Shadowfell had a somewhat more distinct terrain feature. A wide pool of what can only be described as oh, yeah. flesh. Lumps and puddles of tissue without any sign of structure, skeleton, or anything you would describe as limbs, but not quite still enough to be dead. Just disgusting, vile, barely animate flesh. Is it a giant monster? A slime? Yeah, I'm thinking monster. Can we do any skill checks, or what? If you think it's a monster, I guess that would be dungeoneering if it were an abomination, or you could try knowledge religion if you think it's undead. Both seem reasonable. Shadowfell. Meh. Doesn't have the same ring as Feywild. 
As far as they can tell, the flesh is not a creature. Not even in the sense that a slime or an ooze is a creature type in D&D. &D. Rather, it's more of a substance. A Just a terrain kind of feature. Terrain. That is not to say it isn't dangerous. The smell was vicious and putrid enough to cause saving throws if they passed over it. And the surface looked unstable, viscous, slippery in places, and also, you know, repulsive. Let's but, see if we can come at it from the other side. The like, other side was a tar bog. Black, oh, so sticky, much better. Obviously treacherous, but they still preferred it to the flesh bog. Draven was flying, but wasn't strong enough to carry across huge guys like Black and Little One with all their armor, so it cost an extra fly spell on one of the strong guys to ferry them all across. On the island in the middle of this mess, they find a cave mouth, as promised, though the tunnel is blocked off by jammed in corpses. By the this time plane does suck. Or dug their way it, past it just that, sucks. There's little chance they remain on Indefatigable the deck if they purpose. Ever That's a they darkest a dungeon reference for breaking Woodridge, through walls and shit. There's still creepily little resistance as they work their way inside until they reach a chamber full of stalactites and stalagmites. A huge monster made of stitched together corpses stands waiting, but it's another monster that goes first. A strange rocky beast camouflaged among the stalagmites, which unleashes a strong magnetic pulse. I was disappointed Angle, by this guy. One, make a reflex. I expected more DC from him. DC 21 to keep hold of your weapons. Made it. Made it. Made it. Really? Black made DC 21 reflex? I rolled high. Okay, nobody's weapons are yanked out of your hands and pulled to the Lodestone Marauder. Uh, Draven's turn. Wait a sec. Draven? Look how that big zombie is in a little space there. If you could wall it in or something, we could take them down piecemeal. Well, walls are some of the few spells I can cast directly. That seems like a solid idea. His little alcove is so small, the I wall can overlap two, seems like a solid three, idea. Four layers of wall of stone. That ought to hold him long enough. You hear smashing sounds from the other side, but the wall is holding. All right, let's take down this other guy. They make their saves to avoid having their yeah, weapons it's... flung away, and despite that his just... deflection bonus that wall against utterly weapons, this fight. the party crushes the lone marauder in well under two rounds. <laughs> well, that was easy. The other thing was supposed to tank for it, while some of you were supposed to be disarmed. Nice plan. Could have been dangerous. What now? Do we go on? We can't just leave that thing in there. It'll break out eventually. Yeah, we don't want to be attacked from behind. Well, it needs to hurry up and break out. It took four or five rounds of bashing for the corpse monster to break through by which time they had long since finished the magnetic monster, buffed up, and were getting tired of readied actions. It burst out into a storm of blades and beatings. It was pretty tough, and Angel's anti-undead weapon crystal actually didn't work on it, because this one was a corpse golem, a construct-type monster rather than actual undead. I hit it with disabling strike. Make a will save or lose your next action. It's a construct. They're immune to stunning and junk. It's not a stun or a daze or anything. If they fail their save, they just lose their action. That's a fifth level maneuver, right? I could swear it was a daze. Let me look it up. There was a fifth level strike that dazed the target. But Little One was also right. His disabling strike was an unnamed status effect. And yeah, the, there was no text. The disabling strike seems a lot better than the other one that was dazed, which a lot of things are immune to. The creature had like no the other same penalties level. and could even take attacks of opportunity as normal, but it couldn't take any actions for one round. And like most golems, this thing had a horrible will save. Because they don't need it. Golems are immune to most things that cause will saves. But it fails the roll and they take it down in no time. Why would like it take cause and put out coast, coast like, like fairly cosine. underwhelming defenses. The caverns so far have been natural, but at the back of the room, they find a staircase carved into the stone, heading down into a large chamber lined with alcoves. Like catacombs, but all empty. No coffins, no wrapped bodies, nothing. Instead, in the middle of the room is a simple pillar of brown brick, not at all matching the gray stone of the room. Could that thing be the spirit shackle? It's pretty unassuming, but it certainly stands out. Didn't Tobin say they all look different? A square pile of bricks looks pretty different to me. They search the room carefully for traps, secret doors, or anything else, but find nothing this thing of in my ear all day. before turning their full attention to the suspicious brick structure. When Draven held the Raja's Centra stone near the pillar, it provided subtle energy feedback, oh, which suggested that this was, in fact, the shackle. And it didn't take an artificer hey. to sense powerful magic emanating from the pillar. I guess this is it. Where are the stupid riders, though? Wasn't those guys upstairs? There were only two of them, and they had no gear at all. The Rakshasha said an 80% chance. Maybe they didn't show? 
or they might attack us on the way out. That's some pretty crappy guarding if we've already broken the shackle. Well, I guess I should start this thing and see what happens. You'll have to concentrate on it for a full minute. We'll protect you if anything happens. Well, this this force is an so. annoying choice. There it goes. Yeah, you're That's in the middle of concentrating, and you don't know what happens if you close. break off if you can start unraveling again. unraveling the invisible bonds that lie upon the crude-looking brick Ooh, structure. Neat. For a few seconds, nothing seems to be happening. But then they realize the cracks between the bricks are darkening. No, filling up with a dark substance. Wait, I think I hear something. I think the bricks are breathing. No, upstairs. Those are some heavy footsteps. Well, I'm halfway into channeling this. It's going to be another five rounds. Can you cancel it? Can I? Well, obviously you can stop, but you aren't certain if it will waste the magic the Raj has put in your crystal. Uh, frustrating. You think you could restart after the battle, but you aren't a hundred percent. Damn it, I don't want to risk failing the mission. They are coming. I only hear one, and they said three riders. With three rounds yet I hope to those number spell, flashes aren't like seizure like substance was oozing down to pool at the bottom. A little late of the to worry about it now. Disquietingly close to Draven's feet. Come on, I'm almost there. <laughs> this huge leathery humanoid with Bam. horns, a bolted on helm, and thighs two feet in diameter crashes through the entrance to the room just to squeeze in its overly broad frame. Flanked by what appeared to be a dwarven Whoa. ghost and a tall, powerfully built woman with rock skin. Next time on Tales from My D&D Campaign. That's interesting. Leagro likes the number of flashes. I thought they were interesting at like creating attention. I I've, I think I've heard people say like they were they didn't like those before, but I don't know. I try different I try different things all the time. If I managed to marry Chrysanthemum, would I be able to make quarter dragons? Don't be ridiculous. Of course I of could make, course quarter, I could make dragons. quarter dragons. <laughs> All right. At some point, this thing moves on to the next episode. Tales from my D&D campaign. Previously, we would like you to venture briefly into the Shadowfell to break one of Swain's spirit shackles. If you guys know so much, what happened to Zaheer? We do believe that the Shadowfell... There, there are some the episodes Fell later Fell where for a while I was putting in proper captions. Disrupted by the gap, I had a, I had an Excel project shackles. that I built that I would just Breaking dump the script into and it would do most of the work. Opportunity for us to but uh, then I lost my license for Excel and stopped doing that. pretty unassuming, but it certainly stands out. Wait, I think I hear something. Well, I'm halfway into channeling this. It's there, yeah, there, there are so round. few female I only hear characters one. even so. still. <laughs> like, three riders. Come on, hmm. I'm almost there. <laughs> this huge leathery it was, humanoid. I was a long way in before I, my before my brain clicked that there was no diversity at all. <laughs> crashes through the entrance to the room just to squeeze in. It took a while to rectify. Frame. Flanked by what appeared to be as a much dwarven as a, ghost at least and a as tall, much as I did. powerfully built woman with rock skin. And a ridiculously tiny waist. What the hell kind of proportions are those? Uh, it's, hourglass? Her measurements? It, maybe more magical it's than it's not, to pass through walls. It's because it's Whoever like, she, she's decided how much stone is around each part of her she body. She triggers a spell-like ability, and suddenly the stone floor of the room erupts into a carpet of magical spikes, which deal 1d8 oh. damage for every 5 feet anyone moves that along a, the ground. It's such After an ugly spell. The spike stones, she glides back into a wall, where they can't even <laughs> counterattack her. Moving hurts now? That's not good. Well, I'm not going anywhere for at least another round. Plus, you know, I fly. Moving hurts now, that's not good. Go. Black okay. voicing all the I'm old people in the audience. Guy. It's a flying charge, so I can bypass the spikes. Face Crusher can take a hit, and his damage reduction blocks ten points from it's the attack. His face but Crusher. despite his red hide, he doesn't resist the fire at all. How does that work for you? Perfect. Black takes a few d8s of spike damage moving forward, 
but now that he has an ally adjacent to the enemy, he's able to teleport into flanking position behind the big guy using Knight's move, avoiding a lot of spike damage, and he gets in a solid hit, his mithril mace once again counting as a silver weapon to penetrate DR. Angel also takes a couple dice of damage, but only till she gets close enough to leap onto the wall, after which her slippers of spider climbing keep her safely off the ground as she runs toward the action. You feel a voice in your head whispering about how your allies are positioning themselves to turn on you and how the bronze hammer oh yeah the ghosty madness the power behind the scenes waiting for a moment of weakness that's a voice in whose head anyone who fails a dc 21 will save actually the whole party makes that save able to recognize the voices as foreign and push them out for now the ghost dwarf, the apparent source of the disturbing whispers, hit black for about 10 damage because its incorporeal attack ignores armor. In return, it took about half that much damage from one of black's many backlash damage effects from various spells and equipment. Then Face Crusher, the powerfully built brute, acted. Flanked by enemies who already hurt it quite a bit, the masked monster surprised them by leaping up as a swift action to the top of the room, giving it just enough distance for a vertical charge. And the huge creature crashed oh, back yeah. down into Little One, horns first, dealing 40 damage and forcing multiple saving throws. Make a DC 18 fear save or become shaken. <laughs> Made it. I like then his, like, you have to make a DC 25 swift power. fortitude save against being physically stunned by the blow. Whoa. Nope. Saved against that one, too. All right. Angel. A rock torso erupts out of the wall, almost right under you, and it's coming out fist first. Oh, hi. <laughs> I'll take an attack of opportunity. I'm afraid you can't. While she does sort of have to pass through your spiked chain's reach, she did so well within the stone wall, where you can't actually... I think that's a pretty fair call. I don't think you can out, use the you reach that way. Ordinary melee range, so Target you don't have that advantage. Zora, the becoming stone physically warrior, available emerges out of the wall right, right next, next to Angel, you. attacking with a martial maneuver both Angel and Little One recognize. The large red gem strapped to her fist flashes brightly as she mountain hammers you for 47 damage. 47? Wow. Some of that was one-shot damage from her weapon crystal, but yeah, she hits pretty hard. The subtitles that thought that was 447 so like damage. <laughs> Angel would be like this guy has a sprayed much across the room. Than that corpse golem upstairs, but he failed anyway. Okay, no <sighs> action for him. But it's Black's turn, and I should note Face Crusher. That's really his. Name. This dungeon is like enemies Face fail every save, PCs succeed every save. Ten feet away from you. So you won't be able to full attack in this turn unless you cast another knight's move. Nah, I have a perfectly good ghost here who attacked me, and my ghost touch mace of Sirius hasn't touched a ghost in a long time. Oh, that yeah. will ignore his incorporeal trait, but he's not as easy to hit as you might expect, partially because of the very corporeal shield he's wielding, which means his shield is also enchanted with ghost touch. It has to be for him to carry it, but conversely, that means that shield's bonus would also apply against the attacks of incorporeal creatures like him. The Ghost Dwarf has a much better AC than most incorporeal monsters, so Black's attacks don't all hit, but being able to ignore the 50% miss chance still makes him very effective at fighting it. Angel slashes at the Stone Woman, but Zora is getting some cover from being half in the wall, and she has DR7 slash meaning she takes a flat 7 less damage from oh, all yeah. physical sources. That is a lot. Without That's being a strong in position for sneak attack, the damage on Angel's small-sized spike chain is so low that only the fire damage from her weapon actually worked. So instead of full attacking, Angel breaks off and tumbles across the ceiling to find herself a better position. The ghost hits Black for a little more damage, and the heroes have to resist his maddening whispers again. Do that, like, Which Matrix 3 stuff. Except like, little up one. Up the walls, around the ceiling. Oh. Look at your artificer friend. Just standing around while you fight for your life. Maybe he's working for Swain. You are overcome by a form of temporary paranoia. It's basically a one-round confusion effect, but with a slightly different random table for how you'll act next round. Well, that should be fun. Raven, you finally finished concentration on the Centra Stone. You've been guiding the magic the Rajas charged it with to break down an Finally, someone failed to save against something. Formed the Spirit Shackle. Everything shudders a little and a little more of the black stuff bubbles out of the pillar, covering mm -hmm. the last of the brick surface. And that's about it. But at least you can act on your initiative next round. With Angel having escaped for now, Zora glides back into the wall and spends her turn Ooh. moving, which is a little <laughs> disturbing because the players have no idea where she might pop up next. She could come up from the ground to hit Draven, or from the wall near Black and Little One, or she might even pop out of the ceiling and try to knock Angel down onto the spikes below. On his turn, oh, the one good. rolls for the maddening whispers, 
and does nothing, standing there like an idiot in front of Face Crusher, who is still standing unsteadily from the disabling chi block of last round. Black beats on the ghost, who, unaccustomed to being struck bodily like this, utters a stream of dwarven profanity. Zetel Inferno, you lanky tin-plated common-born baboso! I have an excellent response to that. Mace to the face! <laughs> Draven isn't close enough to buff any of his allies' weapons, so he unloads a couple shots from his temporarily holy crossbow, dealing decent damage to the muscle-bound charger. Angel moves a little further across the ceiling, worried the stone woman may in fact be coming for her. But she whips out her crossbow and puts a bolt of force right through the ghost dwarf's heart. Of course, he doesn't have any proper anatomy for that to crit, but like Black's Aww. weapon, force damage ignores the mischance, which otherwise makes incorporeal monsters so hard to hurt. But Face Crusher recovers, and his head whips around, suddenly aware of Draven's existence. Doh. Using his quickened movement ability again, in a blur of speed he leaps over to the wall close to the dapper caster, without touching the floor spikes, and springs from there into another brutal charge. Take 39 damage, a DC 18 fear I save, like how he and a DC around. 25 fort save. Ow! But I passed both saves. What, I can't stun anyone at DC 25? I DC 25! I put a lot of money and effort into augmenting my saving throws. Especially Fortitude. On the Ghost's turn, it hits Black for another 2d6 plus 2 damage, but it's looking pretty ragged by this point. Nevertheless, Little One fails another save against the Maddening Whispers. Come on, Little One. I actually have a decent will save. I gained some from my Dragonfire Adept level. Also, it's DC 21. Statistically, more of you should be failing. Zora five foot steps out of the wall next to Black to back up the Ghost Dwarf. She full attacks, hitting him for 14, then again for 16, but since she hit both times, she gets to trigger her rend attack, piling on an extra 29 damage. Was that a crit? No, just a rend, so you can't use your Ring of Vengeance. Yeah, Alright, but like I can cool use stuff. my Retributive Amulet to hit her back for half, so take 14 plus 4, 5, and 4 more from my Hamatula Barb spell. We really need a less evil sounding name for your version of that spell. Like Martyr's Thorns, or Scorn of Sirius, or something. Anyway, little one's up. Roll on the madness table. Uh, 12? Act normally? What fun is that? It's fun for it's me! the least effective madness ever. For Black, so he can keep ghost busting. Deal. I haven't had a chance to recover Searing Charge yet, so I can't fly across. How much damage will I take moving there? Uh, 6 squares, so 6d8. Little one standing long jumps down from the ramp area, skipping 10 feet worth of spiked ground, so he only takes 15 damage from movement as he Elder Mountain hits Face Crusher nearly to death. From her upside down perch, Angel finishes it off with her crossbow, such that Draven is free to act without triggering attacks mm. of opportunity. Meanwhile, Team Black work. smacks the ghost so hard it loses cohesion, its curses and whispers fading into oblivion as its shield clatters to the ground. Surprisingly, the insubstantial nice. axe it had been swinging also materialized, landing with a clank of metal on stone. Draven sure, fired a couple not? of shots into Zora, who, seeing her allies destroyed, made for the safety of the wall. Uh, that? Impossible! You would leave now before finishing what you started? I think not. She spins around, looking in fright at the pillar in the middle of the room. Cornered, she strikes at Black again, but he blocks it, and together they beat her down till Draven finishes her with his crossbow. Hey, she but has more like a normal waist when she's not pillar, in her crazy stone form. Covered in tar. The black goo begins to bubble. Just one bubble, then a couple more, and from each bubble's bursting comes a sound recognizable as speech. I can feel my body. It has been so long, for the short time before I am shackled anew. Tell me, who has freed me? Is it Alyssa you serve, or Cornello? We don't work for any of them. The crystal still clutched in Draven's hand glows, and Lady Hazamura's translucent image appears beside him. Your actions have created a shudder in Swain's anti-divination network, as predicted. The other Rajas and I are divining as much information as we can, though it will take some time to Actually, analyze Martin, the results. This spirit was not in Sans. That that you... one was this guy's um, brother. It looks like it. I haven't had a chance. To... <laughs> and am I to believe you are not allied with any of the kings? That would be quite a twist. They have different names. I told you no. Screw those guys. We don't serve evil. Wait, is this thing evil? I don't know. Greetings, Benzikagoth. I hope you are enjoying a breath of stale air, however brief it may be. Do you know what Swain has planned for the Vasifant horror to the south? <laughs> Rakshasha small talk, is it? And who do you claim to be? I am Lady Hazamura of the Raja. As you must have guessed, I do have other motives 
for asking them to freeze, but that makes my question no less relevant. According to the subtitles, she's working for the Russians. Deserve you an answer at the least, regardless of who you really are. Swain was using the spawn of darkness against the forces of a troublesome drow governor. However, he withdrew it a short time ago, moving it abruptly to where it now waits, near Alyssa's borders. When shackled, you can feel his intention within the narrow focus of your own power, correct? Correct, lady. <laughs> but his intention in this case was merely to have it wait. I don't think moving it there was his own will at all. I think other allies instructed him to. Allies to whom he listens. Interesting. Mm. As you know, Benzigagar, they will the come from the very having him move around Whether Swain or one of the arrow. others, they will seek to rebind you. You would fight this, correct? I will fight for a moment, and then be bound again by their filthy runes. What great promises will you make, Rakshasha? There are other spirits we could persuade this guy's to got an attitude. Ones nearby who would not answer your call, and ones far away who move swiftly and can arrive in time. And what can I give you? I am still weak from my prison, and will need my strength to fight. The That's cost cool, would be a favor. In the future, at such time we require, and when you are able. And with these allies, you promise, can I stop a vampire king from crushing me in his palm? No. <laughs> I see. You may wait a very long time indeed for a favor I can only grant when truly freed, when free of the cycle, for I can pay no debts while I am bound. A time will come. We still plan to be here, and if we are not, then so too will your debt fade. <laughs> the black ooh roils and bubbles madly like boiling water as it laughs. I believe that you are truly a Raj, then. I have dealt with the Shugo before, and would not again. The other no Raj defer gratification, what? so their deals are short, like a dagger in the back, and while their words are flowery and silken, their auras are blacker than my skin. Send your swift spirits. Bring me the aid of those buggering neighbors who seem deaf to my call. Let them stand with me and cut and bleed the feet of our oppressors before I am stamped down once more. And to you who do all the work while the bankers collect the interest, I thank you for allowing me to breathe free, however briefly. When you reach the surface, go to the shore of my pool and I will disgorge something for your troubles. I must begin my preparations, for I have but blinked my eyes, and already the storm is nearly upon me. There's a vampire king on his way now? Well, you can't completely <laughs> rule that out, but an old spirit like this has a very yeah, different Yeah, Benzagagoth is time. pretty like, badass. Can we help this thing out? She said he won't win with these other spirits helping, but could he win if we help? At this point, no. He has very these strong spirits will. can be persuaded to intervene because they are immortal. For those who are not good candidates for shackling, even when they are defeated, the long-term consequences to them should be limited. Man, because this whole spirit-binding thing is really just another kind of slavery, and I hate to just stand by. We freed the guy for Kind now. of slavery number 7,841. I'm just thinking, we could get some serious goodwill, maybe find other allies if we help out. I just hate the idea of leaving him to be enslaved again. Thing is, you really don't know his time scale. Me as GM, Maybe like, could happen in five wait, did, hours, no, five I, days, or five months. You, you long, sticking you know, around here to fight a vampire right, king was I, I not part of the plan. Not a good idea. <laughs> Nobody's waiting weeks or months. It still bugs me though. They gather up the loot quickly. Just yeah, let, allow me to convince you not to do that. Helm of plus two d six damage when charging. Zora's ring of sloth. It increases any pre-existing damage reduction by two and grants a plus five bonus against a touch attack once per battle. Plus the dwarf's plus one ghost touch shield, which also granted plus two damage to any of the user's spells. The very solid axe he had dropped was not plus magical, two damage to but Angel spells. That is an awesome shield. Weapon, that's like a which that's like a historical significance. An MMORPG. I they heard all this stuff up to the surface where they found some horses. Oh right, they said. Three there, rides. there was treasure left what by Benzagagoth. It just, it, it's, it's awesome I just don't is. have any notes the on it at all. It's annoying. Black war horse must have been specially bred. He gave them some loot damage amongst the horrors of the Shadowfell. 
particularly if one of them was ridden by a freaking ghost. But even that incredible attribute seemed positively mundane next to the huge six-legged horse. Face Crusher's hexapetal mount had the size and mass of an elephant, but longer, wider, and flattened into a squat, well-supported form which allowed it to carry a massive rider without bumping against the 17-foot altitude ceiling of the plane. Yeah, Can we fit cool. him through our portal? Well, based on my caster level, without Zaheer and Mahar... We need to name him! Next time on Tales from My D&D Campaign. <laughs> Yeah, that's that's pretty cool stuff. Forget about Ben Zagaga sometimes, but he's pretty cool. He's he's much cooler than his brother Pentataxix. Pentataxix is a dick. The moment is fast approaching. Surely I could contribute far more meaningfully in some other capacity. We are well aware of that, brother. But maximizing this opportunity calls for as many burst divinations as we can deploy. Nevertheless, compared to you and Lady Hazamura, my divination is nearly as useless as your battle magic. Then by all means, next time I might find myself in combat, you are welcome to handle it in my place. I certainly hope so. The cycle has fallen. Acknowledged. Your actions have created a shudder in Swain's anti-divination network, as predicted. The other Rajas and I are divining as much information as we can. I like she's she's like, she's one of the ones who's doing the heavy lifting in that stuff, and then she How's still takes going? the time out to talk Our to the PCs. completely overwhelmed. I can't stop them. Oh, yeah, this. <laughs> those damned Rajas. Just do the best you can. I'll get you another one of uh, those. <laughs> If you care so much about my information security, all you have to do is share some of your rituals. <laughs> Recorded a lot of Mindhunter gibberish to, like, select some of it and overlap it and make the creepy-ass noises for them. Yeah, that was good stuff. All right. The rules. Tales from my D and D campaign. Previously, we would like you to venture briefly into the Shadowfell to break one of Swain's spirit shackles. Could that thing be the spirit shackle? Come on, I'm almost there. <laughs> This huge leathery humanoid. Uh, I like the, I like the bam when he shows up. Ghost, that's very, and a tall, that's cool. powerfully built woman with rocks. I'm gonna go grab another I'll drink. I'll be Raven back for black, so he can that's keep it. ghost busting. Deal. Mace to the face. Uh, You're all up. That's oh, but impossible. Uh, you are defrauding now before charge. finishing what you started. I think not. Greetings, oh, yeah, Ben <laughs> I thank you for allowing me to bring you free, however briefly. They carted all this stuff up to the surface where they found some horses. What the hell is that? It's awesome is what it is. We need to name him. Getting the big horse moving is not easy. In order to spur it forward, little one has to spur it hard enough that it probably would have injured any normal animal. But once he gets through its three points of damage reduction against bludgeoning, he finds it quite obedient, well-trained, if a little oblivious to its surroundings. I think I'll call him Mr. Big. There was quite a bunch of new gear to identify after fighting the riders, plus a potentially precious dwarven relic and some valuable gems Benzikagoth had coughed up from the tar. But the huge six-legged horse was clearly their favorite find from the expedition. Fortunately, our version of Plane Shift didn't penalize you for transporting oversized creatures, so not only could they haul back Mr. Big, but they even bring back the smaller Grey Mount for Angel, since these animals must be borderline immune to fear to stand so calmly near the flesh bog, let alone riding with a ghost. When they get back to New Vanover, they immediately get to work liquidating a ridiculous amount of loot. Some of their treasure was valuable junk, like the Phantom Dwarf's Ghost Touch saddle, which Draven disenchanted for crafting XP, or that ancient Dwarven axe. Angel and Draven offered it to Elena, Don DeCorso's representative, 
who knew that her patron would be very interested in an item tied to the last lord of the doomed dwarf hold of Egregor. With some crazy good negotiation checks, they squeeze her for 12,500 gold, almost certainly more than it was worth, though it's hard to stick a price tag on such historical pieces. The heroes had just hit level 12, a critical point where each character learns a new feat How did that and gains a around? stat point. Plus, they're loaded with cash to spend on new magic gear, so a little downtime is clearly in order. Black learns Monkey Grip, a feat that allows him to wield up. a larger than normal weapon with a small to hit penalty. His Mithril Mace is already larger than normal in practical terms, but in game terms it still functions as a one-handed weapon designed for a medium creature. However, Draven has had more time to study the formulas of that Itaran artificing tome they found in Ginneron, and he has learned the secret to alter the size of a magic item without changing its oh, properties, yeah. meaning for a small cost he's able to upsize Black's mace to the size of a large creature's weapon, increasing its base damage Even from 1d8 to 2d6, and since it's still mithril, its dimensions are actually 30% larger than, say, a mace sized for an ogre. At the same time, Angel takes the leadership feat, allowing her to recruit a henchman who is close to the player characters in experience level, and hey, more much more loyal than a mere hireling, almost like an extension of her character, as long as the henchman is not mistreated. So Angel is joined by a new partner, Mora Irisha, an Aventi bard from the organization. The Aventi are a race of aquatic humans. Physically, they're just humans with gills, but they've become a very rare species gill because picks again, they have a apparently I like those. that Kuatoa could not abide. They breathe air as well as they do water. The Diluvians are so paranoid about the idea of another aquatic race who could rebel against their dry land island capital that when they defeated Mora's people, they exterminated the majority of them, keeping only a small percentage alive as slaves. Those who remained were considered quite valuable. After all, those KTs living on land normally had to do so without most forms of slave labor, but Although they were prized as servants for the Imperial Palace and the Unbaru Temple, the Aventi population was always kept very small and manageable. Mora has no homeland anymore. She may actually hate the KTs more than me. So she's a merfolk? She's human. Well, she's an aqua human. Like Kevin Costner from Waterworld. Meanwhile, Little One had also chosen the leadership feat, Waterworld. and his henchman was huge and had six legs. Can you do that? I have to tweak the rules some, since the horse doesn't have class levels, and it does have a ton of monstrous hit dice. Its challenge rating is lower, but it's yeah, it kind of did him reasonably dirty, equivalent like, to a henchman. Though not much setting up scenarios well enough I'm to make these a rainbow thinking dash. About the name. I so like Mr. About that. Big, but I really don't like the Sex in the City connection. You could call him the BFH. Actually, is it a him? Hmm? Oh, uh, I don't know. I'll roll it. Nope, the horse is female, so definitely not Mr. Big. Mrs. Big? No. What was that pony's name? Rainbow Dash. Her name <laughs> is Rainbow Dash. Not Pinky? Nah, I think I like Rainbow Dash. Draven shut himself in the labs of the Basilica, crafting all manner of magical gear for the party, and also using his samples from the Shadowfell and the Feywild to further his research into the Astral Plague, which still affects all of them, or would affect them were they not being protected by the White Seed, for now. He built a device to measure and compare forms of planar energy, screening out the background planar radiation, and then chose to prioritize making the clunky machine portable as the next step. And Little One went to work too. He had finally saved up enough cash to forge his dragon scale armor. Magical full plate made from his own mother's flexible yet ultra tough scales. He hired a skilled blacksmith who could provide the facilities and some technical assistance to supplement his own metalworking skills, but who could also work on a set of huge barding for Rainbow Dash while Little One focused on his own custom plate. As for Black. What if I gave 14,000 gold to the head of Sirius? What would that do? Probably piss off the rest of the party. I just <laughs> don't know what to spend it on. What? <laughs> Grab some books, come on. Black had a decent point in that he had magical gear for nearly all of his item slots. Although many of the items were inexpensive, they all had special abilities that he wanted, which more expensive items wouldn't have. But since we allow some of the enchantment combining rules from the magic item compendium, 
he could keep his existing items but add other powers at additional cost. Plus, it turned out that he didn't have a resistance bonus to saving throws. It took most of his cash, but Draven crafted him a plus five yeah, best. The of urgency is clearly very imagined at this point. His his already out, formidable out defenses from. against many spells. As this period of furious crafting is winding down, though, they are called in by the Earl of Hanley. There has been an incident in Eastern Angor. So they want the Orc Slayers to do what they do best. That's why they thought of you. A group of archaeologists <laughs> were exploring a reputation. the desert, and supposedly they found something ancient. On the way uh, back, they were attacked by a significant number of orcs. Significant meaning... At least four or five. This was a <laughs> civilian group, not your typical target for orcs. Certainly no challenge, but according to the survivor, they captured a number of the researchers alive. Kidnapping? That doesn't sound very orc-like at all. I'd like you to get to Fort Keeling as quickly as possible. Talk to the survivor. Yeah, the combining options items the from trip. Magic Item Companion. I feel like we're almost very getting handy. too important for something like this, but it seems like it could be more important than it sounds. It was almost not important enough for the hand to come to you, except they see you as kind of the orc experts. Little one is the orc slayer, and they know Draven kills all kinds of things. You've kill sealed everything that walks or crawls on this green <laughs> earth, and some that crawl underneath it. Soon after, they set out, most of them riding on a basic platform built on the back of Rainbow new Dash's new, new army, creating something of a spectacle as they stomped down the streets of New Vanover. Wait, I could swear I saw movement on a rooftop, but oh, there's yeah, nothing yes. there now. I'm sure it's nothing. Assuming the natural 20 black rolled on a spot check is not nothing, he points it out to Little One, <laughs> whose draconic vision indeed catches an invisible Kuatoa moving in and out of view along the buildings of a parallel street. Angel. I'll never catch up with that. I'll point it out to Angel. I cast C and Viz as subtly as I can, and Mora will haste me. Give me a sign just as he's leaping between buildings. Go! Angel launches off her mount, using her magically enhanced speed along with her <laughs> slippers of spider climb to sprint along the sides of Super buildings, sophisticated animation. Gas, cutting across to the other street, closing in behind the cloaked Kuatoa. You clearly have an advantage here, but you'll need to roll your stealth against his spot to see if you get a surprise round or if he notices you just in time to defend himself. I get... <laughs> 41! The Whisper Gnome runs to the lip of the roof, spinning around just as she overtakes the target, releasing her compact magical chain which spirals out from its pocket knife size into its full flame of glory as she lays into him. Her assault is brutal, but this Kuatoa is extremely competent, managing to deflect many of her lightning strikes or to dodge in such a way as to reduce would-be death blows to mere grazes. That's the thing about hit points. They are Abstract an abstraction. So even when she hits with an attack roll and deals 30 damage, enough to turn an ordinary human being into a gory blood splat. The effect on this 80 hit point Kuatoa is to wear down his resolve, his endurance, and his luck to cover him in minor to moderate cuts and burns. Nevertheless, after the 71 damage dealt by her sneak attacks, before he can even roll initiative, he's injured to the point that he can barely stand, though again, in D&D game terms, he doesn't suffer any actual penalties for the damage, beyond the fact that one more good hit would finish him. You can't run and you can't hide. Surrender. He looks furious, but after a tense pause, he starts to lay down his short spear, <sighs> but stabs at you instead. And misses horribly. Having failed in his last surprise <laughs> move, and seeing the pitiful ease with which Angel avoids his well-aimed death blow, he drops his weapon for real, and raises his hands and surrenders. Fine. The rest of the party are just catching up. They had given Angel a two-round head start before changing course, since Rainbow Dash's movements and the reactions of the crowd are so obvious, and they didn't want to give her away. He was way tougher than I expected. But not a monitor. Nope. Based on his gear, just masterwork weapon and light armor, fairly high-end Kolos cloak, you'd guess he's just another scout, though obviously a hell of an elite one. He's that powerful and has no magic items? I had to shove his spear up his ass. Unlike the last time they caught a <laughs> How scout, dare you the not have good made loot? Him a real burden and they had to make the hard choice to simply execute him. This time it's only a short backtrack to turn him in at the Basilica. After the usual discussion of whether to break his legs, cut them off, etc. to prevent the notoriously slippery KT from escaping. You are seriously creepy, you know that? Like a <laughs> horror movie. 
If Angel and I were enemies, the last thing I'd do is leave her alive. Broken legs or not, I suppose you could rip her arms off. So they transfer their prisoner to the hand of Sirius, bones unbroken, and discuss their plans for him a little. Heroic. But very soon a small military squad rides into the courtyard asking for them. I'm Sir Maxwell von Kristoff. He's a cousin of the Duke. No real titles of his own. I'd like to congratulate you on behalf of the Duke for your excellent work. It's rare to catch these spies at all. To take one alive is a very rare opportunity. And, as you know, Duke von Christoph has a standing order that any captured Deluvian is to be held until he can personally interrogate As you know, with the special it. exposition we've come line. we for the captive to Stronghill. The fortress of Stronghill is New Vanover's main defensive base, just outside of town. But the PCs voice some concerns really look outside regarding Katie's famous talents as escape artists. Sir Maxwell grins slightly, thoroughly undaunted. Don't worry, we've got a special carriage ready for him. His men haul out a large, heavy chest of solid oak, <laughs> plus some holes chains, in it. and several handfuls of long nails. There are a number of air holes, which we can also use to give him water. And once we seal him in, he'll have enough food in there to last a month. Though, I'm sure the Duke will find time for him before that. Hope your spy likes raw potatoes. I like it. You didn't like breaking the legs, and they're going to put him in a box for a month? This is pretty torturific, too, but somehow I'm less opposed to it. We hand him over to the authorities, and I can wash my hands of it. He's basically going to be tortured to death at the end of this. I don't think anybody plans to torture him to death. Wait, is this the guy who jumped off the wall? You're thinking of the Duke. That's who's coming to interrogate him. There's no way this guy's alive by the end of this. There's no letting him go. This is the same Duke who jumped off a wall and landed in a guy's gut. Yeah, I like that guy. He's pretty popular. I like his daughter, too. I'm thinking of giving her the bastard sword I've been carrying as a betrothal gift. The one from the orc? Yeah. You're going to call him Pops? Question. Are you going to ask for her hand standing at the bottom of a wall? After that brief diversion, yeah. they resumed their mission, Good riding point. for Fort Keeling in Angor, a largely mountainous province oh, in the boy. southeastern corner of Istria. Fort may have been a bit of a strong word, though. The Duke of Dragos wow. had a policy that yeah. all bases in his territory were referred to as forts, regardless of size, for security purposes. It's up to officers to know, by the name, whether you're referring to a real uh, That line was from Black's player, I don't know if it was in character, character so much, right? Outcrops, like this one. Half the troops of Fort Keeling were preparing to move out, but the commanding officer showed the heroes to the survivor of the orc incident. The man was pretty shaken Is that up, Morty? but he retold his story <laughs> before, while Angel before used Rick and Morty existed. on the fly to verify that he believed what he was saying, but also oh, to see if his mental oh, images had any additional information. Why did they have to go digging around out there? Because they're archaeologists. They took my grandpa! There have been a lot of expeditions like this recently, but years ago there was a tribe of desert people called the Kuraji who went regularly into the desert looking for ancient treasures, trinkets left in the sand during a shadow war, or rarely traces of an ancient civilization. But eventually their luck ran out, and they were found and killed by orcs. I think the researchers said something about that Kuraj or whatever. I don't know how they knew where to look, but... They found this hole in the ground, and when we dug it out, it led down to a chamber full of strange-looking stuff and metal walls. They found this thing and got all excited. Did any of it look like Itaran power transfer conduits? What? <laughs> Never mind. Keep going. And my detect thoughts? You're sure he's telling the truth, but you're not sure what you're seeing in his memory. There's a big room, and from there, a very long straight tunnel that goes off into the darkness in opposite directions. But the metal walls remind you of Ginneron. Then she saw his terror as he recounted the orc encounter. All the guards, all the other workers, and at least one archaeologist was slain. But the orcs tossed the other researchers over their shoulders, then appeared to be moseying off southward. This man only escaped because an axe hurled at him, missed its mark, and the orcs were overcome by laughter, not bothering to pursue. Lovely. This guy has to live with his cowardice. That's worse than death. I'm okay with living with cowardice. <laughs> Better than dying bravely? Yes. yes. Between the man's <laughs> account and what Angel could see of his memories as he recalled the events, it won't be hard to find the area where the attack occurred. But from there, all they know is the orcs appear to be heading southward into Gruul. So our directions are, go south till you hit orcs. Well, if you go far enough south, you will find orcs. The trick is to find the same orcs. 
I don't mind going on a recruitment drive. There's definitely been a pattern of these orcs appearing, going after artifacts of some importance that have a connection to us. Is it just the PCs being a center of the universe? Or that some of the big shit we're involved in is so big that it keeps popping up? They travel as fast as they can, knowing that the orcs have at least a week's head start. Rainbow Dash is the same speed as an ordinary horse, but they have a chance, because orcs on foot should move only half that fast, even if they are in a hurry. The rocky desert plains of southern Angor start giving way to the more fertile ground of Gruul, the one part of orc territory seemingly unaffected by the curse that turned all of Uruk into desert. Soon they encounter fields of mud, separated by raised mounds which served as paths. A normal horse could walk the paths, but Rainbow Dash is far too wide. You have a choice. You can either look for a better path with room for Rainbow Dash, Mm. or tromper through the fields. Can she even get through? Oh yeah, if you don't mind messing up the fields. I mean, it would be much slower, and there might be some rough spots, but even if the muck is two feet deep in places, Rainbow Dash's six massive hooves should get her through. Are these cultivated fields? It doesn't look like they're growing things right now, but clearly they were made by somebody for farming. I'll fly up and find a path. And he does, locating a route where the mud paddocks are spaced further apart, allowing the party to ride on, diverting left or right as necessary to follow the wider paths, till they spot a number of goblins guiding water buffaloes to plow the mud. Wait, you're doing all this to avoid goblin orc farms? It wasn't that much effort. Also, the goblins probably don't have that much choice in the matter. The goblins look frightened, but their reaction is to focus on their work hoping not to provoke the bizarre procession of foreigners. A little further on, they spot a cluster of small, shabby thatch huts which passes for a village. There, an elderly goblin sits atop a large rock, watching the other little guys struggle with their beasts of burden. He addresses the strangers, speaking in common. I am Gob, patron of this humble village. What are your intentions here? Your name is Gob? Uh, sure. Sure. They deal with orcs all the time. <laughs> they wouldn't want to use fancy, complicated names. Ah, uh, so they're probably all gob. Have you seen orcs coming through here with any humans? Some of the stronger goblins move to back up the elder, trying to look tough, but nobody's fooled by that facade. Although gob seems pretty chill, the others are terrified, as this is all out of the ordinary, even ignoring the giant horse. We did see a group come through some days ago, carrying three humans. He gives them directions, in particular, to help them find more places Rainbow Dash can pass without messing up the rice paddies, but cautions, You'll understand if we, or any of the other villages, don't want to be seen talking to you. Good luck on your journey, this is a round and I hope you don't night, encounter any they? orcs, uh, other than the ones you're looking for. I hope you run into all kinds of orcs. As they approach the second village, they see the fields are already flattened, and one of the paddies has a line of goblins almost shoulder to shoulder with large bags on their backs, singing a rhythmic song as they plant the rice. As a couple on the near side notice the heroes, there's a ripple in the song, but for the most part they continue on, (laughs) as the planting is important, and if they're going to be attacked, there is little they can do. A handful more goblins emerge from one of the huts though. I am Hob, patron of this village. We are poor and have nothing worth taking, and also this village and all its people are under the protection of Lord Untor and his boys. Untor? Surely you've heard of Untor the Talker. The bardic knowledge check for this is almost too easy. Mora is nearly as surprised as the goblin that they don't know more about Untor. (laughs) It's good that Angel got a bard because he's even had more opportunities to exposit at us. Known as Untor the Talker, if there is a leader of the province of Gruul, it would clearly be him, though obviously the orcish political structure is pretty loose. The talker is a pretty yeah, odd nickname for an orc. So he yeah. tells you exactly how he's going to dismember you. And you know he's a badass, because of the two-syllable thing. Mora explains that Untor has to strike a balance between the more aggressive orcs and the more reasonable samurai-like ones. Because he's got he's a very jack-o'-lantern guns, mouth going on. <laughs> Untor has actually set rules that all of the orcs of the province follow. Obviously, these have some strength because he's strong enough to enforce them. But clearly, he can't take all the other orcs together. Plus, he can't be everywhere, even if he wanted to be. The trick is, his rules are so simple and reasonable that the orcs of Gruul tend to enforce them on each other. The classic example is, 
you're only allowed to kill one goblin. At a time, or...? It's not specific. Is it one ever? One a year? One a week? That's the genius of it. Everyone knows you're only allowed to kill one goblin, unless they're fighting back or something. So if any orc starts being a dick, just walking around butchering farmers, other orcs will step in, because they know it's wrong. But there's that leeway. Orcs might get into arguments over how often it resets, but they generally brawl it out and come to a compromise, rather than get into deadly feuds over it. Plus, since each orc interprets it in the way that makes the most sense to him or her, the rule doesn't seem so draconian that they'd rebel against it. The more violent or aggressive ones might kill goblins more often, while the more honor or rules oriented ones why might kill hardly so any. Tiring. In fact, <laughs> not doing most anything. of the rules are about not interfering with the farm. Sit here all day because anyway. Untor explicitly yeah, says the orcs tired. can take whatever food they want during the months after each rice harvest. Anyway, we're looking for some orcs carrying three humans. Oh yes, they came by a day ago. They went that way. That's where they went. He seems very happy to be rid of you. <laughs> and he's not going to lie because he knows we'd come back and kick his ass. As they pass more rice paddies in different stages of planting, they start to get a better idea of like how things goblins. work around here. The goblins in this area pass the water buffalo between villages. You have to as sympathize a with the goblins. So like they each the... take turns plowing their fields. They're just doing their they best. They only grow rice once per year, but they grow other, less desirable crops for themselves earlier in the year pushing back the rice planting till later, knowing the orcs will come and take most of it for the harder winter months. The arrangement certainly isn't fair, but it's not 100% <laughs> one-sided, in the sense that the orcs do respond to external threats, including dangerous beasts from the desert, the occasional like protection hungry money. egg from Verandi, and all There's, manner of monsters there is from the mountains to the some south, protection where involved. most orcs of this province spend the better part of the year fighting. They're like, all right, it's spider season! The goblins of the third village they come across are messing around with planks and narrow water canals to reflood their fields, which all appear to be fully planted. Wh what do you want with our village? As you can see, the rice is barely in the ground. There won't be any to pick for months. We're not, we're not here to steal your rice. Gob, so Gob's a unisex name. We're looking for orcs carrying three humans. Have you seen them? Carrying humans? We saw them, that's for sure. They were gruel orcs with Antor, but they were attacked and slain near here by a group of foreign orcs from the desert. I didn't see that coming. Duff. What is going on? Find out next time on Tales from Tales My from my D, &D, D, &D campaign. campaign. Uh, too bad I can't go back and give, like, Gob a blue check meme. It's gonna be so awesome. Can you imagine what it looks like riding into battle on Rainbow Dash? You can start breeding those. Ah, oh, I didn't even think of that. You'd need another horse. Uh, artificial insemination? Maybe we can cast in large on a big draft horse. We've got to figure out how to cure the space aids, but then... I'd like to go a step further and use the energy somehow. Get like an Iron Man style heart. Siphon off astral energy, but use it. Seriously. He's been planning this for years. A flying castle. Can Draven make a flying castle yet? Making a flying castle is a bit like crafting a golem, but even more expensive. Does that mean there are expensive. castle types the way there are golem types? Could you imagine a flying flesh castle? Where would you get the materials? Breeding horses? You could quarry the flesh bog. Oh man, we could just make a yeah. mold or the an extruder factory. Crank out flesh golems like a Play-Doh factory. <laughs> that was some yeah, that was some accurate Tales play from my D and D campaign. Previously, Angel is joined by a new partner, Mora Irisha, an Aventi bard from the organization. Meanwhile, Little One had 
also chosen the leadership feat, and his henchman was huge and had six legs. Her name is Rainbow Dash. Angel launches off her mount, using her magically enhanced speed along with her slippers of spider climb to sprint along the sides of buildings, leaping the gaps and cutting across to the other street, closing in behind the cloaked Kuatoa. I'd like to congratulate you on behalf of the Duke for your excellent work. As you know, Duke von Christoph has a standing order that any captured Diluvian is to be held until he can personally interrogate it. I'd like you to get to Fort Keeling as quickly as possible. Talk to the hey, Mr. Nobody. and see if you can pick up the Orc's trail. We've, the we've orc been having fun, although at this point, the episodes We're are getting better. I'm more watching the episodes, and I'm also, carrying I've been doing humans. this for like nine hours. So <laughs> I've got less That's energy. They were ghoul orcs with Antor, but they were attacked and slain near here by a group of foreign orcs from the desert. I didn't see that coming. These outsiders killed the boys, killed the prisoners too. I saw some of the battle myself, and at least one of those deaths did not look like an accident. Then the foreigners took something from the orc leader and headed back northeast towards Uruk. They killed the talker? No, no, she didn't literally mean with Untor. All the orcs in the province are kind of Untor's boys, as opposed to the orcs from the desert. Was Marp a desert orc? Definitely. The desert orcs probably think all gruel orcs are soft. I mean, they steal food for half the year without fighting for it. These orcs would certainly disagree. They do lots of stuff. They're constantly fighting monsters. And years ago, they used to fight mm. Kuatoa all the time in mm. Verandi. There's up my not pizza. much left to see. We buried all five orcs in the field with now. their weapons sticking up out of the ground. Or sticks if their weapons were taken. When any orcs die, we need to make sure it doesn't look like we're hiding it. Wouldn't want to get blamed. We buried the three humans, too, but they had no weapons. All this had happened the previous evening, meaning the heroes had virtually caught up to the initial kidnappers, just in time to All begin those lines of props chase. in the background. Were these new guys in a hurry? <laughs> More Not that they look very impressive, first, but, but if you want the way I was the doing those in Flash, friends, you'll it, have to it, them before they animate, the it was handling it terribly. It, like, those files were huge and took forever match. to load and they save. They thank her for all her help and ride out, tacking northeast in pursuit. Rather than cutting through a large swath of gruel, this gang appear to be heading first for the rocky plains of southern Angor, at which point they will presumably turn due east for Uruk. The party passes a few more villages on the way out of Gruul, though village so may be a strong term, as each has only a very small number of huts. Soon they have to rest, far from the first time this journey, though now that the chase is on for real, there's a lot more tension around when and how to camp out. This horse is probably big enough for us all to sleep on. Till we fall off, we need to find a way to anger ourselves. It's a little too rough to fully rest while she's moving anyway. Raven needs to invent a new version of that magical hut spell. Mordenkainen's Magnificent Caravan. Mord's Magnificent Trailer Home. Mord's Magnificent Motor Home. Mord's Mobile Hotel. Nah, we're not going to rent it out. Aw. What we need is an ocean of amphetamines so we don't have to sleep. You could just become undead. Or a construct. I'd be very tempted to become a construct, but <laughs> the Artificer Prestige class for that is severely suboptimal. Eh? <laughs> Maybe if I find some other way. Your wife might not approve of that. The next day they leave the farmlands behind, <coughs> passing the edge of Gruul into the rocky tundra of Angor. These guys must be moving at a pretty good clip, because after another day of riding, you still haven't caught up with them. The desert proper is still more than a week away, so there should be lots of time to overtake them. But you are going to have to rest again, unless you want to push on and make the horrible endurance checks and stuff. If we're pushing, they must be pushing too. We don't want to get fatigued before fighting orcs. You could use flying to scout ahead and find them. Issue a proper challenge. Draven doesn't spot anything nearby, though, and he isn't about to go solo, so they rest again. And the next day they ride on until Angel spots an ambush in an area where the rock is covered by drifts of wind sand. Trap. sand. All right, we nice should hold off a couple rounds so I can put speed and orcbane on my crossbow, then ideally open combat by switching to fireball wand mode. Just glass parking lot the area. By the time Angel spots the orcs well concealed in the sand, they're only 80 feet away. If you stop the Excuse horse, me. they will notice. That's fine, we'll stop Rainbow Dash, and I'll stand up on her back. I am Little One, Slayer of Marp. The orcs rise, five of them, no longer trying to hide. Their armor seemed to blend in with the sand. It was more than just the color. These orcs, like two or three can take a small town. And they killed how many other orcs? Five. And they didn't lose one? Conservation of ninjutsu, dude. It'll be fine. 
I'm Hag. Yes, you are. This is Gort, Ein, Rogue, and Kor. Kor uses a shield and has a big X on his face. That's where you put your arrows. Oh, okay. As I said, my name is Little One. This is Black, Draven, Angel. The horse is Rainbow Dash. Mora, Mora. That's one car horse you got there. That it is. Your sword is pretty impressive, too. Yeah, but I'm not carrying it. I'm holding my new spear. I'm also not wearing anything. You're naked? I have my clothes on. But I mean, I'm not wearing my full plate. That's because to I have specify my ring he's got his now. clothes on. Why did you come out of the desert and attack those other orcs? Were you sent by visions from Grumsh or whoever? No funny stuff like that. If you can beat us, I'll tell you who sent us. If we beat you, you'll be dead. Mora hastes the party, but Draven notices the orcs are casting some kind of psionic self-buffs as they inch forward while their leader talks. If they're buffing, I should dispel them. That would start the fight for sure, but things are quickly coming to a head anyway. I'm just trying to buy Draven as much time as I can to buff. As long as I get two oh, yeah. rounds, I'm good. Though, if Mora's hasting us all, I can buff my crossbow with yeah, axiomatic instead of speed. By this point. It looked like Little One could have kept Hag talking at least a little longer, but the other orcs looked a lot less patient. So Black dispelled them, knocking a buff off each one of them, and the battle was joined. <laughs> yeah, I tried to do that thing again, although I don't think as well as the other time. As Little One instantly donned his dragon scale plate, Angel cast Blur and Advance, leaving Mora alone on the horse, using improved invisibility so she could attack without revealing herself. Draven attacked Hag, only hitting one of three shots, but his anti-orc, anti-chaotic weapon still did 30 damage. Or would have, except she resisted a couple points of physical damage, and all of his weapon crystals 1d6 fire. Gort charged, but Little One was now using a long spear, plus steadfast boots, which acted as though he was I like always ready just has against like a, a charge. Hammer. Between the double damage attack from Steadfast and the attack of opportunity from his reach weapon, he did 46 damage before the orc even reached him. Injured but good. undeterred, Gort struck down with his massive hammer. What's your armor class against touch attacks? My touch, AC? These orcs were using the Deep Impact Psionic Feet, an ability oh, with yeah. several prerequisites, which let them make any weapon attack as a touch attack much harder to defend against, at least once per fight. And they were using that to leverage and the power of their they martial maneuvers. In this case, hitting Little One for 38 crushing damage. If only you had retaliation properties. I have retaliation properties. It's called Ballista Throw. So Little One takes the hit, but on his turn, he grabs the attacker and spins around, using the momentum to hurl Gort 60 feet as a projectile dealing damage to another orc he hits along the way, and leaving him prone a good distance from the party. Angel deals 14 damage with her attack of opportunity as Ain closes with a devastating charge. And York rolls a critical hit! Take... 57 damage! Did you roll for Blur? Oh, right. 20% mischance? And... he misses. He attacked <sighs> you perfectly, except... that wasn't you. He's so very disappointed. Invisible atop Rainbow working. Dash, Mora fires her repeating crossbow into Hag again and again, dealing much less damage per hit than Draven's, but she rolled much better, so she too did over 30 damage in total. Such that the orc leader was already bloodied. Black casts Moonbolt, a spell which reduces the strength of two targets by 3d4, and he rolls the maximum <laughs> for a brutal 12 point strength <laughs> penalty. Minus six to hit and damage. Yeah, I I even use one, one of those. Has to had, save. I don't remember those exactly what the technique was. Anyway, they had some things the that they find of they 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 shake they off the Moonbolt's effects completely with a guttural yeah. shout. In a sense, Only select negating black like spell, though it did take both of their actions to do so compared to the one action it took him to cast it. Little one's the closest now. He's done the most damage, and frankly, he struck Hag as the most exciting opponent. So she charges him, using deep impact like the others to strike with deadly accuracy. Although she lacked the battle leader's charge maneuver Ayn had used, she dealt 25 damage plus another 16 points of acid from a psionic power. Uh, then she heals three, not a very strong looking but attack takes animation. two damage from her vicious weapon. <laughs> not complicated at all. Ooh, look who's next. Angel? Nope. At the bottom of the initiative order, Rainbow Dash. I like how everyone's clumped together nicely. On his command, the huge armored hexapetal 
horse surged forward, trampling all in her path. Each orc had to choose either a reflex save to avoid the damage, or to take damage automatically but get an attack of opportunity against the stampeding beast. And it turns out, the difficulty of saving against Rainbow Dash's trample was so high, they had very little chance to avoid, choosing the attack instead. Despite a penalty to hit, they hacked her for a sum of 60 damage, but she trampled them for 26 damage each, ending just past Gort, who was still on the ground after Little One's throw. Angel <laughs> hits was, Ayn, he was leaving him quite already and she trampled him. That's gotta be bad. So is Hag. And now it's Draven's turn. Kill Steel! Hey, I did more damage than anyone else to her. It isn't kill stealing if I've done my share to the target. Draven shoots Hag down with some serious damage and Black casts Close Wounds as a swift action to make sure she doesn't bleed out so they could talk to her after. Gort stands up, being bloodied by a hoof of opportunity in the process, <laughs> and knowing he couldn't drop Rainbow Dash quickly enough on his own, he spends the turn recasting his psionic shield and changing to a defensive stance. Black is duking That'll it out with Vro. He hits the orc for 18, but Vro bone crushes him back for 35. But for hitting me, he takes 17 plus d6 plus d8, 26 damage. He hit me for 35, and I do 26 back to him. These orcs are just having a really bad day. Didn't help that you dispelled 4AC from all of them. Is that what it was? Little One activates his Burning Blade maneuver for a damage boost on all attacks, then rolls two natural ones and missed the third attack to boot, partly due to Kur interfering with his shield. You know what the problem was? I tried to kill steal from Draven. Mora scores only one hit this round, and one of the orcs touch attack bone crushers little one for 27. But the next one, having already spent his psionic focus for the fight, has to attack normally and misses. However, Rainbow Dash turns around and tramples Gort for a second time, dropping him. Angel attacks Ayn using her Heartseeker Amulet on her least accurate attack to make it a touch attack, a little bit like their own psionic trick, and subsequently hits with all three strikes, getting Ayn very low, only for Draven to hit him for 18. A terrible damage roll, but still barely finishing him. Then he also drops Vro with a 32 damage hit, and suddenly Kur is the only orc left standing. Now that's Go get him, Kur. Outnumbered 5 to 1, 6 to 1 counting Rainbow Dash, Kur, despite being relatively uninjured, is rapidly felled by Black and Little One. And as Black uses his healing skills to make sure the leader survives for questioning, the party changes focus rapidly to looting. Most of these orcs were using non-magical weapons, with a variety of dirt-cheap weapon crystals and low-level psionic tricks to get the most out of them. But they all had magical armor of the desert, an enchantment which gave them a conditional plus two armor class and a whole host of desert survival benefits, as long as they were in sunlight with enough sand nearby. Hag herself had better quality full plate and a plus one vicious greatsword, a weapon which did plus 2d6 damage, twice the bonus of a regular flaming or shock weapon, but dealt 1d6 damage back to her with every strike. She combined that with a crystal of uh, lesser yeah, there life are a drinking, lot of psychic orcs running around. Three hit points that is correct. Strike, almost cancelling out the vicious damage. The other thing she has is the archaeological find that started all this. Draven, Ooh. you're pretty sure that A, it's Itaran in origin, Ooh. and B, it's just a part which has been disconnected from like the controls of a larger junk. device. You'd think it's from a system for controlling a flow of power. That was very intriguing, but questions about the item gave way quickly to questions of how to handle their captive. I assume you're stripping all her weapons and stuff. Of course. Are you stripping everything? Like, taking off her armor? Well, if we have to kill her, then yes, but otherwise... I'll take her armor. You lost. Tough. I say if she's alive, it's stealing. They're very noble, right? If she's alive, I'd say leave it alone. I'd say, take the armor, and say if she tells us who sent her and all that, we'll give it back. We'll disarm her, but we don't need to bribe her. She already said she'd tell us. That, and I think it's an honor thing. I think we should literally stand her up, in her armor, with her weapon, and ask her. What's she got? Like, five hit points? She's actually around zero. She's just not bleeding to death. Exactly. What's she gonna do? So, to be clear... 
what's the consensus? Are you just taking her weapon before she wakes? Or her armor, too? We're going to have to kill her. We're, we're going to take all her stuff and kill her. That's what I was saying. Maybe I can turn her. If you can get her on our side, that's great, but otherwise, we're killing her. After she answers our questions, <laughs> obviously. So they strip everything Heroes, everybody. Egg and wake her up. Ugh, you really are hard. Very ka. With a ka horse. The name is Rainbow Dash. And you just lost some respect. Okay. Hell no. I'm so ka, I can name my horse Rainbow Dash. Under the circumstances, I think you're definitely the person to conduct the interview. The rest of us will try to look diplomatic or intimidating. So, you promised to tell us who sent you. I did say I'd tell you, and I'll tell you. Twas Del. He told us to come get this thing from the Oomans and to kill everyone who saw it. Not sure what he wants with it. Who's Del? Del's another of uh, Kajord's boys. We's all from Kajord. You can tell from how my boys was trained. They were good. Sure were. Yeah, if we'd been ambushed, it would have been a different story. Anytime we can prepare for combat, we own it. Del's an hard one. You should see the scars on him. Everyone listens to him. Even Kajord listens to him most of the time, long as he isn't causing trouble. What happens if someone challenges Kajord for the leadership? Then somebody dies. <laughs> <laughs> and what happens to the winner? Well, Kajord goes back to doing what he usually does. <laughs> <laughs> I love that logic. But what if someone beats Kajord? Hmm, Hypothetically. I'm really... Humor. I'm torn about including most of the, boys the go over like everybody laughs Depends. scenes. But Kajord is the strongest there is. Strongest sense for heart. They would be they'd so be good moments in real audio. So, I don't know. I lost fair and square, and I lost all my boys. Can you go back to Kajord? Don't see why not. Don't think Kajord cares that much. Was Del the idea? Del's the so one who good, wanted so. that thing. Does Del have any other things like this? Has he sent anyone else out for them? No, I... Well, there was them guards who wanted to get in with Kajor. Del told them where to find something in Uman lands to impress them. A big sword? Yeah, a giant sword. Wow. I think we need to talk to Del. He sent an orc band to your family. And that, I can't forgive. You took them out too? He sent an orc wow. band to your family. You really is an orc killer. I say, we <laughs> take her stuff, give her a non-magical sword, and send her to let Del know we're coming for him. Just because we can. So you're okay with taking her shit now? Well, we leave her her life? Ah. Uh, I like the part where we take her stuff. I'm just not sure what we gain from the causing trouble part. I mean, it's cool, like 10 out of 10 for style, but minus a million for practicality. Or we could just put a leash on her and follow her there. We either go find Dell or let him come to us, but we need to kill Dell. I'm really not sold on sending her as a taunt. I love the taunt. I'm not that keen on taking stuff from someone who's still breathing. From my point of view, we should just kill her. We have Dell's thingy, the artifact. Hopefully us having it will inhibit his evil plan. Here's the thing. She's not human, so I don't really care, but she is already defeated. I can't condone... Whatever. Death penalty, man. <laughs> as far as we know, she's only killed orcs. Actually, the goblin woman said three humans died in a fight, and at least one was intentional. Cold-blooded slaughter. I would rather marry her and have half-orc babies <laughs> than kill her. My plan, if you guys that just... Was, that was an odd stance, Black. Was to shoot her with my crossbow. They're nice. trying to make a point, but... Only a like... few minutes have passed. I still have all my crossbow buffs going on. You probably don't need all that to kill her. I want to make sure. Let's send a message to Dell. Know how we'll send him a message? When we show up and stab him in the kidneys. Yeah. So what's the vote? You guys are all gathered around. You all have to decide. And then Draven will shoot her. My guy is all about <laughs> honor. She's been defeated. Just give her her stuff and let her walk. You're not about honor. You're about justice. She's a murderer. And you're going to release her? As honorary knights or whatever, we totally have the authority to execute her for that. If you want to give her a chance, strip her of everything, let her go out into the desert with not even a weapon. You kidding me? She'd be fine. She's an orc. Look, yeah, I good, will ask Good luck her. finding Del's kidneys. <laughs> you were the leader of this band. Yes. 
the other day you killed some humans. You don't deny this. No, that's true. We killed them. There. Guilty. <laughs> the search for Dell begins. Next time on Tales from My D&D Campaign. That was a dark next time. What's the matter, Dell? Huh? Right, good work, boys. That's one fat scorpion. We feast tonight. That's not sister at all. If I keep remembering to turn on the captions, I'm sure at some point we will hit episodes that I did proper captions for. Although, I mean, I assume that it would switch automatically from the auto-generated ones. See, there's an episode where I had watched it at some point and I was like in the middle. Tales from my D&D campaign. Previously. We're looking for orcs carrying three humans. Have you seen them? They were attacked and slain near here by a group of foreign orcs from the desert. I didn't see that coming. These outsiders killed the boys, killed the prisoners too. Then the foreigners took something from the orc leader and headed back northeast towards Uruk. Yeah, the trail dog, there's the orcs, a lot of foreshadowing. The sands, they're only 80 feet away. I am little one, slayer of Marm. The orcs rise. I think I so. No I, this is around I where I think I started orcs. making the videos. Was when the the campaign was at whoever. this point. If you can beat us, I'll tell you who sent us. I assume you're stripping all her weapons. So I would have better stuff. notes from my course, on this. The other thing she has is the archaeological find that started all this. Draven, you're pretty sure that a it's Itaran in origin. Ooh, and b. <laughs> It's just a part which has been disconnected from the controls of a larger device. After looting Hag's boys and interrogating their leader, the heroes have learned that an orc named Dell, more or less Kajor's second in command. Yeah, I, I, re I really thought they were. I really thought Little One was going to recruit Hag. Not only that, but while the name had meant nothing to them at and the time, like, nope, execute. Gang had also gotten the idea from Dell to go after the Frost Giant Sword in Baron <coughs> Silverload's dining room. That's Draven's father-in-law. The connection was probably just a coincidence. Certainly there's no way some orc in the mid-desert would have known that this group of PCs some orc with a torn up ear. miles away would intercept the warriors hunting this artifact. But regardless of whether he knew about Draven and his family, this Dell was clearly manipulating other orcs for some mysterious purpose. Glasses are just perpetually so we dirty. Got the thingy. Do we take it back to the basilica? The archaeologists are dead. And we took out the orc, so we don't have to keep going. But Dell's still out there. Along with whatever equipment this was attached to. But the Hand would want to find out what happened, and figure out what this thing is. I'll definitely send them a message. I'll cast Sending to tell Jonason, actually, so, Jonason's assistant, much more diplomatic. So they could have just if they could have just turned to back to at this thing, point. The answers are or they could go into the desert in the for months. They also haven't done anything about Zahir. He's been gone a long time. We don't really have any leads on him, do we? Don't think so. I feel bad about what happened to Zahir, but we're out here now. So do we know where this thing came from? Not exactly. Based on what Angel saw of the witnesses' memories, you could easily find the ruins of Kuraj, the village whose people once searched the desert for relics of the Shatter War and the Ancients. You know the archaeologists used that as a starting point when they headed into the desert, using some kind of search pattern, <coughs> and probably a lot of luck, to find the site of the strange metal room the witness described. That uh, yeah, Math GSS, uh, Zahir, probably being tortured right about now. <laughs> and it only took them a couple days? Well, it was more like a couple weeks. But they could go they back and look for him, search, but... The actual distance covered was probably smaller than it sounds. 
still, replicating their path would be really hard. Except that Mora can cast Lay of the Land once a day. Lay of the Land is a powerful navigation spell, which gives the caster a bird's eye view of the terrain in a 50 lay mile radius, lay. as though looking at a detailed map. She should be able to spot any unusual. Man, I'm still not used to this version of Mora. I like changed to the so desert the armor, hasn't been well and then she just stayed in the desert armor There's forever. A very good chance she will spot it, so we just have to get within 50 miles. That's huge. That's like a whole day's travel, considerably more than a day's travel in the desert. Still, that spell makes this sound really viable, and I am very interested in the ruins where they found this. Interested on multiple levels. It's ancient. It seems to be a Taran. It may contain equipment or information I could use to help solve this astral plague thing. Ugh. And the orcs seem to be looking for it. And the Kuatoa. What Kuatoa? At the other place, Ginneron. GE7 seemed to think Kua Commander knew about the portal. It may just have been that specific place, though. You really don't know. And you're pretty sure he died when he went down the drain. And yeah, he's gone. Stuff. I think what we do is we go looking for him. the Atarin stuff. If we find like Bell along the way, we'll mop him up. But he's not the priority. Priority is the Atarin stuff. Draven casts the spell Sending to update the Hand of Sirius, explaining that they killed the orcs, recovered the item, but no survivors. And they were investigating further. Then Ooh. they start moving further just east non -stop the yawning at this of Angor, <laughs> hugging the edge of the northern mountain range, where <coughs> they assess their desert survival preparations. I did get Rainbow Dash one of our traveler's cloaks in her size. That provides water. I should point out that your cloaks protect against cold, but not heat. You may need other measures to help you deal with the temperatures. Huh? Those cloaks have endure elements. I remember you got them for some winter travel, and I'm pretty sure they only have the cold half of Endure Elements. Well, damn. Is that a research also, thing? if you end up going further in, it can get very hot in a deep desert. Like, really hot. Like, sandstorm setting heat protection bands. It doesn't sound like you need to stray too far from the edges, but if you did, you can get to places so hot that the spell Endure Elements and similar effects only help a bit rather than fully protecting you. But Endure well, you Elements don't... says... Endure Elements has a temperature range. I'm saying I borrowed some rules from a desert setting book called Sandstorm, where he... Yeah, you, you don't want to run into this stuff where Endure so Elements is no longer enough. Even fire immune creatures might have to limit their exposure. Though again, I don't expect you have to worry about that anytime soon. But if you go deeper into Uruk... You may need endure elements just to improve conditions up to regular heat exhaustion. Man, there must be good <laughs> shit to fight in the deep desert. Otherwise, why would I be out there all the time? The cloaks don't make <laughs> unlimited water, but they make enough for one person each day under normal weather. Even normal desert takes double water rations, maybe more depending on exertion. But because Black has the cantrip Create Water, and I made cantrips at will, they're pretty set in that department. I should also note that in the desert, any kind of armor could start to cause you problems. Even a chain shirt? Chain shirt's pretty light, but it's still worse than no armor. Does that mean I should ditch my awesome armor and go with this desert armor? Doesn't your armor have heat protection? It has energy protection. It protects against electrical and <laughs> negative energy. It doesn't do heat and cold. Well, that sucks. It does so many things you just assumed. You know, I don't technically have to wear my armor. It takes a couple seconds to put on. That's right. Your mechanized plate only takes one round to dawn. That's some yeah. iron. It's not. It's not that the I whole desert that. is so bad that it has all that like crazy sandstorm stuff. Army. It's just that What's awesome is there are I definitely places in the desert that, that are like that. My dragon scale plate. Is there any way I can mess with you? Like store something else in there? When I use it, it puts on whatever's in the ring, like a thong. <laughs> That'd be awesome. But then I'd have to kill you. They help Black put some straps on his folded up armor so he can carry it like a backpack. I'm so white under here. Everyone's like, oh my god, there's a guy under there. We were starting to think <laughs> we were warforged. I'll take off my chain shirt and cast mage armor. It's one hour per caster level, long enough for daytime stuff. That'll make it a lot easier, for sure. And Mora's going to switch her armor for one of those orcish breastplates. She's an Aventi, an aquatic race. She could use the extra protection against heat and dryness. Yeah, it's a good thing you guys have infinite water, because she's using 
shooting even more than the rest of you. What about our horse? Can she move okay in the sand? Rainbow Dash is actually not that badly adapted, even though she's not from a desert environment. Her feet Rainbow are Dash. so big that the extra Just surface area helps her to sink in broad less than her weight hooves. would imply. Raven, can you give her flying? Yes, for specific problems, but not long enough for general travel. What you really need is some item to give her overland flight, which lasts in hours. When they reach the wind-carved formation known as the Dragon Rocks, the land is transitioning into endless waves of uh, This is where we have the actual here, nice background that I goddamn researched. To follow the mountains along the edge some, of the like, cool desert locations. some camels moving across the blasted landscape, and they are attacked once by big lizards, about Komodo dragon size. The lizards are literally no threat to such powerful adventurers, and after butchering one batch, future lizards seem to keep their distance. Mostly. About the third day after turning left, you spot some griffins flying over the mountains. Yeah. They're so far off, you can see it's them Not as nice a background, but I guess it does its job. Birds. Ah, if I didn't have Rainbow Dash, we could get us some griffins. I like griffins. Like, Your problem is you like everything. Mount Envy. You just want to recruit everything. Damn right. <laughs> except Hag says the achievement. Pokemon. Gotta catch them all. Re Rainbow Dash, recruit everything, you. Except Hag. Soon. About a week after the fight with Hag's orc band, uh. they discover the ruined, once hidden village of Kuraj, Zaheer's childhood home. It was destroyed over a decade ago when the orcs finally found it, but it's the key starting point for retracing the steps of the archaeologists. From there, they head into the desert proper, with Mora using lay of the land daily to look for anything that might be a dig site or a cave entrance. It takes days and days of traveling, but it's not that bad. There's actually more wildlife than you normally think of in a desert. Snakes, and beetles. It's when you look every direction and see nothing. That's what I don't like. As long as we're near mountains, it's fine. Oh, and giant scorpions. Well, you don't see any scorpions that you have to worry about. The biggest you see is about hand size. It's the little ones you have to worry about. Yeah, the little ones will kill you. Uh, yeah, the, the, the cause, new, new campaign is in the same thick. world. It's still 3.5. grow smaller. The so they're going to be starting from low levels the again. The noon peak threatened to exceed the 140 Fahrenheit, 60 degrees Celsius maximum of the Endure Element mm. spell, which only Draven had actually cast. They decide it's time to switch to traveling at night. Draven's goggles now grant dark vision, but Black, with his unaided human eyes, still needs light to see so he activates the gleaming beacon of his mace. No, put that out! That's going to be visible for miles around. If you want that thing on, the rest of us should all move a hundred feet to the right. Adopt plan? Anglerfish. For moving in the dark, we could tie a leash around you. There aren't any roots or anything to stumble over. I've got news oh, for that's you. That's cool, Tavorza. in the same boat. Aw, oh, man. Mora also has a whole bunch of like penalties I accidentally from get the people back into the desert somehow. since she isn't actually proficient cool. with medium armor. But that probably only matters if they're in combat. The new moon provides little light, but since they're riding well, the a moon, platform the moon on looks kind of good, even though they, black like, can actually get it's by the simplest well thing in the world until they encounter anything. Then they encounter anything. Raven, what you see is basically <laughs> fake Final Fantasy music. Sign. What? <laughs> There's a large mound of sand moving towards you. Oh, Something this. big is below the surface. Shai Halud? I sure hope not. Well, it's plowing through the sand, heading for Just you. The very Absolutely beginning of this fight really reminds me of some shit back in the old Final Fantasy days, like Final child. Fantasy IV. Haste. I give us all my deflection bonus to AC. Whatever it is, or it whatever number it was in North America. Down and doesn't charge. Instead, a very large thing shoots up out of the ground, much larger than you expected. It rears back <laughs> and strikes down at little one. Hits AC. 25. AC 30. Isn't it higher than that, with Draven giving you plus 4? I don't have my shield. Black jumps off the horse and uses Knight's move to teleport into position behind the monster, while Angel that runs really over weird. but misses her attack. <laughs> I activate my burning blade maneuver, hit 3 times, take 89 damage total. It resists a chunk of each hit, but takes most of the damage. Notably, it doesn't specifically resist the fire. Mora misses, and Draven deals 25 fire damage from one of his wands, but even that damage is reduced a little. Huh? It has gargantuan... Yeah, we started a trend of everyone saying nice things By about way, me. For those of you standing on the ground, it's coming up. This was just a tail. Oh, oh, that makes a lot more sense. <laughs> That's awesome. And 
bad. Bad. Angel and Black are knocked off its back <laughs> with a reflex save to regain their footing. I'm prone. It's a reflex save. Everyone on the ground somehow passes the save, so only Black actually fell as the massive scorpion surfaces, with sand pouring down between its huge armor plates. That's and big. yes, it does have tremor sense, which is why it was able to attack with the Tedbury. The gargantuan DR rule I instituted represents the fact that some monsters are so large that even a magic sword is barely a pinprick unless wielded in a truly heroic fashion. And while an army of a hundred archers might take down most huge, like elephant-sized monsters, not at a playing point, super currently, Cloud Foran, although or skin made there are a whole lot of like potential games sort of lurking so around the edges. Arrows or bolts or even spears would never defeat it. So after any other resistances or damage reduction, I give a gargantuan monster a threshold of 16 and reduction 8. This means you take whatever damage is left from each attack. I'm not sure that this together, is overly complex, but it just takes so many words to explain. It's not actually nothing. complicated to do. Damage or more, the attack is big enough to get through, but its damage I'm gonna is fall asleep while I'm explaining it, though. And this DR cannot be bypassed by any of the usual things which get around damage reduction, like Little One's Mountain Hammer maneuver. There are also some creatures which are colossal. If gargantuan creatures, such as large sauropod dinosaurs, are the heavyweights of D&D, colossal monsters are the super heavyweights. If you fought Godzilla, Gojira, he would count as colossal. And under this rule, he'd have a threshold of 24 and colossal DR of 12. What's the armor class of your images, Angel? 10 plus size bonus plus dex. I could have told you that. I mean, what is it? <laughs> Mr. Scorpion turns sideways, tries to grab Little One and Angel, and to impale Black with its tail. It swats one of Angel's images, and an immense claw is barely stopped by Little One's deflection bonus. Thank you, Draven. And it rolls horribly and misses Black, despite him being prone. Wow, ni this nice game, round, Scorpion. Black activates his Counter-Strike Bracers, giving him an immediate attack against an enemy who just missed him. He hits the Scorpion for 12, but that's less than the Gargantuan threshold of 16, so it just bounces off. Ah, oh, can I throw this thing? How many size categories bigger is it? Well, let's see. It goes medium, large, huge, Gargantuan. Oh man, you have to fell the greatest foe me. So much damage. Hmm, so it has plus 12 on the opposed check if I try to throw it. Black has to stand up, so he only gets one attack. But he scores a critical hit. Chug a wumba, I huh? make it count. Because he gets back up. 32. It resists some, obviously. But minus 8, that's still 24 damage to the gargantuan scorpion. Flanking the arachnid, Angel sneak attacks for 24, enough that most of her damage gets through. Then Little One takes a spear in both hands and hits it with Elder Mountain It's kind of funny that it's so much larger the than the base, like it's sticking out all over the place, but it actually looks fine. The base helps you to see, like, oh, it's like a thing attack. they can be adjacent Despite to. That, it was still a 45 damage hit, <coughs> and Mr. Scorpion is finally bloodied. The massive arachnid lets out a high-pitched shriek, followed by a wave of subsonic vibrations which liquefy the sand for a second. It's basically <laughs> diving under, but everyone needs to make a reflex save to avoid being dragged down by the temporary quicksand-like effect, and have to spend an action to dig yourself out. Really? This, this ability was still... Do I get an attack of opportunity? I... I, I used it so stupidly, yes, it should have been only like... Only because with your stance, you're basically ignoring the effects of the sandquake. Can I hit for 20? The fact that it spent a whole turn down there, above the surface. just silly. Yeah, you I should only have done it in such, such a way that it actually Black benefited the creature more. Black spends the next round digging himself out. But <laughs> otherwise, they have no target to attack, so they spend a round buffing and healing, and it still hasn't shown up. I want it to come back. I'd be happy to never see it again. It's gonna come back eventually. Maybe not. It's like an animal, right? It's injured. It's gonna come back. I want it to. One, I'd like to finish it off because, well, we started fighting it. Two, it's huge. It's under our feet. It has a poisonous spine. I'd like it dead. And three, it scares the shit out of me. I'd like it dead. I changed stance. Can I smell it out? Well, it definitely smells like a giant scorpion. It's down there, but you aren't yet able to pinpoint it underground. Or is it so big that it's all around you? Can I stab it through the ground? 
You can try. It must be pretty deep, though, since you can't see a bulge in the sand. Is there any rock we can get up on? There's one of those tall, bumper-like rocks just off the battle map, but it would be a pain in the ass to climb. It's concave underneath, and the top is 20 feet up. I cast Fell the Greatest Foe on Angel. I'll stab into the ground, looking for it again. Wait. First, its turn comes up again, and so does it. Now, what to do? <sighs> is it going to go for the horse? Not the horse! If it eats the horse, I'm killing it with my bare hands. <laughs> it's surfacing like a whale, trying to land on top of you guys. What? Come on! The pincers rise out of the ground, spraying sand all over. It's Massive breaching! Weights, tons of muscle launching upward. Shouldn't Rainbow Dash get an attack of opportunity as it's coming up? Mm. Rainbow Dash is running away. She could kick and run. Is it coming down on me? Sadly, no. Oh. As big as it is, Things it's missing not back. quite big enough to hit everyone it wants to. You still need to make a reflex save to not get knocked down by the sand wave. I get, uh, 21. Well, okay then, it looks like you... Uh, no, wait. It's plus... No, I get 19. Then you get knocked down. Sorry. <laughs> 20 was the number. You need a flipper on your back. Like a battle bot, so you can right yourself. You get right on that. <laughs> Everyone in the landing zone manages to save, avoiding severe damage. But anyone else on the ground fail to save, being knocked prone. Mr. Scorpion claws Rainbow Dash. Well, of us all, Rainbow Dash has the most hit points. She can take a few hits. And I'm going to say she's too big for improved grab, though it probably could. Then... <laughs> Possible crit on black. 32 to confirm? Nope. AC 33. Okay, no crit, but now make an opposed grapple check. You need to roll a 20. Unless it rolls a 1. Okay. Black has a grapple bonus too. He probably has a pretty um, big grapple check. But it has. Yeah, Rest if you wanted to get on, I guess you could be yeah, 18 or you call me, or you could go to that patron patron chat audio thing. I think you block. just have. I think you have permission to go there, extra right? Extra 14 damage from being crushed. That all count as one attack. Um, yeah, it's really all one attack. Might as well, because I'm stuck in his claw. Black triggers his retributive amulet and deals half the damage back to the scorpion, and the damage is really starting to add yeah, up Restria. against this mountain of hit points. Could be worse. Good thing it didn't grab you before diving. Oh, man. oh wait a second. Okay, I had that. the volume down on that tab. Whoops. With its massive poisonous tail. Yeah, if you, if you well, talk now, now they should be able to hear you, I think. It's a fake angel with its massive poisonous tail. Good thing I cast that. Ah, uh, screw it. I'll call out for Rainbow yeah, if you're on it. just full attack it. She should turn sideways, give it like a broadside kick. Could she trample it? No, you can only trample hmm. things that I'm not seeing your mic light up. You have to be big enough to completely cover whatever it is. Rainbow Dash hits all three times, and each hit does at least a little damage through the Super Scythe oh. DR. Then it's Black's turn again. So, I need to get out. Hello? The way I'm running Grapple, you aren't pinned and doomed forever. You'll automatically be released on its turn. That's why I apply the Constrict damage right away. User volume, 100%. So you're immobilized through your turn. But unless it hits you again, you'll be free the following turn. So Black attacks the best he can, then Angel, <laughs> switching her stance back. The rest is just trying to join, but she's on push to talk and she doesn't know what the button is. 26, 22, and 21 damage. The buff Black cast on her earlier, Fell the Greatest Foe, adds plus 1d6 damage to her attacks per size category that her target is larger than she is, which, against the Gargantuan Scorpion, is, was a massive... That is very Fell the Greatest Foe that's going on there. Per attack. I'll searing charge it. Can I land on its back? Hello! It's technically not the closest square. Hello! Sure. Makes it harder for it to hit me with its tail. Actually, it's a scorpion. The tail is designed... I heard that. I hope the audience said. Not back. Huh. Oh, well. Actually, it hasn't used its attack of opportunity this round. And you're a charging through its that reach. Makes perfect sense. And it misses. And, and then I Close. can't possibly and I forget. For or it can't possibly and hit by accident. And then can't remember. <laughs> More of full attacks from nice. the back of Rainbow Dash. But every shot from her repeating crossbow bounces off the scorpion's armor. I haven't gone in a while. You're up next, right after Mora. Oh man, he's all set up for the kill steal. Three hits, one of which crit. 
the immense beast reels. Kill steel. one off one side, throwing Angel off the other, though she swings around the tail and lands on her feet. The horrific death wail reverberates across the blasted waste, its rumble vibrating the sand enough that the body sinks a couple feet. I assume I'm performing surgery for the poison Kill steel was one of the noms the for the TDDC awards, so and it was one of the more annoying blind. ones to try and source like footage for, because it's like, it happens all the time! But when you try and look for it, it's hard to find. Place. It's yeah, yeah, that makes sense. Without exposing yourself to it, plus it denatures quickly if exposed to air. Under Angel's surprisingly knowledgeable supervision, even if it happens twenty times out of sixty-six of episodes, there's like a third. <laughs> Fort save difficulty twenty-five. You could easily go through several episodes and not find damage. one. Da damage to a character attribute is huge, and because it's caused, oh, that is crazy it can poison. result in yeah. a loss of as much as. Four hit points per level of the victim. Apart from the poison, it looked like some of the scorpion's chitinous plates could be used to make non-metal full plate, but nobody needs it. A yeah, using the transcript works. Metal that's one, a trick that no the patrons taught me when I kept asking patrons for like help finding cool. footage. Uh, uh, thanks for all your help with that, guys. Down a dragon, <laughs> if a relatively easy one. So yeah. they set about harvesting what they can. Little one in particular, who was using his blacksmithing skills to help eye out the best sections for use in armor, rolls super high, helping them get some nice oh, intact plates from places they didn't hit. Almost too nice. It was hard to imagine. But Angel what has all these like the huge poison mini game things, like like far. finding poisons. I was thinking, and they oh, just the horse they fight so many the enemies that are immune to poison. So the idea of making some super awesome. It just hardly ever comes up. In the future, they mount some pairs of chitinous plates, balancing them as well as they can on opposite sides of Rainbow Dash. That looks pretty heavy. We might not be able to ride the horse for a while. I'm pretty sure she can handle my weight. Angel weighs like 40 pounds with gear. A gnome's a third of a person, right? By weight, yeah. Actually, Rainbow Dash could pull more than she can I hoped carry. Raven meant by Normally, weight. perhaps, but dragging it through the sand is probably rough. Not like the they Constitution. The night and the next day, as they camp out through most of the daylight hours, they eat the meat off the back of the scorpion plates. Left in the sun, it pretty much cooks itself. Can we use the stinger as a weapon? Like, mount it as a big club or something? Uh, the stinger is huge. It's like a That visual of, of an extra big tent for, uh, for Rainbow Dash is Wait, super cute. <laughs> yeah, hey, I was gonna say something, yeah. I got distracted. What did that thing That's need to funny. defend itself against? Adventurers. Orcs. They are fighting something out there in the deep desert. After a number of <laughs> false positives, they're checking out yet another boring rock, having Rainbow Dash dig around it. But as she pulls away, they spot a little crevice about five feet down where sand appears to be falling away into Ooh. the darkness beyond. They get the big clumsy hooves out of the way, and the stronger PCs get down there with shovels, revealing an entrance the size of a regular double door with a dark tunnel beyond. They don't need to clear the whole door, though. They just shove enough sand out of the way to push their way into the blue metal-lined passage. Does my armor power up? You can feel something. Like, it's definitely trying to react somehow. <laughs> there's no actual effect. You can't connect. Now. Like, it's unable to connect or something. <laughs> crappy Wi-Fi. <laughs> crappy Wi-Fi. I, right I almost said crappy Wi-Fi, and I thought it probably says it in the video. A yellow line around the outer wall, which must have been worn away by the sand in the upper parts. Does it you got a yellow line, but only one like bar. Generon? There are ridges in the corners which... I'm glad that I'm not the only person who just makes the same three so, jokes over and over again for Yeah, out. if you put me in the same situation, I'm likely to make the same joke, especially if it's like in an episode, because then it's something that I've written and performed before, too, so... What lies beyond the door does resemble the small metal room the archaeologists uh. supposedly found, but the door to the room is out of position with the floor up at an angle, leaving a sizable gap between the end of the hallway and the small metal chamber. A gap which opens into a wider dark space. The below. best one-off uh, NPC uh, is coming up what soon. What the heck is this place? Yeah, it's still a little while. Time. I'm just looking at how much I was over-zooming that image so, to the point it became pixelated. Whereas really, I should have exported a very large version of it so that I could zoom it in without going past 100% size in Premiere. That's what I'm thinking. Well, well it's very important to zoom on still images because it really helps create motion. 
Yeah, they do it all yeah, the time but... in Prince of Tennis. So the I'm plan sure. is to finish the magic item quest. If but you do want to make way, great. You want the image to be big enough that when you're zooming, one, you're not making it pixelated. We still need to cure this astral plague. Well, now that you suspect the source of the item is probably a Taran, there's a chance this place might have the kind of equipment you're looking for. Have we figured out if there's any potential for us to be able to use the curse? Like, the actual power? Like the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles? I would go more Tony Stark. You're not that far into the research yet. We don't I'm sorry, the equipment you're looking for is in another facility. Find a way to use it. Yeah. We could all just turn ourselves into Warforged. I'm not entirely <laughs> opposed to that. We could live forever. You want to live forever? Of course. What kind of question is that? Duh. Of course. <laughs> silly, silly rabbit. <laughs> it's my, my terrible knockoff Final Fantasy music that I made badly. It a hundred percent gets the point across instantly. It it yeah I, no I, it did succeed. <laughs> Tales from my D and D campaign. Oh man. Yumi Goblin says legally distinct Using battle music and I approve. Impressions combined yeah. with daily castings of Lay of the Land, the party finds the ruins of Kuraj, and from there, one massive scorpion later, they uncover what they believe to be the source of the strange Ataran relic being sought by Dell and the other orcs he has We found it, guys! We what found the source! The Mission accomplished! The small metal room the archaeologists had supposedly found, but the door to the room is... Oh no, not at all, Nine. Uh, that was, this is, this is way, th this is definitely... Before Draven became like immortal in the in game, which opens into a wider dark space. There's a, there's a lot of time that passes between here and there. I activate my slippers of spider climb and go underneath. Boy, you are creepy. In your dark vision, you see that the large space is about 60 feet wide, with a flat floor 40 feet down and maybe 100 feet long. From underneath, the small metal room has. Weird equipment on the bottom, and small looks metal like room. structure separate from the larger cavern. Apparently, it almost looks like it's been forced, pushed out of the way, creating the gap that allowed you into the big room. Is the cavern all metal? No, other than the entrance tunnel you were in, most of the walls are bare stone. But it's not a natural cavern. It's regular, like it was dealt. The Ataran Atar places, places make a lot of like fly? really you boring backgrounds. Too. Okay. Ah, the pixels. Make the place any less mysterious, though. There were some kind it's, of it'd be so easy to have taken whatever whatever image I was using for that zoomed-in background and just export the, the thing at like 200 or 400 percent size, so that I could zoom in that far without breaking down. One of the advantages of vector art is that you can basically export it at any size you want. So something huge broke into here and wrecked the metal room thing? I want to search around, see what I can find. It's well, terribly mysterious. A large chunk of the floor, On the plus side, it's it background like art that's really easy for you to make. Empty, yep, yep, that's uh, always the trade-off. Definitely some kind of equipment, machinery, in one corner of the space, but it appears to have been crushed almost literally flat, then covered in this mass of sand. No. All that is pretty obvious, but with your search check, you know that you can hardly see it's not great for my neck. From the wall oh, it's like stand. sitting here staring at the screen. If something broke in, causing that mass so normally I'd be scared, staring at all the different screens. All there are lots of screens. Whether it would be <laughs> large, hard to miss chunks or a shotgun spread of crushed gravel. How many screens are there? You aren't seeing it. Oh, there's six so in total. I, I don't and only get three it. on this computer, but the three on this computer are really big. And then what? Push the metal thing out of the way uh, and left up the ramp. The other computer has two small, two regular things? screens and one little Dark tiny eight. square one because I couldn't. Because I'm running out of space on my desk, scorpion? I couldn't fit a bigger or monitor over there. The same one, but one of those. That scorpion was so large, it might be able to squeeze through a hole that size, but it would have been a tight squeeze and not, you know, smashing its way through. Tight squeeze, because I say, as I show it. Pinching black. It also seems 
very unlikely that anything that would smash a 20-foot hole could make its way up the winding ramps where you came in. Realizing that the archaeologists who found this site had only seen the interior of the small metal chamber, Draven flies back up to check it out more thoroughly. The metal room is full of equipment, but someone or something had bashed in the panels, the controls. He could see the spot where Dude. this rod had been removed from some sort of power regulation control. Unlike the flattened stuff down below, there was plenty left to study, maybe some of it repairable, but in the short term, it had been rendered quite non-functional. After examining the whole area, the odd metal room, the tracks along the ceiling and wall, and peering down the very long dark tunnel that intersected the space, they began to solidify some theories. It looks like this is a mobile room. It, it could move from the ground up to the entrance along those rails. It would have fit down this tunnel, too. Do the tracks go down those tunnels? No, but there are a pair of grooves in the floor. Very shallow grooves, less than an inch deep. What was the purpose of this place? Mora has knowledge engineering. Why? <laughs> Who cares? I'm a sister. There's some like, equipment on the why, do, why does he have this skill? I don't care. Like, use it. Sort of line up with the grooves in the tunnel, though they really aren't deep enough. They wouldn't One of those moments where you're digging through your character sheet and you're like, oh wait, I can do this! With an insane degree of mechanical yep. precision. And this passage looks to be a fairly precise north-south axis. Could I get this thing running? Or maybe assemble something using the junk? The junk in the larger space is beyond any help. The machinery up there is still machinery. It may Excuse not me. be beyond repair, though your first impression is that you'd need a fair bit of time and probably more equipment to work with, more parts to replace some of the damaged stuff. Well, I'm at a loss until we find something to kill. They decide to explore the south tunnel. The walls and floor are smooth. Delved not with elite dwarven quality craftsmanship, nor was the oh, yeah. disintegrated with perfect the magical shadows precision, animating to still, give you the really perception that we're moving. Very straight and level. Impressively so, as the dark windowless hall stretches further and further beneath the desert. What about the horse? She can't come down the way you did, that's for sure. Can you shrink her? Like that spell. The opposite of enlarge. The spell is enlarge person, and like it, reduce person only works on humanoids. Is there a druid spell for shrinking animals? Actually, what does Rainbow Dash count as? Uh, she's pretty much an animal. Really? That's not a magical beast? Well, let's just say, if you find a shrink animal spell, I think it should work. Here we go. Reduce animal. Druid level 2 shrinks... Hmm. One size category. Really? Because I thought druids had an animal growth spell that could do two size categories. Even at large, she could technically squeeze into the hallway, but it's really not practical to get her down all those winding ramps. We could dig down through the big hole. It's all sand, right? It is, but even the top of the room is 60 feet down. Also, sand would fill in anything you dig out. You guys would be here a very long time. Unfortunately, they had to leave Rainbow Dash behind. She didn't fit down the ramps. No. They weren't planning to go too far, so Draven preferred not to spend any of his XP to emulate a big enough spell to get her down. They'd be back for her. But this tunnel isn't just a path to another room. It stretches on and on, straight and virtually featureless, as they march for, like, an hour. The road goes on and on, on echoing, something, 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 hobbit song. Anyone mind if I just flood this tunnel? Water. Actually... Cast some water. See if it's really level. Okay. Water. Aye. The fluid spreads out about as close to evenly as you're gonna get. It isn't, like, perfect, but it's even enough that the tunnel's clearly level to a fairly high degree of precision. So this is a serious tunnel. You could swear you just heard something way down there, though the way things echo in here, it could be hours away, or you might just be hearing things. Forget this. I'm going scouting. I'll have Mora cast invisibility on me and get Expeditious Retreat going. So I move at speed 70. Speed 70? So you double move like 140 feet per round? Faster than that if she runs. If you aren't defending yourself, just running headlong in a straight line, you get four times your speed. Or three times your armor. 280 <laughs> feet. That's about 85 meters. That's... 14 meters per second.
times 60, 840 meters per minute. Almost 50 kilometers yeah, per hour. Yeah, level zero yeah. spells are Over usually called cantrips. Invisible. On the ceiling if she wants. And then uh, my house rule is that the Great. zero level spells, one of those moments you just have, you, you just cast them at will, because why are we keeping track of that? Wouldn't necessarily be on the same the only uh, the only thing is that you, I got rid of anything that was like a zero level spell like that healed a hit point because casting that it will cause problems. Long. But the gnome assassin dashes about a kilometer a minute. She covers about five miles in the ten minute duration of the two spells. When you stop, you do hear something. It's much closer, like percentage wise, though it's still hard. Okay, we've entered Sonic yet. mode. I'm just There's imagining there. coins oh, along the way. It's sort of like soft footfalls, but almost more like someone waiting quietly through shallow water. It sounds like there's more than one. You'd guess minimum three of them. It's not even as loud as the others walking behind you. Their armored footsteps must travel for miles. Even if we lead Black and Mora around in the dark so we aren't seen, anyone down there will hear us coming. I could cast silence. Would that block sound from behind you too? I don't know. I think it should. If the spell blocks the entire volume of the space, which, in this case, the 20-foot radius easily would. If there was any gap around the corners or something, though, the sound would just go around it. Tell you what, I'll cast silence on a stone where we are, so Angel up ahead can still hear. I'm pretty quiet. They won't hear me coming. I'll recast Invisibility and Expeditious Retreat. So you're recasting the spells. Are you going the full distance till the Invis runs out again? Or halfway then back? <laughs> Assuming you don't find anything. Three quarters. That way, I still have time to get back to safety if needed. That's a good margin. She goes nowhere near that far, though, before <laughs> Angel spots three figures at the edge of her dark vision. Roughly humanoid figures with thick limbs, all made of stone, but mostly featureless. The reason they aren't making much noise is that they aren't walking on the floor. Rather, their feet are sort of gliding through the rock. Mm. You're pretty sure they had been coming toward you when you heard them before, but they are moving away now. See Invis? No. What the hell? Well, it doesn't look like they're reacting to Angel's movements, though perhaps they heard the rest of you before you laid down the silence spell. Angel creeps mm -hmm. along, following the Rockmen from 60 feet back, and they do seem oblivious to her. It takes many minutes for the others to catch up, even with Little One and Black taking their armor off so they can full-on run for a while, since the hall had been scouted and Graven's silence spell hid their noise. Draven catches up first with his fly speed, but the tanks haven't caught up yet when they see the stone things turn and move sideways and downwards through the wall and floor at a certain point in the hall. Uh, we're gonna stop now. You should move back towards us. But we need to know where they disappeared. This whole place looks the same. Leave some kind of marker. I'll leave a dagger. They all meet up. Black puts down his pack and armors up, while little one's like, Bing! Mine's faster. Yours is cooler. I'll search for secret doors. <laughs> they don't need doors. They go through the ground. Yeah, but maybe they aren't alone. Maybe they work for someone who does need a door. When she doesn't find one, she uses her Whisper Gnome racial ability to recast their silence spell, and Little One goes to work on the marked wall section, using Elder Mountain Hammer to deal a massive hardness bypassing strike. And even with all that force, it takes a while. Each time he uses the maneuver, he has to spend the next round recharging it, during which he can only attack normally. Focusing G, focusing G, SMASH! The going was really slow, because the stone of the tunnel wall seemed to have been improved in some fashion, hardened, mm -hmm. but after breaking through about six inches of that, he reaches normal rock, and progress becomes faster. After about two minutes, he breaks through enough that they can... Yeah, two minutes is a lot of smashing with that void, thing. A dark space beyond, and from there... Wow, what that achievement! Oh my god. <laughs> You're still gonna have to widen the gap considerably to get even Angel through. <sighs> Actually... I could cast stone shape to make a tunnel. It shapes ten well, cubic what feet plus one level. Yep, that can easily make a tunnel it, larger. It was something along the lines of we can see your crack. Through. Magic saves the day again. After he works like a slave <laughs> for two minutes, Wonderful. the passage opens up into a series of narrow, winding, <sighs> natural caves full of cracks and dead ends. They're basically spelunking now. I rolled a twenty. Can I keep that? And now they're spelunking. I rolled a twenty for what? Uh, I don't know. Tell you what, you can use it for anything that happens in the next round. So, time passes. Aww. Unlike the <laughs> elementals are going to be attacking out of everywhere. Were we supposed to cut through the wall? You weren't supposed to do anything. Just wondering if you planned for it. But they don't get ambushed by Earth elementals. At least, not right now. 
The rough little caverns are difficult terrain, but thanks to one of her Sword Sage stances, Angel scouts through easily. It doesn't cost her double movement or anything. She can try to point out easier paths for the rest of you, but you're like, No, you idiot! We can't loop-to-loop -loop over the ceiling! But you avoid all the rocks! Whee! Soon, though, they discover a wide open cavern okay. where it would be easier to move around other than a small stream of water flowing in from a gap in a long tunnel. So we didn't need to break through the wall. <laughs> How deep is the water? The stream flowing in is pretty shallow. I guess water. Well, as you come through to this room here, there are actually a whole bunch of guys waiting Oh, it looks like we found a battle map. Us. They're actually yep. very quiet. If yeah, you that, stand that, still. that looks like there a battle were map. Gangs of rock guys and also humanoid fire guys who were providing that red glow they'd seen from the tunnel. And behind them, a pair of goo men, very much like the one they saw in Hengal. I just realized. Yeah, Robot Master, I, we, we have a dry erase map tables. It's just like a grid that you can draw on. So, I would just draw a bunch of crud call it a map. Anything at all that we're involved in. Guys made a fire, huh? Water. You know it. Weren't expecting to find we'd been beaten there. Was it you who took down the defenses? Us? Who else would we be talking to? These guys? We totally didn't do it. A likely story. Why are we talking to you? <laughs> a do likely you know story? I hit my head on that wall. <laughs> do you protect that Eternal facility? No, that thing's okay, been keeping people itself are really fun to play, We just found out the defenses yep. are down. I guess we're gonna get there and everything's been taken. There's nothing in there. Isn't that always the way? What was in there? I don't know. It's an Eternal facility. There must be something there. Why are we having a conversation with them? Jesus, I don't know, buddy. We're having the same f***ing question here. Maybe they have some stuff. the <laughs> skin. I think that's the roll initiative line. They're all the way back there. Yeah, it's a lot easier to talk shit from the back. That was a pretty funny conversation, Ooh. actually. Cold. The thing is, they have so many minion types, and that's why laughing I'm laughing at my own damn line reads. Of yeah. fireball. It just still hurt the rock guys. Everything burns. Except things that are already burning. The fire guys definitely burn. They're burning right now. And one's charging black. I'm gonna get burned it. Wait, the fire guy is charging? I thought they'd hang back, fly, and range. Nah, if they wanted to do that, they'd have a higher ceiling. Oh yeah. What was I thinking? <laughs> no, things don't always work that way. But he is charging. Scumbag GM. A bunch of fire minions <laughs> charge. One misses Black, who responds by killing it with an attack from his Counter-Strike Bracers. The next one hits him for 16, of which he resists 7 points of physical damage with his Greater Iron Ward Crystal, because that DR is being boosted by the Ring of Sloth he got in the Shadowfell. However, he's still lit on fire for 1d4 rounds, because it's a reflex save even though he actually has a respectable plus 8 bonus ever since he bought that Cloak of Resistance. One hits little one okay, his reflex saves were terrible before the Cloak of Resistance. Crystal, and he's lit on fire too. If you want 22 gallons of water... <laughs> little one kills a fire guy... Yeah, the goo people are generally party. based on Manticores. I don't remember... Like, one of these two is more of a caster. I don't remember if I had used a different base for that one. basically just dissipate into the air. But the Earth minion dropped by Angel's shot cracks open, and a molten core oozes out, turning his square on the battlefield into a patch of magma. After Black Axe, destroying a couple more fire minions, the Earth ones get to go, most of them phasing into the walls or ground and out of sight. Well, that's comforting. Little one tumbles through the out water, of sight, out of mine? Clothes, then that's uses his ballista throw maneuver to toss a fire minion through a bunch of the other minions in a line. Throwing the fire guy, you'll take another 2d6 damage. Yeah, yeah. The whole time I'm doing this, I keep my eyes focused on those goo guys. So while he coldly stares down the real enemies, the collision deals 14 damage in a line, killing every minion along the path, and the little one gets lit on fire again. Then we process that magma square, which does 2d6 damage in a 10-foot radius, 1d6 in a 20-foot radius. That much? It's Those super are super hot. annoying. It's almost like a mini wall of fire. Wait, if I throw one of the fire guys... Does it do an extra 2d6 to everything it hits? Um, sure. Actually, if I throw one of the rock guys, he'll break into magma. It'd be like a mini fireball. Ugh, they're tearing up all our guys. This is like a waste of time. <laughs> it puffs up and shoots a barrage of rigid spikes at little one. All right, I leaping flame right up to him. Hmm, I'm uh, trying to figure out how it works. He does six ranged attacks, but they're all simultaneous. 
He is based off of Manticore's stats. Normally your counter maneuver would teleport you after the first attack, but they're at the same time. I'm gonna say you get hit by up to half of them. Sure. After three attack rolls, two of the razor-like goo shards hit, dealing 9 and 12 damage respectively, each reduced a little by his armor crystal. But the rest of the volley flies through empty space where little one had been, while he discorporates into fire, streaking across the distance to reappear right in front of the goo man's face. By this That's point, such a good there's move. only one fire minion left, and only one rock minion on the battlefield, not counting the two fools of magma. Though, two or three of the earth elementals are lurking behind the walls. Overall, the party has just been crushing the minions. And now it's Draven's turn. Kill steal. Maybe a little early for that. Have we even hurt the goo guys? No. It's kind of a waste while I'm hasted, but without any other buffs on my crossbow, I'm just going to wand. Ugh, that's a terrible roll. Still hits. It is a touch attack, and he is a large creature. A large pile of poop. Take 39 damage from Orb of Force. Like the other goo guy you fought, they have their special goo defense, so he takes minus two damage per die. Per die? Per die? You <laughs> take 20 less damage? Should've you hit him on a four, what are you complaining about? He's a Large piles of goo are not very dexy. The rock minion moves to flank no. little one, but just barely misses due to the fact that his warblade training makes him immune to flanking. Angel sets up in a defensive position to shred anyone who passes through her spike chain's reach. Mora shoots a goo man with her crossbow of force. The damage is not huge, but it also doesn't suffer that badly from the per die ablative goo reduction, which notably has a minimum of one per die. The speed bonus from haste doesn't stack with the bonus from Black's boots, but it's enough to let him move across the room and still attack the goo man. Which is important, because he can't make a proper straight line charge due to that magma, which would not only hurt a lot, but which is super ultra difficult terrain, taking four squares of movement to pass through. He takes four fire damage just from passing near it, but the rock minion's attack of opportunity misses. Nobody misses black. Your hits just don't do anything. Alright, I hit AC... Oh, f off. Yeah, f off misses. Not giving up, Black <laughs> activates his belt of battle, blowing all the daily charges for another whole turn effectively. He casts Knight's move to teleport into flanking position and scores a critical hit. Wait, is it possible to crit these things? Yep, they're actually not immune to crits. They're totally made of goo, but part of their goo is vital to them. Then I do 32, <laughs> plus, uh, plus 13 for my Part of their goo is crits. vital to them. And because the crit doubles the flat bonuses, their minus 2 BS barely helps them. Yeah, he's bloodied now. Or gooeyed. Gooey. Yeah, Xylon, you only have to drink Diet Coke for a few weeks to get used to it. I'm working on it! The second Goo Man, who may or may not be female, Goo Person, is casting Wall of Magma. Whoa. Wow. It doesn't actually do 20d6. But it's casting so, somewhere, me. somewhere uh, there's like a video no, where you made a song out of that I'm working on it, so that if yeah. someone okay, asked like when the next episode would come out, we could troll them with that yeah, video. Yeah, there's a guy that did it. People, people would ask me like, when, when is the next episode coming out? Semi-frequently at that point, because it was often like a long time. Careful, and I would say, oh, you can see this secret sneak peek here, and it would just be here like, I'm working on it! I'm working on it! I'm working on it! And I'd put it to music, and it yeah, degenerates from there. mass resist fire before you guys came in, because it would be stupid otherwise. Would I have known they were resisting? Um, well, they're next to all the magma and stuff, yeah, you could tell they weren't taking heat damage. You can not waste the maneuver if you want. Since he had already rolled the attacks, it would be awkward to take them back, so he took back the use of the maneuver, but in its place, he used the Warblade recovery method. As long as he makes an attack and does not use any maneuvers, he can recover all his used ones. In this case, his Leaping Flame counter move. And even without the fire, he still inflicted a good 20 damage to the Goo Man, which bursts out the old Goo wings, exposing himself to multiple attacks of opportunity to try and retreat to a safer position. Oh. I've Altrum asked, where do Goo Men stand in the ecology of the world and the faction wars of Kuotoa, humans, orcs, etc.? A one, you I don't know, they just do whatever. Force orb them into the lava. I don't, think they, damage, I don't think they tend to show up a lot on the surface. Nine fire damage and... just kidding. We all know by now, I don't like extra punishing fumbles on ones. It's generally just a miss. Wasting a wand charge is bad enough. And then... Solid fog! 
A powerful vision blocking effect, like most of the cloud spells. That is a serious spell. Slows physical movement to a you may have underestimated her spellcasting. Attacks dead if they pass through more than five feet of it. That in a magma wall is going to be a pain in the ass. It's a pain in my ass. I'm practically right on it. I'm thinking of Earth Reavering the area. I know about where they are, and it would hit a big area, ignoring the fog. Do you have the spell? Hmm. Laura's gonna dimension door me over I just realized we missed out on YouTube captions you. trying to understand our goo people talk. Multiple times, Aww. while Black and Little One continue to take burning Damn damage it. from being lit on fire earlier. I don't understand why it doesn't stay on. Time to put out. Plus damage from the magma patches, all of which I don't understand either. Up. They always yeah, stay on when I don't well, want them to. Why that's what I was help you. Yeah, same, same. The damage it would deal to you. Go ahead. I don't even care. I've got lots of HP. The fog would stop him after five to ten feet. Why? He has a lot more mass than a crossbow bolt. Actually, it's so thick that it even negates falling damage. If you fall into it, you get slowed to a stop. Well then, I'm casting Dispel on the area. You successfully dispelled the solid fog, but the magma wall remains. You've got the fog cloud, that's all that matters. You still want me to ballista throw you? You know what? I don't care. It'd be funny as hell. Well, since you've got rid of the fog cloud, one of the rock minions is going to pop out and try to bull rush little one into the magma. Bring it. Ah, he technically wins, but not by much, so only pushes you five feet, making it totally pointless. Another one tries on black, gets stopped dead. Now that he has an enemy in range, little one throws the rock guy instead of black, or tries to, but he rolls a one, which was about the only way he could miss the touch attack, the easiest part of the whole process. Angel dodges an elemental attacking from within the wall, but the wounded Goo Man hits her with a barrage of spines for 24 damage before Draven dumps a third orb of force into it, finishing the gelatinous monster. So now it's the Goo Spellcaster's turn. She's not in a very good running away position. That's why I moved here. She hits Angel with a Stingray, which effectively slows her. Black and Little One suffer the last round of burning damage from the long-dead fire minions, but then Mora dispels the Stingray, allowing Angel to full attack as normal, starting to really wear down the remaining goo person. Black I have a mental image now of the goo woman glory. slapping Angel Another in the face with an actual damage. Stingray. But then a rock minion bull rushes him, this time that would be pushing funny. Black into the magma. I don't know where he it came from. Useful. I rolled really bad for the magma though, so you only take 20. On your turn, she could have like goo one pockets or a goo like satchel or something. Two of them. Yeah. Then they would stop pushing people into lava. Miss, miss, another one. Gooers handy haversack. Stealing, big guys. He wasn't really aiming. He was like, let's try out the auto fire feature. The goo caster exposes itself to an attack from Angel, taking another 14 damage as it tries to get some distance from the party before casting Haboob. Haboob. I have never heard oh, of that. Oh, a Gucci bag! Yes! It's a, <laughs> it's a cloud spell from Sandstorm. Take a whole 8 sand damage, reflex save for half. But the save is only because she dropped it right on you. In future rounds, there's no save if you enter or move through it. It has all the regular cloud visibility issues. This one doesn't affect movement. Mora casts another area to spell, this time finally getting rid of the magma wall. The couple remaining rock guys get in some solid hits for double digit damage. It turns out they're surprisingly dangerous for minions if they can get through the party's high armor class. Even in dying, being felled by counterattacks, throws, etc., they turn into magma patches, replacing the original patches. Which this was an obnoxious fight, actually. Damage. But Angel hits the caster again, and Black beats on the monster, which is now bloodied. Gooeyed. Kill steal! I don't think I can kill it in one round from Bloody. He crossbows it for a little damage, then the caster takes a Hail Mary shot at Draven with its ranged attack. What? This is like the first time you've been They got through the minions really fight. fast, and then that didn't point. seem to help a yeah. lot. Yeah, they, they, they got through oh, minions, and it didn't stop the minions from killing them. <laughs> by virtue of making six attacks, but she didn't have the rolls. And Angel, using the last daily charge from her heart I think her... To virtually guarantee yeah, that's right. I guess she was based on a manticore, but the other one had, like, much... <laughs> you managed to steal Draven's kill steal. After the last of the magma cools, Goo there's rich. nothing left but a couple piles of goo. Yeah, I guess she was based a on a manticore. The other one had much better, like, attacking loot, stats, though, because she had all the spells and stuff. I think she had, like, a lower strength. Oh god, that means somewhere there's, like, a file of me making a bunch of random death sounds. Oh, for sure. Remember, with the wards down, the maintenance station will be defended savagely by Warforged and other constructs. You must act quickly to secure the tunneling machine so they cannot use it to collapse the North Tunnel. 
and I want any Wait other machinery there intact. If we have a working Somebody carriage, sent this we may note. be able to bypass the wards of the Northern Terminus. Okay, there is way too much f***ing information. <laughs> First, did we head north out of that place? No, you went south. Okay, because south is where there's more civilization, so that was my logic. Is there any map on this thing at all? No, though if they were talking about that place where you came from, all they'd have to do is follow the tunnel. A uh, map would be fairly superfluous. Bypass the wards in the northern terminus. I mean, this almost sounds like a subway. Yeah. The question is, do we go further south looking for another station, and maybe find a working carriage to head north? Or do we go back where we were, see if we can get that carriage working to get past the wards? Or do we say it and just head north the hard way and deal with any wards when we reach them? Or you could just leave all this, because there's all kinds of other stuff you could be doing too. I'm down with finding out what's going on here. So where do we go? North is where they wanted to go. I want to see where these guys came from, and if anything else is coming. All this stuff, and the note, I don't know. You guys now, make a choice. Raccoon, yeah, my go, plan if they went okay, south was, fine. they go south. The there's more, the, the tunnel the keeps going south, they would eventually hit ways, something. Though there's a crack in the it's wall. A rock formation creating a gap too narrow for even Angel to squeeze yeah, in, through. In Angel Dame 17, that, that, that note was definitely not, not from Hazamura. Really it's from the person who is in charge oh, of other like, similar, there a long time. like, rock he elemental there. minions so there that they encounter options. later. One, he's a dick. Two, so, so a different yeah. character than I voiced. <laughs> you get attacked by yeah. stone guys from the walls. Finally, something I understand. Understand? Yes. Enjoy. Oh yeah, know. this. They had easily killed similar numbers of rock minions with literal fire support and dangerous leaders, but in a narrow tunnel, it was an entirely different story. Not only could they hide half in the walls for cover, but with many heroes in reach, they had no need to move around, and all of them were able to take advantage of their two hard-hitting attacks per round. While so their much full attacking meant anyone moving would eat multiple attacks of opportunity. Little one managed to tumble over and throw one of them, causing it to smash through the other minions on that side. But the party had taken a ton of damage, and after mopping up the other side, they had to retreat from all the overlapping heat radii of the molten corpses. Well, that was a lot of fun. You guys want to go further in? For all we know, there could be an infinite number of these. They are so we close to, to original logic. a logic. boss theory. What is our original logic? Who knows? Logic, to me, dictates wherever there's resistance, there's a goal. While they assess their healing resources, <laughs> which are actually pretty good... Okay, Demon Egg, sure TR4 with a southern accent, go! Cure light wounds now. What? Even himself Who, actually decided oh, to tier serve ahead. He had already cast invisibility. The southern accent? Dylan said, the Dylan said if they went south, they would find the southern terminus, the ground, and that would have TR4 with a southern so accent. So Let's go! Ahead relatively safely. And also he'd taken by far... I don't know what y'all are talking about! There was a faint Everything down here is perfectly normal! ...felt than heard. The tunnel curved, and a while the left wall fell away as the passage intersected. <laughs> this is normal, but with a y'all? Yeah, basically. Our, our glow, the tunnel becomes fully enclosed again, veering <laughs> away from that chasm, slopes down for a bit, then dives abruptly, becoming a long volcanic shaft. A shaft. There's no sign of lava at the bottom. Is it hewn? No, looks pretty natural. All right, I'm going to book it. Having tracked his time carefully, Draven gets back to the others right about as his invisibility spell expires. I'm okay with leaving this place, because these aren't parts I'm interested in exploring. I'm fine with leaving. So's Mora. Mora's extra fine with leaving this place. Hot, dry, then getting punched extra hard, they try to burn her. She's normally fairly cheery. Well, not really cheery, but upbeat, trying to keep everyone's morale up. But she's been sounding pretty dour since the last battle. I'm sensing immediate danger, and no immediate sign of reward. Should I wheel her woe? Sure, couldn't hurt. But there's a die roll to it, and despite an 80% chance, it fails. Fortunately, Augury is safe, in that it does simply fail, rather than providing bad information. Serious oh yeah, doesn't screw know those divination area, spells apparently. that give you, like, or incorrect information. information. But without divining any reason to go further, having decided that this is not the way of the future. They find themselves staring back into the seemingly endless Ataran Tunnel. Unless you guys have other ideas, the two obvious choices are to continue further south, or turn back north to the maintenance station you came from, the place they wanted to reach. I think we should go back and continue north beyond that. That's where these guys wanted to go. There must be something down there. 
Again, you guys pick a direction, and when you find something, I'll kill it. Next time on Tales from My D&D Campaign. If they'd gone just a little bit further into that place, they, they were almost at Mayulana. <laughs> Don't remember exactly what I had planned for her lair. <laughs> they they could have talked. How far down is it? The cavern's 60 feet high, so from the floor of your entrance tunnel, it'd be... 50 feet. Is this one? So, what? 5d6 damage? I can take that. Actually, if you're jumping down intentionally, that reduces the effective distance by 10, so it'd be 4d6. Can I make a 3-point landing? Can you make a balance check? No. You can make a face plant landing. <laughs> Wait, if he takes falling damage, can he deal his counter damage back to the ground? That'd be awesome. Remember the Scorpion's size-based DR? You have no idea the planet's DR. Aww. Also, you don't want to find out the die code for its slam attack. Don't aggro the planet. I like. Can you can you make a balance check? No. <laughs> it's just no need to roll. It's just like nope, that's not happening. Tales from my D&D campaign. Previously. 20 feet? That's a big hole. So something huge broke into here and wrecked the metal room thing? Do you protect that Eternal facility? No, that thing's been keeping us out for ages. We just found out that the fences are down. I guess we're going to get there and everything's been taken. There's nothing in there. Isn't Ride the lightning is still quite a ways away. This is episode the station 33. That's like 44? You must act quickly to secure I'm worried because it's far away. Because I'm only going to catch the start and end of the stream each day and not the middle chunk. Right. We may be able to bypass the wards of the northern terminus. Again, you guys pick a direction, and when you find something, I'll kill it. South is where that water was coming from, and... That's where the tunnel would connect to stuff. Like, I went to bed at Mark does. and came back and we were in the <laughs> desert. The elemental guys were going. That is quite a jump. the water is anything that matters. I don't think we need to go south to follow it. I'm not feeling it. What's north? Like, past the desert. Past the desert? Oh, yeah. The north end of the desert is a mountain range, and beyond that is just a narrow strip of land between the mountains and the sea. It serves as a pass between Vistria and Corsret during the warm seasons. Just one more problem. We need to get Rainbow Dash down here. We can't. Someday we'll on hit one of those episodes where I did captions for it, and we're, we're going to turn we're on, and there's going to be, like, nice capitalization and rest. shit, and we'll be like, what Rainbow is Dash. going yeah, on? This isn't funny at all. It's just what yeah, they said. Yeah, it'll be really disappointing. <laughs> the party's already Big mistake. Rainbow Dash is part of the party. She's Little One's cohort. Technically, she's just as much a member of the party as Mora is. Put it this way. If I had to choose between saving her or one of you, I'd be pretty conflicted. We've got a bard now. How much do we need Draven? I can't even ride Draven. He won't let me. They head back to the cavernous space referred to can't even ride Draven. person's note as the maintenance station. After a bunch of flipping through books, we figure out that the burrow spell, which grants a dig speed... See, but like, if a party member creature, dies, so they're going to be replaced by a new party member. If Rainbow Dash, Dash dies, he's not going to get the same thing as a cohort, so I think he's yeah. totally valid. Stone, like an earth elemental. But with a few minutes of coaxing, they manage to convince Rainbow Dash to use the power, and Little One gets her to dig down through the sand to emerge from the 20-foot-wide hole in the side of the underground chamber. Once she gets down there, though, she seems happy to be out of the sun and wind, and the long tunnel is big enough for her to walk just fine, without shrinking, though it's not quite high enough to ride her comfortably. Except me. They set out down the tunnel, heading northward. They're not terribly surprised that this way just is the other direction. It goes on for hours without any bends or side passages. But soon they find something. <laughs> a collapsed section. Thick chunks of scattered rock litter the floor, surrounded by tons of sand which had flowed in, filling the breach. Could we use Rainbow Dash as, like, a digging machine? She was digging sand pretty okay. well outside. She was adequate at digging, not great for her size. And even if she was, there's 60 feet of sand above you. Any sand you move away will immediately be filled back in. 
To get through the sand that fills the tunnel, Draven casts mass burrowing on them, so they can all magically dig through the loose sand. When he casts stuff like that, which isn't on the Artificer's somewhat limited yeah, spell I, list... I don't think we've got good character to sheets for the TDDC party. Item. Basically, Learning making Raccoon. a temporary yeah. scroll of I mean, the spell they, they're changing all the time as they go through, and that still got cost him a little experience. some kind of sheets for last? some of them, but mass just be a mess, probably. 14 minutes. Here's the deal. If we're seven minutes in and see no sign of the end, we turn around. After you mostly know what they minutes, do anyway. It's not like you're feet, missing out on they much. They find the edge of the collapsed section. All seems well, but as they travel another ten miles down the still long, still virtually featureless tunnel, they encounter another collapse, long after their mass brewing spell had worn off. Shit. And tunnel there's been to no the other exits earth. or anything? Nope. You know what we could use? A burrowing machine. Well, the note said you've got to do this, you've got to do that, or it will be collapsed. And it's collapsed, so we're going the right way? Well, yeah, but I wasn't expecting a double collapse. Like, I can cast the spell again, it's not a problem, but why would they do it twice? In case someone got past the first one, maybe they were drunk. Joy writing with their tunneling machine. So Draven produces another casting of Maspero, and they dig through. This one was only a couple hundred feet. Then they get back to marching, and two miles later the tunnel is blocked by sand again. <laughs> again! There's absolutely no doubt that these collapses were done intentionally. The Department of Redundancy Department. At this point, I'm down to my last daily use of this ability. I don't want to use the last one, just in case. If we're still in the sand when the digging spell is about to expire, Aura could cast Dimension Door to get us out, as long as she hasn't used her fourth level slot on Lay of the Land. I can cast Door too, so yeah, if we're down to the last few rounds of digging, we could pour it up to the surface. Of course, we can't be sure of the depth, so we'd have to go high and overshoot it. Most of you will survive any fall, or be flying. Maspero costs me about 36 XP per cast. What if this continues for the next hundred miles? robots. Doesn't an artificer have a crafting pool of XP for this stuff that recharges? I have a certain amount, and it recharges when I gain a level, but that's the same XP I'd be using for permanent items. Oh. We should save that stuff. Yeah. <laughs> Did we ever rest? Not yet. We should rest here, then. Can we rest here? Like, will we run out of air? The air is kind of stale, but it's not going to run out. There's two miles of air between the blockages. Only have to watch one direction. Yeah, we can rest here. We're perfectly safe. What could happen? The only things you've seen in the last couple days that could attack you here are the Earth Elementals, the Gargantuan Scorpion... Also the tunneling machine, though we haven't actually seen it. To be extra safe, we could always rope trick and sacrifice Rainbow Dash. What? You know, leave her outside of the portal. She'd be our early warning system. Yeah, if anything <laughs> comes along that's brave enough to attack her, we don't engage it. Don't force me to murder you. They rest, heal, and regain spells, then burrow through 1,400 feet of sand, after which they travel an entire day with no further obstacles. No further anything, except straight stone walls, ceiling, and floor. So, how many days do you want to keep walking down the tunnel? He said days, not years, so that's good. I say, for science, we should follow this as far as we have to. As long as Little One in Black took off their heavy armor, which their magic gear allowed them to don quickly if attacked, the party could march 24 miles a day, according to the player's handbook. So in a week, you travel 168 miles-ish, and you've not found anything of interest at all. We walked for a week? <sighs> Why did they block it way back there, though? Were they trying to protect the station from stuff on this side, or trying to block it off from the rest of the system? System may be relative. You haven't found anything resembling a branch or a cross tunnel. This tunnel isn't going to wrap around the circumference of the planet. It has to go somewhere. We're not going to give up and go back for a week. No, no, <laughs> we're, we're going to keep going. It's the sunk cost fallacy. Well... We have well, says supplies. this was the real week from hell, but down to be fair, this didn't take anywhere near factors. as much game Often time. This is like keep spirits up by one session of singing songs from the vast repertoire of a high-level bard. But for many other lengths of time, they fall into long, dour silences. 
until they actually have to make a will save against the maddening tedium of I said it in chat, but that's what I'll say in here, too. So uh, my favorite joke from the whole TDC Awards failing, was my Week of Hell joke. They making brief <laughs> expeditions yeah. to the surface, casting Dimension Door straight up to feel the sun mm. and the wind and to try to get their bearings relative to the distant mountains before using another casting to teleport back down into the horrible <laughs> safety of the tunnel. So much. The tenth the, day out from the maintenance the horrible station, safety they discovered of the tunnel. <laughs> another pile of sand blocking the passage. <laughs> Seriously? This sand is very black. It's very me. Last time we went up to the surface, did we see black sand? Nope. You've seen sand in different places ranging from sandy yellow to the color of bleached bone, but not black. It does look like sand, though. It looks like it's made of grains and not some other kind of earth or topsoil. I'll take a closer look. Okay, you get up close to it and start to feel a little uneasy, like the fine scales on your arms, so fine they're nearly indistinguishable from ordinary human skin, feel sort of like hair standing on end. Then make a reflex save as part of the ceiling collapses. Does 19 make it? Yep, you reflexively hop back as some of the stone above cracks and half a ton more black sand crashes down. You successfully yeah, avoid the actual impact and being buried, but some of the sand blown around gets on you and you take three negative energy damage. Okay. Hey guys. I think there's something wrong with this sand. Further examination, while keeping a keen eye on the ceiling. For sand is defective. Weeks, we want to return it to this sender. Collapse, unlike the earlier ones, was probably caused by erosion of the stone rather than the physical force used to block the path near the station. It seemed likely that this negative energy sand had weakened the tunnel ceiling over time. They back up a considerable distance, just to be safe, before dooring up to the surface to investigate. They find a patch of black desert. An See, and this is a point where they don't have dwarfed interface with them. Near the middle, there are yep. some kind of protruding shapes. Judging by the straight lines, something broken, but which had well, clearly been some kind of structure. So it's all negative energy sand, but there is, or was, some kind of structure in the middle? If so, what's left of it is pretty small. If the bits you see represent the full thing, it would only have been the size of a wagon or a small hut or something. The, the Altrum has helpfully contributed, I don't like sand, it's coarse and irritating, and it gets everywhere. Has Mora heard anything about yeah. this? I've heard stories of deadly That's the kind of thing people say, it's rare, and then they kill they a whole school full of little kids onto it with a lightsaber. Never make it out. I mean, that's not out of character for Al. Most stories say it appears to mark Didn't the site was. of <laughs> some horrible event in the past. I want to go check out that junk in the middle. I'll walk out onto it. What? I step out onto the black sand. Okay, you step out, and you can feel a tingle of life-draining energy from beneath your so feet. What? But your Ancient's mechanized plate completely black resists 1d4 negative energy damage per round. Oh, that's right. You have five <laughs> negative energy resist. Nice. The priest slowly marches across the black waste, its sinister energy licking impotently at his magic-infused Itronium boots. Uh, but as he gets yeah, a Wax short Wolf, distance, this is the Vecna place. shapes begin rising from the sand. Dark skeletons. Okay, I'll cast Blistering Radiance. You are not immune to your own 2d6 fire damage around. It's fine. There's a fortitude save. I bet skeletons are less immune. So Black is now trudging across the Black Waste amidst a 50-foot radius semisphere of searing light. The undead burning and collapsing even as they rise again, not able to hold together long enough to attack the cleric. But as each one falls, another starts to rise, and though he almost automatically passes the saving throw for half damage, Black is now taking 2d6 fire every two rounds from his own spell. As he approaches the structure they had seen from the edge and reaches out to touch it, he's hit by a negative energy far beyond his minor resistance, taking a decent chunk of damage. Ow, can I see what this thing is? Not really, it's all black. It's shaped sort of like a broken wood frame, but it's sunk into the ground, and what is poking above doesn't give a lot of hint. And you can feel the concentrated negative energy, the opposite of life, pulling at you through your armor. He's unable to learn anything from this hellish ruin, and staying near it, combined with his own fire, is definitely wearing him down. So Black wades back across to the edge of the waste, where the party well, backs up to what they hope to be a safe distance. As they watch, the blistering radiance expires, and the skeletons continue to rise, and now that they aren't immediately being incinerated, they are indeed able to leave the area of the black sand. So the party backs off even further. In the distance, they can see the undead turn back, 
returning to the ground. So at least you guys don't appear to have unleashed an undead army upon the lands. Yay. It takes some effort, but they go around, giving that terrain feature a wide berth. Then use a cheaper single-target burrow spell to rediscover the tunnel north of the cave-in. And so they dimension door back down and resume trudging into the endless subterranean dark. They continue walking. For days. <laughs> until finally, they see something. So and much walking! Up ahead. More lava? No, We're as tired. you get close, it's not that natural, radiant sort of orange. It's more of a neon orange. Now, light travels super far, even though your eyes are poorly adjusted to the dark because of your own light sources. Still, you can see it from more than a mile away. But as you continue northward, it gradually begins to resolve itself into a rectangle of light, which spans the hall, floor to ceiling, wall to wall. A force field. The wards. So this must be the place they wanted to reach. From the note. The northern terminus. The force field, when they reach it, is indeed a force field. Touching it doesn't cause damage, and neither can Little One's biggest attack scratch it. A also, they discovered the Atari music, so that's something. Can we dig around it? Remember how long it took to break through these walls before? And for all we know, it may extend into the walls. Is there any sort of visible equipment or aperture around the edge? Nope. Can we see through it? The orange is almost, but not quite opaque. You can see through it just enough to make out the shadow of the walls continuing through to the other side, but they rapidly fade away into impenetrable orange haze. Well, I guess we see if we can teleport past it with Dimension Door. But we already figured out, you can't bring Rainbow Dash and the rest of us in a single what the? casting. The Why does it keep doing horse? that? Mora can cast her own door and bring the horse. We'll have her wait until we secure the area. Right. We'll let her know with a message spell. Hmm? So you four are teleporting in first? Yep. Let's go. Okay. How far forward do you teleport? Hmm. Oh my god. I can cast the wall door. Far, right? <laughs> you can only see the walls for a few feet through the dense orange of the shield. Well then, it let's eats my entire comment when I put in this okay. when I stick tongue out emoji. Crammed into a cube of orange force fields. Well, not quite a cube. There's force field on five sides, but you're standing on a platform of blue metal. The four corners have thin metal posts, but those posts appear to be on the outside of the wall of force. What? But I wanted to just go where we could see. Well, you didn't see so this, weird. but that other wall is only a few feet behind you, blocking your vision in that direction. On the plus side, these walls are much more transparent. Standing there as though waiting for them is a warforged, or at least Look at half that of pen zoom. His right leg is replaced by what looks like the lower leg of a much larger thing, a thing about the size of the warforged lumberjack. That huge foot is attached around hip level, and beyond that is a big mound of junk. A lot of the junk is covered by a brown cloak. During the award sort of show, I was trying to minimize the amount of time where it was just me sitting on screen guy. talking the if there was footage I could show ground, again. Mm -hmm. the junk and there was a big part where I was talking about TR4, tubes, which but there's not a lot of animation involved with TR4, so it looks kind of awkward. Yeah, no, he's, he, he looks... There's a lot of static TR4. Even though he has a lot of poses. ...humanoid machines, very similar to the Lumberjack. So we're crammed into a box? And seconds later, you're like, really crammed in, since Rainbow Dash herself is squeezed diagonally into but a yes, like, congratulations, space TR4 than she could comfortably fit. She's TDP bent award. a bit unnaturally, <laughs> but not enough to hurt yeah. her, though she's getting a little panicky. Mora and the rest of you are stuffed into the spaces between her legs. You have room to move, but not much, and if you can't calm down the massive six-legged mount, this could become really dangerous really fast. Hey, I told Mora to wait for a signal from us. Yeah, she wasn't supposed to port in until we told her it was safe. Yeah, okay. Really? It's, I missed This that. is a bad call on my part, but I'm keeping it ago. because it's more okay, fun. Whatever. Not bad, but uh, <laughs> we're just going to roll with it. There was a miscommunication or something. Poof, Rainbow Dash. Sorry. Oh, thank you. <laughs> good work, good work. I mean, it's not actually going to affect the party right. negatively, I so whatever. Right. It would have been really weird if it somehow what? actually Who hurt them in any way. That's a large horse. How do you even ride that thing? What? No, no, that, that wasn't my question. What did you do to the maintenance station? I haven't heard from them in weeks and weeks. We didn't do anything. The place was trashed when we got there. 
totally cleaned out. Oh, oh my god, it said force instead of horse. We're really close to the large force. It also said ranger station instead of maintenance station. What did you do to I don't think it likes his accent. Are you saying there were other Warforged there? Uh, no, yeah, I do think Warforged Daggerface was in the one-off character competition, so yeah, it's pretty impressive. Um, but also, Daggerface felt really weird being in there because he also has his own series. Yeah, kind of, it barely exists yet. Yeah. Yeah. After Someday. the last Warforged died, I've been trying to help it along by telling it stories. Stories modified and disguised to resemble maintenance instructions. So. God, he sounds so. We that sounds so smart. What he's doing. Then we came here. There was nobody there. No constructs or anything. Well, that's very sad. I don't One remember how close the coal was. Not to mention, 386 years down the drain. Whatever. You said the floor is not made of force field. I don't remember if I closed the poll either. If you, if you go to the nominations, you might be able to go find it. Okay, you deal a bunch of damage. If you didn't close it, people could change the results. It's certainly not indestructible, though it's pretty heavily reinforced. I don't care if they change the results because I checked the results on a specific day, and that was the day it was decided. You know how strong a power source it takes to keep up those force walls? You'll find out if you blow it up trying to escape. I want to over here. Here. I don't get much excitement. Maybe you should hold off for a sec. Yeah, don't care. I'm gonna keep smashing until we're out. I bet this guy's a dark ancient anyway. If he's a dark ancient, he's a hell of an actor. You know who else was a hell of an actor? Temple One. Temple One. Did you say something about the Dark Ones? We fought one in Ginneron. It took over the controller there. Yes, and we met another old This guy's a square bracket underdash you know and square bracket. Ginneron. I've heard what? of it, but that's a military facility. It was all need to know. The auto subs gave up on Did words. He <laughs> survive? Yeah. Yes, he was going to sacrifice himself to contain the malfunctioning portal, but we found another way and made it out with him. Good Sorry, to hear Seven. That I'm not the only one left. I bet your friend, um, uh, GE7. I bet this GE7 had conjuration circuits, huh? Circuits? He had divine magic. That would do it. Would have been so easy, so, so easy, easy if I could do conjuring, knowing <laughs> what I know now. Learned so much, so much. We really knew nothing about our own bodies. Oh, we knew how to fix something when it broke. Well, think of it like first aid, but we had no idea how our parts would break down and decay for centuries without the creators to maintain us. Uh, where were we? You were about to let us out. Right, I was interrogating you. Now, See, my plan for this conversation, like I had a whole bunch of tangents for him to go on, Some but I, he gets distracted easily, down, he's a little bit like addled, got there before but anytime they try to trick him into letting him out, instantly right back on target, like that refocuses him instantly. He, he, he kind of knows that's the thing that he's got to worry about. out of there, are you going to cause any trouble? No. No, sir. Probably not. All right. What have I got left to lose? But if you guys kill me, I'll be very disappointed, very disappointed in you. Disappointed in you. <laughs> shut down the queue. One of the small workers moves over to the cage and drops the force fields, letting them all tumble out and allowing Rainbow Dash oh, to find Oh, what have I got left I'm to lose? I'm TR4. Oh, no. Welcome to the Northern Terminus. Black's armor responds to an Ataran yeah. power source, activating its extra features. And as they get up and start moving out of the tunnel, they can now see the whole room, similar in size to the maintenance station, though a couple smaller passages lead off, possibly to other rooms. The main tunnel seems to just stop, though, as do the shallow grooves in the floor. <laughs> to the right of the tunnel entrance is a huge construct that looks a bit like a slug made of big grey armored plates with an incredibly imposing maw facing them. Looks like a combination of a modern <laughs> drilling machine and the Death Star emitting an ominous subsonic vibration. However, the other two DBM imposing Death constructs Star. on closer inspection don't look particularly functional. Especially one which is missing a foot, having to be propped up on a pile of welded It's scrap. giving me very, there like, three was it Cornello, the wormy guy? Varying yeah. states of this assembly. Yeah, Does the subway go anywhere else from here? This is the northern terminus. Terminus means the end of the line. It's right in the name. Do you know of any <laughs> other Warforged who have survived? I'm afraid not. 
There used to be four of us here. CC1 was a conjurer, but like the rest of us, he was ignorant about the effects of the C stands of for conjuring. Hair, long periods of standing still, and the way our organic parts would start to change and break down with age. But these stupid things are held together by pure magic. You pretty much rust proof them and they'll sustain themselves forever, but building sensors at a bargain price. That's what we really are. It has its drawbacks. After MR8 and CC1 died, the two of us who were left decided we didn't want to go LR4? out like that. It was sad, but the others had working replacements for a bunch of our old junk, and is is there a logic to anymore, the numbering so scheme, or the, is it just the, number, the numbers were arbitrary, but the the we letters had some vague was this, like I think LR was the laborer one. I think he was the chunkier looking one, who was for like lifting and shit. Eventually. After the other three were named after their of school of magic, I found basically. Ways to transmute some parts to be a little roughly, more anyhow. compatible with living constructs. Managed to keep AP21 going a solid two centuries longer than the others. Yeah, eight, I think it's AB21 for abjuration, right? I didn't have much left on them that could help me. Helped with the shields. I somehow managed to keep just ahead of Anku myself. Struggling and adapting as I go along. I can't keep it up forever, though. There are parts I can't just swap out. Can't work on the inside of my own head, you know. And even if I could, <laughs> the subs are what really would I struggling with, with their parts. And would I yeah, still even be me if I crammed part of Cece's head in there? Thought about that one a lot. I may yet try it someday. I'm already getting kind of addled. If I could locate Cece's conjuration circuits and wire it in, maybe, maybe something of me would survive. Or of him. My backup plan to take care of this place was for a buddy from the maintenance station to replace <laughs> me when I'm gone, but I guess that option is out of the picture now. Okay, I like this guy. Do any of these work? Uh, hardly any of this stuff works anymore. I've been cannibalizing whatever I could to keep myself and the facility going. Though, I, I could probably rebuild one working one out of this junk. Assuming I could get one of those tectonic translators working. The what? A tectonic translator. It's a kind of power source that harnesses the energy of elemental earth when moving through stone. It's useful for underground constructs like this old digging machine back when it worked. So what's this place actually for? Guy who's totally a dark ancient. Yeah, is there even anything out there? Well, there used to be. Up in the mountains, the creators had a- Suddenly the whole place shakes for a few seconds. It felt like it came from the northeast corner. You're pretty sure one of the trailing parts of them fell off, but TR4 seems <laughs> way more worried about the shaking. The what the heck was that? Like, yeah, the second brief quake feels more like the southeast corner. Oh crap! Someone's pretty sure I used the, the clip of his part violence. falling off just because there was a different like animation. The of that. If not, it was Even in my uh, palette of things I was considering. Was about to pop in and start a nice. fight. Oi, Strew! There's a whole fat place full of junk down here. And some of the fight. Aw, <laughs> oh, yeah. Fog, get in here! Whole Come fat in. place got orcs? turned into low Spring. fat by How the did subs. Orcs find this place? It's Why a low fat here? place. Graven cast his mask. They're like spells. workout bros. Four actually hastes the party, making the judgment that these newcomers probably weren't with the orcs. Like the other station, the entrance ramp comes out 50 feet up, so little one searing charges the one standing at the edge. 50 feet? That's too high. I can't even knights move up to them. Mora's got you covered. Mora uses the spell Dark Way to create a bridge of force up to them. Though Angel doesn't wait for it, using her slippers like of spider to spells. simply run up the wall. With his hasted speed, Black can move far enough up the bridge to be able to teleport into flanking position with his knight's move spell and get it in attack. Another orc runs down the hall, tumbling past Black and Little One to leap down, hoping to get at the casters, though he suffers an attack of opportunity from Angel's unexpected position on the wall. Dill better hurry up with his magic and stuff. I want a chance to see him fight again. Dill is here? Perfect. What is Dell's connection to these Ataran places? Dark Ancient. He must be. Rainbow Dash charges the orc on the ground, stomping him as Draven and Mora pepper him with crossbow bolts. <laughs> then Angel Doe follows him down, here. sneak attacking him since she and Rainbow Dash have him flanked, Says and Pog. Pog is bloodied already. 
Crush him, guards! Coming down the ramp, a fourth orc appears, disfigured by dozens of scars, hasted, and blinking in and out of etherealness as he strikes Little One for 20 damage with his very beat up looking longsword. Hit me, damn it! I want the counter damage! He's covered in scars? A Thorp this orc appears. A Thorp appears instead of no maneuver. Fourth just orc. a regular skilled sword attack with a lot of brute force behind it. Not that it takes much skill when he has blinking to give him plus two to hit and ignore your dex bonus. Did, did you roll for his mischance? Nope. He doesn't have a mischance on his attacks. Greater blinking? That's a fifth level spell. That would make him at least a ninth level spellcaster. Or maybe it's a really good magic item. Can you imagine Angel with a ring of blinking? If it denies death, she can sneak Don't attack blink. almost anything Ouch. without worrying about positioning. Once Stella starts, ain't nothing that stops him. He's like one of them Stella. not stopping things. Alright, I'm gonna try and ballista throw him down the ground. We'll see how strong he really is. Assuming I can hit. The blinking spell gives Stella! against Del a 50% mischance. Even the easy touch attack required to start the throw, but Little One does manage to grab him and wins the opposed strength check, hurling the extremely heavy orc into that his was, ally. That, that was not the worst animation ever. Him, plus some extra falling damage for the 50 foot drop. Yes! Whenever there's I'll a screen the shake, even or, this late, okay I was doing own. all those screen Heart shakes drops. manually, so and that was actually that work. The first work far, In more recent episodes, when I do a screen shake, it's because there's a thing. There's a camera thing in the newer version of Adobe Animate, and I can just make the screen move, so it actually takes virtually no effort at all. Black activated his retributive amulet, and Bam. because the attack is critical and obviously dealt 10 plus damage, it triggered all his other retributive effects, dealing at least three quarters of the damage back to the attacker. The backlash is so severe that Varn, having taken a sizable hit from the Searing Charge at the start of the fight, dies, as though cut down by the wrath of Sirius herself. Of course, Just none of these magic items or spells reduce the damage from the attack in any way, so Black <laughs> is badly hurt, and though shocked and confused by Varn's death, Liz delivers her own blow, dealing over 30 damage with the Bone Crusher maneuver, nearly dropping Black, this is though voted she also Black's gets best back moment, almost as much damage and as immediately dealt, followed by another nominee. From the onslaught, he raises his arms, and with a powerful holy incantation, an awkward-looking pose for this, but himself, whatever. Restoring 10 hit points per caster level, getting him all the way back to full health. Can I make an intimidate check? So they hit you for like a hundred damage. He hit you so hard, the guy died from his own attack. And then <laughs> before her eyes, you instantly erase every point of damage. I'd say yes. You <laughs> can, can I make an accurate hog check? Up. And between the massive horse and the creepy gnome, he figures he can take Angel down more easily. He bone crushes her for a good chunk of damage. But when Always had attack him animation. I didn't, him off I didn't want to crossbow. animate him at all. He I just like to get just, just leaned over like a South Park character. Up. But as a free action from the ground, he unleashes a great thunderclap, a non-damaging spell that forces everyone in range to make three Punch different saving throws. Angel and Rainbow Dash fail the will save and are stunned for one round, allowing the orc to stand up safely, though they both make the other saves. The dexterity based reflex save is not Rainbow Dash's forte, but she makes it due to the Angel stability what? bonus against knockdown yeah. effects. Rising to his feet as though propelled upwards by the shockwave, Dell uses his action to cast a stinking cloud to protect his flank. So he casts two spells in one turn? Again, the thunderclap was a free action for him. Some kind of spell-like ability. That's a lot of spells from a guy who hits for 20 in melee. Well, I made the fortitude save. We're hasted, right? So I can circle around here to attack him and not be in the cloud. Elder Mountain Hammer. AC 30? <laughs> Sorry, it deflects off his... Uh, Armor. Oh, I like that animation. He's definitely in a Every time a the subs horse. are supposed Liz's to say 420 damage, they just the write 420, that the number. Angry, but yep. we hardly discourage her from fighting. YouTube is lit. A great warrior like Del, but the incredible, miraculous power that she had witnessed. Seeing Varn mysteriously die somehow from his own strike, and watching the large armored foe with a massive, oversized mace reverse in an instant what should have been lethal wounds, it was too much for her to understand. And she turned and fled back up the ramps. Yep. 
I don't blame her. <laughs> Laura cast an area dispel, dissipating the stinking cloud and removing one of Dell's buffs, though not his haste or blinking defense. Well, since force spells can affect ethereal targets, I don't have to worry about the mischance, only his touch AC. Does 21 hit? Yes, he's definitely more tough than dodgy. Really? But his full AC is over 30 in that beat up looking breastplate? Yep. On his turn, yep. he raises his heavily chipped and pitted blade and goes to work on Little One, punching with his offhand as much as striking down with his weapon. If he's using such a crappy looking sword, it must be a really good magic weapon. I bet it's super old. <laughs> <laughs> what? His sword broke? Yep. He just keeps pounding. Barely seems to notice. So he doesn't need the weapon, or...? You just ran out of allies, Del. And swords, unless he got a backup. I'll burn and blade is full good. attack. I hit twice. His damage reduction stops a huge chunk of your physical damage, but some gets through, and the fire damage works. That's real damage reduction, not just an armor crystal. I don't need this junk to crush you. And it's not Del. It's Delta. Delta. Next time. On Tales from My D and D Campaign. <laughs> now that's a fucking cliffhanger. Yeah, no, Del Del fighting feel feels pretty serious, even though he's not. He doesn't have some of the crazy stuff that other fights do. Just you know. You're like. A golem underneath, He's implacable. Right? But sort of alive on the outside? I am a cybernetic organism. Transmuted tissue <laughs> over solid marble endoskeleton. This is intense. Yeah, yeah, crappy Terminator 2 reference. <laughs> the, the, the fake T2 music. Yep. Okay, here's here's a mega deep cut. Uh, when I was little, I really wanted to see Terminator 2, but mm -hmm. our parents said I couldn't. But Demon X could, because he's significantly older than me. Um, and then one day, the parents, our parents were out, and Demon X was like, Hey, Arrestria! They said you can watch D2! And I was like, really? And he said D2 for Mighty Ducks 2. And I was real mad. Definitely a dark I don't even know if I've watched that movie. Like, why would I want to? I don't know. Yep, but yeah. You just ran out of allies, Dell. And swords. I don't need this junk to crush you. And it's not Dell. It's Delta. I mean, somebody on the Discord did see the Del Delta, Delta thing coming, or possibly YouTube comments, but they also had years, like, like they had months and months to think about stuff like that. Burning away the thin layer of lifelike orc flesh, revealing the truth beneath Delta's facade. Damage inconsequential. You have left sufficient materials to reconstruct this body's disguise when I am done with you. The Dark Ancient casts the third level spell Great Robot Thunder Master asks, is there time travel again. music in the setting? Music. Time travel so magic in the setting? Could Del actually be from the future? Round. The shockwave forces three I, separate safety I don't, don't really want to mess around with time travel on stuff. Each enemy within 20 feet, I believe that is the best. All, I believe that's the best choice. Yeah, there, there, the there may be some short-term time manipulation stuff. I don't want to rule out crazy things I can do in combat to some degree, but actually going back in Time is a pain in the ass. Point. So and that, if you don't want to go back, you also don't really want to go back. Delta casts Wraith Strike as a swift action, a transmutation which lets him treat all his attacks as touch attacks for one round, allowing him to hit Little One with all three slams for 2d10 plus 12 damage each. How many buffs does this guy have? Well, the touch attack one only lasts for one round. So that just leaves haste, greater blinking, and whatever buffs don't have obvious effects. Yep. Little One had Rainbow Dash whisk Mora to a safer distance after a last missed kick to avoid future thunderclaps. Then the bard tries to dispel again, this time single target, and despite her temporary hearing loss, she succeeds at removing the greater blinking, his main defensive buff. I should heal you. Maybe. How much does your heal do? 120. Huh. That's a fair amount of overhealing. I say save it. You just took another 60 damage. 
Yeah, but he's unlikely to drop me in one round. He'd have to hit all three times. Again. Yeah, this is this just definitely looks like subs times. that I made. What if he casts Wraith Strike again? She just yep. dispelled his mischance. <laughs> yeah, there's like capital letters and, right. and punctuation and shit. Charge on my I'm trying to time it with the back, like so I can get out of this to break up the lines in a useful and way. Still full attack him. After dropping down 50 feet, <laughs> and punctuation, yeah. you know it's you me if it's punctuation. To reduce the falling damage. That's the real no. key. It tries to capitalize something. Like, 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 oh yeah, that's Delta definitely you. No yeah, I have to try and restrain myself because I want to use those all over the place, and it's not actually 32. helpful. It sucks. might be genetic because I want to use them all over the place round. too. And yeah. that hit with his magical <laughs> oversized mithril mace is reduced by 15. His damage reduction <laughs> went, went up. It was like 10 before. That's too much for me. Well, now that we know that he's an actual Dark Ancient, plus his touch AC isn't good, maximize Force Orb. Take 60 Force damage. Well, he's bloodied. A large part of his breastplate is shattered. A, the flesh underneath is thing he has. I don't remember if it's a feat or if it's a crack. Uh, like doing that. an alternate class feature or something, but like when soon. when he casts he a transmutation spell, yet. No, his damage reduction maximize, goes get improves by five for the remainder of the round. Oh, right. Like in, until his that next turn or whatever. A dark agent here? That's remarkable. Remarkably bad. Delta doesn't cast Wraith Strike again, instead using his swift action to reinforce some of his damaged areas with temporary hit points from the minor shape oh, yeah, reserve feed. Thing. But even without the touch attack, want to watch. Buff, he has three <laughs> attacks, all with good bonus to hit, and when he hits, it's less like being punched than being slammed by a large chunk of bacon-wrapped granite. Miss one, <laughs> then he headbutts you. Bacon-wrapped granite. Take That's some descriptions right there. Oh. Still standing. And for his haste attack... Uh, 27 doesn't hit you with Draven's deflection buff. 27 doesn't hit me without Draven's buff. I'll bone crusher him. AC 29, no, 31 with flanking. I don't suppose that hits after Mora's dispel. Afraid not. Damn. I'll five foot around and cast heal on little one. No objections this time? Nah, I'll take it. Black uses his remaining casting of heal to get Little One out of danger and back to full health. Angel backs up to Mora's position, where the waiting bard casts heroism on her, giving the assassin plus two to all d20 rolls. She switches to her crossbow, because much like Draven's wand, the force bolts would ignore the damage reduction, but unlike the orb spells, the crossbow makes normal ranged attacks, not touch, and even with the heroism bonus, she doesn't roll high enough to hit him. I guess I'll force orb him again. Uh, another max orb? No, I'll roll the damage. Why? Expensive? Four charges, remember? He's already bloodied. Plus, I don't want to run out. I'd need days, materials, and a lab to replace it. Take 37. The orc-shaped stone golem is still standing, but looking badly damaged. And then now he the looks like greed from FMA. From his eyes, leaving it motionless. Wait, so is it dead? That was a lot of not-dead sounding description. Beta abandoned a body with hit points remaining. Sounds like that. No hit points remaining now! Little one full attacks Del's inert form. He doesn't deal much damage, since the armor class and damage reduction are still there, but he recovers his maneuvers that round, and when the golem doesn't act, he Elder Mountain hammers it the next round, which clearly destroys the body's ability to function. He must be coming back has to be. Well, he's not coming back to this body. I'm going to keep smashing till there's nothing left. Okay. <laughs> They've triggered their self-destruct. <laughs> what? <laughs> ah, just kidding. It's my teleportation detector. Sort of a backup system in case that dimensional screens fail. And judging by the signature, it's something larger than those orcs. The arrival's being delayed by the dampener. We got a good 15, 20 seconds to prepare. You. Wow, you really went in hard with the subs you for here for. You're just gonna stand around and chop yeah. them up as they arrive. 
We're doing a good job so far. Sure. Oh yeah, the episode yeah, had built-in right. subs for those Why two not? lines because they so were too hard to understand. The scrambling, <laughs> squeezing past the cube, then pushing it out of the hallway and into the spot indicated by the teleportation detector. Combined with the three-round delay caused by the dampener, it's becoming pretty clear how the party got cubed in the first place. When they thought they were dimension dooring into a clear space they could see, we should it all put makes a sense. bow on it. Anyone have a bow? I have a crossbow. You know, when we fight Delta, he'll probably take over one of those golems. I doubt it. They aren't even functional. What about all those? Well, they, uh, um, that's a problem. Here, you can disable them if you take the head and, and carefully, and carefully <laughs> disabled. Or that. <laughs> uh, not like I had anything better to do than spend a year or two rebuilding workers. Wait, can you shut yourself down temporarily? Most warfors were not designed for that. Plus, I'm not in the best of uh, hell. If I shut down, it won't be temporary. So we're leaving Delta with nobody to leap to except TR4? Well, otherwise he could just keep body hopping for hours, casting spells on us and who knows what. Th there has to be some limit, but you need to at least get out of sight. Does that even matter? We don't know for sure. Mm. Ooh, incoming! Mm. After being delayed three rounds by some arcane Nataran device built into the facility, what teleported into the orange box was... It was... A camel? On fire? Fire? A camel with a string of beads hung around its neck, looking very agitated. Though, it doesn't actually look like it's in pain or actually being harmed in any way by the flames flickering all up and down its entire body. If the fire isn't hurting it... Must be some kind of buff spell. Yeah, I've looked at some spells like that. Body of the sun and stuff. Who would teleport a camel? Could Delta have an illusion? Or be polymorphed? That string of beads, though, that almost sounds like a necklace a of- A necklace of- Get back! Even as he shouts the warning, TR4 has started casting a spell. Your spellcraft only tells you that it's a fourth level transmutation you've never seen before. <laughs> Little one, are you still worried he's a dark ancient? Eh, not really. He's pretty convinced. He means like the camel bomb back is back actually pretty cruel. Ago. Why wait till Even now? though on completion, this is we're talking about Del, the guy who looked at his fallen orc like companions and was like, they'll provide adequate materials to rebuild my disguise. Geyser of technology, <laughs> like a fractal spiral of complex metallic parts That's wrapped right. around a bundle of that fibrous, more organic-y stuff Warforged have. The metal plates and machine parts are growing and bifurcating exponentially. That's whoa! Says the achievement. <sighs> yep. Camel. The stream of matter collides with the force cube, thrusting it 60 feet away from the party before the flames, which didn't harm the animal, ignited the unstable beads of the necklace of fireballs, causing a chain exploding inferno which obliterated the base of the cube, blasting outwards as the force fields collapsed. Whoa. Even a weak necklace of fireballs would be like a dozen d6 damage, and it could have been way more than that. Well, that cube's not getting fixed this time. Does this guy know all your defenses? What does a Dark Ancient want from here? I don't know. All we ever figured out about them was they seem to need war force bodies to extend their lives. But, uh, can't imagine I'm worth much in that department. No kidding. We done shutting down the droids? <laughs> yes, thanks, Angel. Before the camel, TR4 shut down half a dozen of them, and you guys just now finished lightly smashing the rest. <laughs> Draven, make a reflex save. Uh, Timing on some of these captions is not yeah. great. Round two. Fight. Draven, you okay? Let's just say it's a good thing I've been upgrading my amulet of Khan. This body is more appropriate for multiple combat. That looks like the tunneling machine from the maintenance station. Would you hide already? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, okay. As TR4 shuffles down one of the passages, trying to get out of sight, Mora rehastes the party, and Angel follows behind the Warforge, sticking to her crossbow of force as she, correctly, guessed the huge slug-like golem would be at least as damage-resistant as Delta's orc body. Not to mention, it had recast its greater blinking. The tunneling machine's sonic drill projected a powerful 30-foot line of sonic energy ahead of it, which the PCs had to navigate around. But the Dark Ancient fought alone, so it wasn't too hard to avoid that in between Delta's actions and to get to its broad flanks. Elder Mountain Hammer. Little One fortunately beats the 50% mischance, 
plunging his spear into the golem's side with supernatural force, his technique ignoring the damage reduction. Bam. Delta's AC was a little lower in this form than his orc-sized stone golem, but rather than attacking it, Black rushed over to Draven, dropping his biggest yeah, cure spell on the artificer, captions. which definitely helped, but there's a big difference between a 30-point cure spell and the godlike power of the level 6 heal. Draven, still feeling at risk, spends his action activating his healing belt for an additional small heal before flying to a hopefully safer range. Delta swung around, smashing Little One for 25 damage with the golem's bulk, and lining up the front-facing drilling beam to hit both him and Black for 8d6 right, sonic save for half. Just a little too slow to catch Draven again. Stupid reflex saves. Hey, I think my ears popped. Listen, I lied to you earlier. They call this the Northern Terminus, but it's not the Northern, Northern Terminus. Terminus. You can't let it find out. Can't let them control this place. Good to know, but just keep out of sight, old man. Mora restarts her bard song, the signature bard ability I always forget to mention. It takes one action to start, then gives the party a plus two morale bonus to attack and weapon damage rolls as long as she keeps up the music, and even five rounds after. All right, Searing Blade in full attack. He misses one attack due to blinking, but aided by the extra bonuses, Little One delivers a significant flaming beating on Dark Ancient. The Golem's damage reduction stops 10 points from each hit, but some of the sword damage gets through, and the Tunneler has no protection against the massive fire damage on every hit. With Draven's condition no longer critical, Black uses Knight's move to teleport behind the enemy, and he attacks it all out, with somewhat less success, since the blinking gets in the way, and even with his huge strength and oversized mace, he can't get around the DR as well as Little One's Warblade maneuvers. I'd better use a regular Force Orb for my wand, just in case he has some bullshit defense now, like Beta. Take 33? It takes it. No bullshit defense. Against that. He has to add that extra <laughs> little bit. Dell is moving, an undulation of the heavy armored plates. Not very quick, no tumbling, so you two can take an attack of opportunity. Hit. Hit. Did you roll his 50% miss chance? Miss. Miss. Delta slams Little One, and again angles the sonic drill to hit both Little One and Black. Attack me, damn it! I witnessed your destruction of Orc 351. I am patient. I said that out of character. Meh. Meh. Can you dispel him again? <laughs> I can try. Mora dispels the tunneling machine, and while she doesn't get many buffs, the bard does once again strip away the most important spell effect, the Dark Ancient's greater blinking. I'm watching TR4 very closely. If his eye turns green, I'm gonna be ready. Without the 50% miss chance to <coughs> almost everything, the golem was far more vulnerable <coughs> to physical attacks, Sneeze. allowing Black and Little One to start damaging him more consistently. Delta deals very consistent damage, since the sonic power is saved for half with a hard reflex save, and he's been hitting pretty well with the machine's one big slam attack, but even though the party's action-efficient combat healing was already used up, and even with Rainbow Dash staying back and Mora having no good direct attacks against a powerful construct, they still outnumber it 4-1, to one, and the fight quickly turns to their advantage. Bloody, huh? Then I'll spend the other two charges on my belt of battle to take an extra standard action and sound lance it. Hadouken! But this thing has sonic attacks. What if it's immune? It's probably not immune. Sound lance! Yeah, it's immune to Sonic. Doe. Otherwise, that looked really cool. The deep reverberating <laughs> throbbing of the Sonic drill changes, the pitch shifts upwards, and the visible distortion fades. Suddenly a painful whine fills the entire cavernous space. Everyone make a DC 24 will save, or be deafened and take minus two to all saves for one minute. Deaf again? What? Saved. Saved. Deafness prevents Mora from playing with the degree of musical awesomeness required to provide bonuses, but otherwise the party is virtually unaffected, except that when Delta switches back to the drill, it becomes even harder for Little One to save and reduce the damage. The Dark Ancient has been focusing him so hard for so long that he was starting to get low again, but Black, even failing After nearly every healed. save, was easily weathering the sonic splash damage, and the others took hardly anything as they were demolishing Delta's huge slow body, a body ill-suited to pursuing and finishing Draven after that initial near-fatal ambush. Alright, I'm tired of this guy. I'll spend another maximized force orb to finish him? Take 60? I've come too far. You cannot, you cannot, you cannot, you cannot, you cannot, you cannot. Delta's tunneling machine body has suffered critical damage. It's going down. Kill steal. 
there are no eyes to really follow, but he's looking all around for places to go. The archaic Warforged giants, his abandoned and now smashed stone orc body, the other tunneling machine, all the workers, they're all shut down, non-functional. Okay, here's the thing. The Dark Agent left the Dell body early as his normal standard action ability in order to save his once per day immediate action ability to transfer his consciousness. So he still has that to escape, even as his body falls below zero HP. And he doesn't need doesn't line of sight, so clearly he has to be aware of the target in other ways. So he does attempt to take over TR4, but there is a will save. And TR4 is a decent level spellcaster with a damn decent will save. Golems usually have crap will saves, so it's not even an issue. For targets with strong wills, like Gineron Controller, the Dark Ancients developed that weird U-shaped tool to reduce their resistance. But it's a physical tool, touch range. He doesn't have one. It's not an option here. Also, normally when they fail to possess a target, nothing serious happens to the Dark Ancient. It just stays put. But Delta is using his immediate action ability to escape a dying body. If he fails, he'll die with it. So this is really life and death. If TR4 makes his will save, he's safe and Delta's done. If not, the old Warforged consciousness will be lost, overwritten by the Dark Ancient. So TR4 needs to roll a... Hold on. Whoa, his will save's better than I thought. TR4 only needs to roll an 8 on a d20. This was a huge roll. I laid it all out, what TR4 needed, and I rolled the die in the open in front of everyone. And he rolls... Can't cheat it either way. A 7. Damn it! Alright, I drop my crossbow and sneak attack him. Is he flat-footed? Uh... Yes. He just transferred in, in desperation, fought off TR4. I hope you He's put that footed. dice Did in, I like, the attack? corner of shame or the fireplace. He's not a full construct, but as a war force, he does have a 25% uh, chance to negate criticals and sneak attacks. You need to roll 26 Same or higher on percentile everything. dice. Got it. So Angel sees the old war force's eye change. She knows what it means and uses Delta's moment of disorientation to strike. No. 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 Suck it, Delta. It's a solid hit. No DR. The ancient Warforged shudders. Wait, so is he dead? Did I one-shot TR4? That was a severe blow, but TR4's body is just sort of slumped, still on his feet. He definitely ought to have hit points left. Did we see anything like that from Beta or Temple 1? No, that... whatever that was, that was new. Guys... I think we killed a Dark Ancient. I killed a Dark Ancient. Kill Steel. The idea that they had actually permanently destroyed a Dark Ancient for the first time was barely sinking in. They had doubts that it was real, just because the Dark Ancients were so mysterious and deceptive. And best case, it was a bittersweet victory, having lost TR4 in the deal, after such a short time. But Delta and TR4 were both gone, leaving them surrounded by disabled constructs, alone uh, in the northern terminus. Yeah. But he said this was not the northern yeah, terminus. Then why'd he say, welcome to the northern, the northern terminus? terminus? And he said, then then that means this is not the end of the line. Then I want to search for secret doors over here, across from the main tunnel. With an educated guess of where to look, and Angel's ridiculous search check result, she finds signs of an extremely well-hidden door. The craftsmanship is incredibly precise, and even that is shrouded by a subtle concealing illusion. Angel is certain that a door the size of the main tunnel is here, even if she can't figure out how to open it. It may be controlled elsewhere. Well, first things first, we have to catch that orc. You could burrow up and chase her. You don't want to take her alone. From the air? I'll be fine. Well, these orcs can pull some weird shit out of their ass. Shit out of their ass. How many fly spells can you cast? <laughs> Actually, I have a scroll of mass fly here somewhere. How much does that cost? A bunch. It's one of my super escape spells, but I couldn't prioritize killing the orc more. Really? She knows how to find this place. Exactly. I mean, we can bring her back alive or imprison her. You can recruit her to the cause. I don't give a... 
I just want her dead or on a leash. Want that Draven, wall. as you're Not digging excuses. for your scroll of mass fly, you realize a crystal in your bag is warm to the touch. The Centra stone given to you by the Rajas. Oh, they want to talk to you. Not now. We have too many side quests. Not enough side quests. Ignore. <laughs> We'd right. better hear it. This is like the time when I. We have analyzed most of the data from our burst divinations. Oh, that's right. And Lord Kintemazu has filtered out data relevant to your situation. Lady Hazamura has mentioned your concerns over a comrade who disappeared from the Feywild about 12 hours prior to your confrontation with Mordeval. Zahir? Judging by his skeletal companion, your ally was a priest of the spirit Anku. I'm sure they would consider Anku a demigod. We are not here to debate taxonomy, brother. As I was about to indicate, we foresee a confluence Nerds. of factors which may interest you. From what I hear, you are always interested in acquiring heavy metal currency and enchanted items. I have isolated an individual <laughs> whose aura correlates closely with the information we have about your missing I think they're priest. randomly like the sort of fighting on Swain fighting to talk over each other with the holes, but has recently decided to move him deeper into his own territory. We are curious as to why Swain feels the need to secure your ally so strongly that Heidelag Castle and its massive garrison was not sufficient. He and his backers, our enemies, must need him for some grand scheme, something well worth disrupting. Also, you might want a chance to recover your friend. Yes, yes, and that. I feel really bad that we didn't put more effort into finding him. To be fair, there weren't a whole lot of clues. Unfortunately, this prison transfer is already in progress. If you make all haste to intercept, there is a chance that you could intervene before he reaches Mount Pillar, which is the Shadowfell equivalent of your Grand Mount. Unlike the castle where the priest had been, the sanctum of Mount Pillar does not have legions of undead and a cadre of spirit-infused lieutenants protecting heavily enchanted fortifications. Instead, the prisoner will be given into the custody of a single entity deep within the mountain. Should this occur, rescue would then only be possible by facing an outer guardian of extreme physical power, a maze of trap-filled tunnels and caverns, and finally a being capable of extreme magical power output. So they're moving him to an even more horrible place. Why would we want to go there? Can we even save him? The entity at the center has a maximum spell power far beyond anything you can generate, like a reflection or perhaps a shadow of Swain's own stolen casting capabilities. But by my measure, this shadow has limited thaumaturgical stamina. If you are not crippled by the initial onslaught, there is a reasonable probability that you can overcome it. Living Raccoon asks, what were the Raj voices based on? They have a certain cadence. He is, let's say... Above I, your taxonomic I don't know if it's anything grade. too specific, However, this but does it, not make your there's sort of a. Uh, According to our fate matrix, there they're are sort of aiming for a very educated, maybe Britishy sort of branch, you are sound. Able to bypass him without significant altercation, while another possibility involves you engaging him. But yeah, they do have a bit of a cadence. I don't know where that comes from. Futile, you progress it kind of reminds me a little bit of like. In, a grim race in really old in movies, slow, there's like the transatlantic accent. Defeat the entity where it's like it's not a real accent, sanctum, but it, it sounds like a polite, and nice way of before, speaking, and that's what people were expected to do in films. The prisoner before right. he reaches the mountain. Something like that. <laughs> Does your fate matrix ever foresee us defeating the outer guardian? No. Possible treasure and a former ally you could reacquire. And of course, we will recharge your crystal in case you need it to disrupt the spirit shackle. So your incentive in telling us this is another shackle disrupted? Let's just say anything as important to Swain as your ally appears to be is something worth taking away from him. So we just discovered an access point north, which may even lead to a cure for us? Well, we don't know that. And they're asking us to just walk away? They say there's some chance of us barely surviving the onslaught. I'd like to know what their fate matrix says about them going after them. Ask them. Oh, yeah. The fake Matrix doesn't blue, 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 blah, blah, blah. In other words, we don't risk our ass for anything. We'd rather <laughs> risk your ass. We have a varying degree of interest in this. It seemed to be something that aligned closely with your interests and values. But you don't want to risk your own ass. We do owe you a favor. We can provide you with significant assistance on short notice, or if you wished for Lord Kinikoro to accompany you. You want us to spend the favor you owe us to help you? They overestimate the degree to which we care about this. That's balls. That's why the fat one kept emphasizing the treasure. They know you guys care about that stuff. Uh, assuming we weren't slowly dying, it would be pretty tempting. Get a bunch of loot, f*** 
about the Vampire Kings? They're I'm sorry, trying to encourage you to like and that to like get to here deal? before yeah. he we gets to this mountain. We gotta stop the ADHD thing. We gotta focus a little. Yeah, you guys can just go fight the mountain later. It's fine. This won't come as a surprise, but part of me wants to fight that <laughs> outer guardian just to spite their fate matrix. Have fun with that. I'm sure I never contemplated the possibility that you would engage it in combat. <laughs> I just assumed you'd take my word for it. No, no, I said part of me wants to. I've been wrong before. Their divinations can't be that much better than I am at knowing what's going to happen. I appreciate it being easier to catch them en route if we go right now, but I also wouldn't mind being able to take the time to prepare more. In the end, though, the orc is more important to us right now. She could mess everything up over here. Especially if we're not here. There's some debate over time frames, over what all haste means. Does that mean they could only get there in time by using one of their precious eldritch eyes to teleport? The Rajas were no help on that front. But in the end, the party decides they can't abandon what they are doing right now to run off without preparation for a chance to catch Zahir before he reaches the mountain. The Rajas had presented the information such as it was, and they showed no sign of disappointment. They oh did recharge God, the center like of stone so that if, like for some reason, blue the line on that image the by shackle, Lord Manx could disrupt it. Like the last time. Back to the matter at hand. Oh, oh yeah, no, that was just because they're tran that's just because they were transparent and, and you could see the uh, and rainbow dash oh, that's the floor. The, uh, the outlines of the up floor, the man, which are, which are like light bars with the north pass so mountain range so okay. visible in this. That's okay, it just looked weird. Trackless desert stretching in the other three directions. They fan out a little, but all flying from a single spell, each must I like this this was a cool shot. I like this limiting their search pattern. Wait, does that I think it looked weirder on him because it was stronger on him because no, I guess the rest of them were layered a bit more. Down there. Yeah. Making her way swiftly up and down the dunes. Liz yeah, the main thing when the Rajas are talking, like they do have Probably sort of a particular way of talking, but it's just but she does manage to spot they're so she's they're speaking very technically. They're like they're, they're shots, giving you all like, the syllables. There's like no, hit. they're like Angel absolute minimum of slang or anything down. like that. Not unconscious, and it's hard to their tell tone of voice is, but she is, knows she can't. You know, it's going up and down a bunch, but they're trying. It's trying to sound reasonable, regardless of what they're saying. Not going to try and talk. Someone in chat mentioned that it sounds a bit like data from. Star Trek, and that's definitely accurate. Black. <laughs> yeah, a little sorry, bit. We the watcher, if anything, Data's more I subtle. I don't know what we did wrong. The Watcher? Is that their name for Sirius? I, I think Data is better understanding it than how most humans feel than the Rajas. Call her yeah. The watcher. Most of the real asshole races call her the Snitch. So they have, like, the same symbols? Holy symbols for her? The orc version is very similar. It's still shaped like a rook, but it has glaring eyes such that it appears more like a shadowed head that wearing looks a crown. Exactly like oh, something in Samurai Jack, actually. I can see that. But yeah, she is staring at Black Shield, almost transfixed. It's on his shoulders too. So she's a follower of Sirius? No, who who would use glaring eyes in a design? She acknowledges that Sirius yeah, is a know. god, and uh, oh, I get it. She's afraid that Black's like an it's incarnation an choice, uh, of Sirius' like vengeance or something. Well, I do kind of look like it. Why did you follow Dell? We usually do what Dell says. He knows stuff. Finds pretty good fights. Why did he bring you here? Don't know, but he said there could be some good action. Bunch of Mexican junk. He was right about action. So what's your plan now? What are you going to do? What, what do you want me to do? Our justice demands we can't let you go. Our justice demands we can't let you go. You're right. We need the location of this place to remain a secret. Either by you being dead or with your participation. She looks a little puzzled. You do know by now that although orcs know what secret means, most of them don't see information as something important to hide. That's fine. I don't really care if she understands. So your choice is die. You and I fight to the death. Right, because because we're not just going to execute her. Angel no, we wouldn't do that. Wouldn't we wouldn't. Twice. We wouldn't just oh, okay. execute Angel, some orc. Doll, that's fine. You just stand over here for a bit. Or you can join us, and I can promise you some action. You are all great warriors, and <laughs> clearly the Watcher has some purpose for me, so I will go with you. Next time on Tales from Tales My D&D &D D &D Campaign. campaign. Alright.
I need to go get another drink for sure. Oh. I think we're, I think we're back for uh, Turtle's turn to be in charge again. I, I think the fact that I've like been like I sitting here really doing nothing instead of normal chores is right, actually made here for sure. than normal. But it's not the northern terminus. Well, put my turtle to work. I see. Died five minutes after meeting the player characters. Oh. So I guess I'm in charge now. <laughs> Tales from my D and D campaign. Previously, a dark agent here. That's remarkably bad. Tales from my brother's D&D campaign. Stone Golem is still standing, and then the green glow fades from his eyes, leaving it motionless. He must be coming back. Has to be. No, I forgot about time lag. I said that at the perfect time, and then Listen, it came way really later. I lied to you earlier. <laughs> they call this the Northern Terminus. But it's not the northern. When is terms. Tales from Arrestia's D and D campaign? Out. I don't Let DM. Um, I had a really I've bad experience DMing in high school, cannot, and I'm cannot, sure cannot, I could cannot, do fine, cannot, but uh, I just eight, have a distaste for it. I seven, was a part of a campaign geez, where we went from it. like level nice four no. to no. level like eighteen. And then we went on hiatus, and it's been like six years, and half the people who were playing in that campaign don't like each other anymore, so I guess that campaign is over. Or with um, yeah. You are all great warriors, and clearly the Watcher has some purpose for yeah, I just realized so I shouldn't I leave as, I'm cha as we're changing so episodes. I hope this one didn't start in the middle. Heads back to properly no, it did not start in the middle. We're good. We're good. Hey. I don't know if you can okay. hear me, but we're good. <laughs> Plus one weapons, basic right. weapon crystals. Turtle, turtle's fine. He survived. Of the desert, which actually sell or disenchant okay. He or she, I don't know. Delta's orc gear was they. almost trashed before they blasted and smashed his flesh-covered stone body. Liz My bad experience stupid. was Age just the kind of thing that happens friends, with inexperienced high school kids because what you should do is get on the same page of what kind of campaign everyone wants to have and we didn't do that part. So I wanted to do like a real campaign and they wanted to do funny shit. And both of those are totally valid ways of doing a campaign but if you're not on the same page nobody's going to be happy. And even yeah. fewer of interest. You can tell which ones TR4 actually used because those doorways have clearly been widened. His workshop was a mess, completely covered in half disassembled junk and the guts of metal cars, but with one pristine, dust free shelf on which rested three murky, fluid filled oh, yeah, his friends. Each containing a slightly, or in one case, heavily decayed, war forged head. The other side tunnel was even more grim, as TR4's lifeless but weirdly intact body still stood where he and Delta had died. It's kind of depressing. I wonder what happens to his soul. You can ask Zaheer. Oh, welcome to the party, harpies. Yeah. That's true. They aren't mutually but exclusive, but heads. in any case, it's really important to be on the same page like about like what your goals are and what part of D and D you're interested in. Your best guess mm -hmm. is yes, but you've never heard of it being done. Well, I can't think of any questions right this minute, but I'll detach TR4's head and toss it in the extra dimensional bag. Down this passage, they find a spiral staircase descending 200 feet into the bedrock where a metal cylinder is suspended in an even deeper shaft. Draven rolls poorly on his initial checks, but it seems to be the station's power source. You want me to smash it and see what happens? Uh, that won't <laughs> no. be necessary. You recognize why would, why the would you? Coming from why would anyone want you to smash it? It's magma, so it's geothermal. Yeah, it's I'm here. More complicated um... than that, though. I wasn't here for most of it because most of it is happening during my sleep time because I'm in such a different time zone. And I'm mostly hanging out on push to talk, but I'm here. sophisticated device at the bottom of the shaft, which is channeling the energy of elemental fire from the magma. 
except with some quick back of the envelope calculations, you're pretty sure this doesn't work. But it is working. This has to be the power source for the facility, but based on your understanding of thaumaturgy and planar physics, even with a very efficient conversion, the math doesn't work out. You shouldn't get nearly enough out of the elemental energy to run all the power and sensor systems, the force fields, teleportation screens all over the place, even if you scaled up this device significantly. I wish This is I some Doctor Who ass sounding music. It. What about TE7? Maybe, yep. but it's a sure bet TR4 would know about that and whatever is to the north of here. If only it's just another we part had of a the Atari theme. Around to cast it's speak different with from the Polar theme. Oh. So Mora and Black spend their remaining spells on healing Liz, and they all rest up as Black memorizes one of the most effective divinations around. We're gonna get one question per two levels, so six questions. The head is fully intact, but when you cast Speak with Dead, you find that it's harder to use with Warforged. Like healing, it works, but only half as well. So, three questions. First question, if you'll ask him for me, how are you drawing so much power from the element of fire? The disembodied head's misshapen jaw begins to move in an eerie semblance of life as the divine magic coaxes out information TR4 once knew. Well, you can't just do it anywhere. That's the thing you're getting wrong. It's because we're right about the volcanic ley line. If volcanic ley lines were just everywhere, we wouldn't need to try and tap astral power because we'd have reliable geo-elemental energy. Makes sense. Sure, yeah. <laughs> now the real question is where these ley lines go and how we find them. You have this one. You could just follow it through the lava. So what do we T ask? TR4's head is a good one to talk to because if you ask the right kind of questions, he'll give you pretty extensive answers. What to expect? What dangers or what to expect? Probably the best thing. Um, how can we bypass the security system? But what if it's not a security system? Eventually, they settle on the wording. How can we safely enter the northern terminus? The great thing about him is, a lot of the time when you speak with Dead, they'll give like the shortest possible answers. <laughs> but TR4's head will just go on and on and on. Well, how would you go about defending a <laughs> Well, I feel like I've heard this somewhere before. The yep. volcanic power source we could find. The first military. Whoa, 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 whoa. Let the man speak. The first best way is to put it somewhere nobody would find it. In this case, the Arctic Pole. The literal northern terminus. You, you can't get any more north than that. Wait, 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 wait. The North Pole? Where the heck is that? North? Apparently that's also <laughs> where, like, the largest geothermal power source is. The largest. The <laughs> largest. Geovolcanic. It <laughs> sounds more awesome. They're that's funny just when they're talking sometimes. Terrifying. Awesome in the literal sense. The whole place is shielded against teleportation, obviously. Back in the day, it would have prevented you from appearing anywhere on the continent, though with time, the landmass may have shifted, I don't know. The controller is wired into a significant divinatory array to give it awareness of the interior, the surrounding area, any threats that are incoming so it can calculate responses. And obviously oh, it's all underground because that's how the creators like to do things. And it means it won't be spotted by, say, a dragon flying over the pole. Why yeah, would a dragon fly over again. the pole? You can't actually interrupt his rambling with more questions. Well, you can, but he ignores them. The hardest part will be getting in. Taking a tram will bypass some of the defenses, including a series of outer force gates in the tunnel. The trams have an aura signature which the force fields are enchanted to recognize. As long as the enchantment approaches a speed over about 75 kilometers per hour, the force field will deactivate for half a second. Uh, slowing down would be a bad idea. Unfortunately, that would get you most of the way, but not yet. The last barrier is the main force wall, which is opened or closed only directly by Polaron controller and his scrolling down would be a door. bad idea. Unless so glad Auto said that. To let you in for some reason, you will last barrier is a main problem. Polaron. 
TR4 is pretty certain there is also a surface entrance because Polaron was a research facility as well as military, and that means they would have built it beneath the temple to Ataru. But there's not much reason to believe that getting from the temple into the base itself would be any easier than getting in down below. Unlike Ginaron, once you are inside, there will be significant defenses, both golems and structures. Once alerted, Polaron controls. It just the doesn't after stop. Searching for intruders and attempting to capture or destroy them, depending on strat assessment. You probably can't avoid alerting it, but you might be able to confuse its responses. You should try to retrieve some of the security badges of the Further proof that Demon X just wants to talk more is TR4. Uh, wearing the badges won't stop golems that can see you from attacking. Or no comment. Stupid like that. But it may mess up the controller's strategic view of the situation. So, you know, it doesn't mass all its forces to hit you at once. Like in the Northern Terminus, teleportation will be possible inside, but it's a desperate move because you'll be delayed for three rounds and the controller will know your destination. Mash all his forces straight at, at your horns! Angel is back at the hidden mm -hmm. tunnel door, trying to figure out how to open it. Through persistence and maxed out skills, she's able to find a hidden hand panel, like an upgraded version of the one from Ginneron. It takes a while, but she manages to open a small gap and interfere with the mechanism without triggering the lockdown failsafe. I got it! So, for the last question, should we just ask how to get a carriage back working? Spencer says he got his just Patreon question read out in the TR4 voice once and so he felt like he won the lottery. How to get to the carriage <laughs> nice. working? Or where to find a f***ing creation If I read matrix. them all in that voice, it wouldn't be fun anymore, creation though. matrix never make it into TDDC? Very true. All? Really? When reading the books recovered from Ginneron's library, Graven uncovered several mentions of the device oh, yeah, used it's, to create a trophy. It's hard to believe they didn't mention it before now. Facilities ...and main component of the alloys used in creation of Warforged. They called it a creation matrix. GE7 had confirmed that at the peak of Itaran civilization, Guinea, several such devices, a creation matrix, was able to transform and transmute inanimate junk matter, ordinary dirt and stone, into Itronium structures or devices of great size and complexity. The user of the device must be able to hold the entire schematic, a 3D model of that she wishes to create, completely in mind, and the process could require some time, depending on the scale of creation. But if an engineer could envision an entire map of a facility like Ginneron in sufficient detail, they could create the facility much faster than any other means, even excavating much of the area via the process of converting Earth into Etronium, a fortress from nothing, or all the parts of a complex facility. golem attached together by thin bars like a sprue. Even the great barrier walls which held back the thrashing sea were created by the incredible power of a creation matrix. Every time they think about such a device, the PCs get grandiose plans. They're sure finding one would be a major aid in someday taking the war to the Deluvians. But when last they spoke, GE7 hadn't known where they were, assuming any still exist. Yeah, why don't we ask where to find a creation matrix? Didn't he hint there was one in the Northern Terminus? I'm sure he didn't give you anything solid about that. Yeah, where's the closest working creation matrix? I like that question. I can figure out this car shit on my own. I'd rather spend a week working on the cars than a week heading in the wrong direction. The last working creation matrix that I'm aware of was buried with the last Atari, Isola Asturi, in the capital. Where's that? That's a separate question. So he claps oh, up when it does square bracket underscore it's square bracket, it's doing it for cusses. Well, that's so the last yeah, time it theory. did that, it must have thought well, it was a cuss. You know this area was well yeah, we figured that out earlier. It's just it's not great at that. Like one one time it thought Fox was a cuss, and another time it was found totally it. fine. Maybe Polaron. I, I must have missed that then. <laughs> Ask Seven. I can cast sending. Hi. Uh, are you still? The alive? subtitle said What's something about a sudden pigeon, but I missed it. I guarantee. Yeah. Well, it also said maybe Pol. I ran. That's how he'd have answered. Nope. I'm afraid I didn't make it. Too soon. Where was the Ataran capital? Also, we may be heading to the northern terminus, and do you know anything about the creation matrix? That's a lot of questions. The Ataran capital? Their capital was not too far from what is now the dwarven capital of Tarkojan. But 
it depends. That's the newer capital. They moved it after the Great Flooding. The original capital was to the south, on what is now the Illud Highlands. There's a lot of uncertainty there, so the creation matrix will have to wait. But fixing up a tram isn't going to be easy either. The control stick is missing, though Draven's able to connect the one found by those ill-fated archaeologists way back at the maintenance station. Yay! It's good and for something! He sees how many complicated systems are under the panels. The tram uses two mm. main systems for movement. The first powers the stone rails on the bottom to earth glide through magically prepared tracks barely visible along the floor of the tunnel. This produces movement, like an earth elemental, but it's slow, like an earth elemental. So it works with a second system, a drive which channels an effect based on the principles of the spell Expeditious Retreat, accelerating the trams up to great speeds, as much as 100 kilometers per hour. Once you really get started, your best guess is it's going to take about two weeks to fix the most intact vehicle, salvaging parts from the others and from TR4's workshop. However, when Draven gets really stuck, he has Black Hughes speak with Dead on one of the other three Warforged heads. You can only speak with each one once, but with their advice the work is getting done at double speed. That still leaves him some decisions to make though. He locates the device that creates the Aura Signature TR4 had mentioned for the Force Gates, but there are three other devices using divination magic for some kind of communication. One looks like it might be a display of some kind. Each of those will take about a day to repair. There's also a system for cooling the interior, though it seems like a pain in the ass to fix and would take another two days. Assuming we're not going through a lava pit, I think we could just leave that one off, but I want all the communication things working because I want as much information as possible. An air conditioner? For the North Pole? It isn't even that hot here <laughs> under the desert. During all this downtime, Little One sparked that was a with weird Liz angel Daly, line. getting Did an I idea of her that capabilities. One? Yeah. She was level 7 in the Warblade class, but also had a level or two of Psionic Warrior for buffs and to qualify for those brutal Psionic feats that so many of Kajor's orcs have. She seemed to have some extra hit dice as well, but probably without additional class levels. Eventually, Draven manages to recalibrate the tectonic translator from Dell's tunneling machine, finally gets the tram up and running, and they're all set to pile in there. Except, possibly, Rainbow Dash. The interior space of the vehicle was only 6 feet by 10 feet, like a decent sized elevator. The horse alone was larger than that. Can't you shrink her like reduced person? I think that only works on humanoids. I could swear there was a druid spell for that. I'm not sure it would be adequate for the trip. Can we go through this before? Reduce animal is a second level druid spell, but its duration is an hours. Well, that's good, because if this ride is really going to the Arctic, you're going to have to cross the sea, and even at the speeds you're we, talking we about, We literally went through this, hours. like, this morning. Are we like, going to get flooded out when we open yeah. the tunnel? Only one way to find out. No. Well, but apparently we didn't find the right answer last time, because so the level 2 spell that lasts for hours, that's horse. fine. All the heroes plus Liz pile into the tram, Angel opens the passage, and they set out northward from the so-called Northern Terminus. The display lit up, showing the tunnel ahead of them as a featureless green line, while little chevrons hinted their... That's the super useful speed. display. <laughs> Woo, exciting. Riveting. Hey, I think I found the window control. Oh yeah, that's much better. After almost an hour, a small <laughs> yellow indicator appears, a little angled line. Soon, the vehicle tilts forward. Apparently, the yellow line indicates a slope, angling down a little less than 10 degrees. And they continue down at that angle for an hour. 10 degrees isn't that shallow. It is starting to get warm. In fact, after an hour, by the time the tunnel levels out again, you must be about four miles underground. If we had a dwarf, we'd know exactly how far underground. Four miles? That air conditioning? The temperature in the tram has risen to 60 Celsius. We definitely stop before it reaches that point. We need, like, endure elements. I don't remember why they don't have a dwarf a right now. First level spell. It doesn't protect at all against, say, because fire damage. But it they, does protect against They were worried to bring him into the peace bond by extreme way back in, like, Raven Bankton. And they left him there. Spam out the seven and then they, like, the they decided, oh, this is a bad place we're in, and, and like, we, it, found we might as well just teleport right from this cave to Vistria and ended up, like, leaving him behind. Multiple times to help Mora avoid drying out. 
24 hour after boring hour of dimly lit empty tunnel of I think more exciting than boring hours of transportation vertical green line for 10 hours at this point basic geography makes it clear that they have passed most or all of the way under the northern sea when a yellow angle appears again and soon they are ascending at the same gradual rate as the previous slope that is when for the first time they see a yellow line intersecting the tunnel ahead of them on the display and a dim yellow glow approaching rapidly up ahead so, how confident are we that our system is working and we're not going to splat? You were really confident when you were building it. Why don't we creep up to it to see if the force field drops? According to TR4's head, the barriers only drop to a combination of the magical signature and moving at a speed of over 75 kilometers per hour. Oh, I thought it was just that you had to be going fast enough to get through before it closed again. Well, I'll, I'll keep the speed at a safe margin. I'll aim for 85. The glow ahead feels like it's approaching faster and faster, even as you maintain speed. There are no warnings or anything. Speed as you get closer 4, the northern closer. terminus. It looks like you're running into the thing, yeah. then you're through. Bing. Not a lot of leeway, but you're past it, and the tunnel up ahead is dark again. They are startled, though, when a voice emerges from the dashboard. <coughs> you are approaching a restricted, restricted facility on a non-scheduled tram. Identify and explain. explain. This is your job. Tell it th the regular tram was out of order, so this is a replacement? There are probably none scheduled. I bet that's the problem. Uh, prisoner transfer from cell block 327? <laughs> TR 4 sent us to uh, get something? I wonder if it actually knew TR 4. It doesn't sound like he ever came here. We could warn it that the previous facility was compromised. Maybe that would help it trust us, but I'm worried that's the opposite, and it would want to lock everything down. I'm worried there's no good answer. <laughs> there's a communication problem at the other terminal. TR4 sent us to pick up some components. Lie, lie, lie. 30? Hope it can't actually see us. There's no answer. That's probably not good. Already, the next force wall is getting closer and closer, glowing yellow. We're going to be crushed into spam. But you glide past it, no problem. If at any point we see any offshoots from this tunnel, I think we should take them. Otherwise, I guess we just have to have faith. On review, you are not authorized entry at this time. You will stop your tram and reverse course. External force gates will authorize your passage as you depart the restricted area. Any side tunnels? You haven't seen any, but another yellow barrier is coming along on the map. Still yellow. What did TR4 say? TR4 seemed to think it only directly controls the last barrier. For now, though, the third barrier is approaching. Whatever. Double down. I think I'll push it to max speed. Alright, you speed up to what has to be about 100 kilometers per hour. Here's the thing. I, I don't want to be injured. If this thing goes bad, you want it to be instant. You don't want to be a quadriplegic in a deep thousand kilometer tunnel. You want some binary answer to this horse? question. Not especially. And you're coming up to the wall. No, you pass through, no problem. You are not, not authorized entry to this secure facility. facility. This is your last warning. Failure to stop your cram and reverse course will result in punitive, punitive measures. Currently, external force gates will allow your passage as you depart the restricted area. Currently. Well, that's not <laughs> ominous. As they continue barreling down the tunnel, though, for the first time on a display, there appears a branching of the green line. Before the next yellow gate, it looks like there's a path off to the west. They stop briefly to look at the junction, which does have curves in the walls to allow the tram to turn. But contrary to their previous assertions, they have seen barrier after barrier let them pass now, and they're not sure that this other route would take them where they're going. So... They continue on due north down the main tunnel. So what happens to a tram at these barriers if it's not going fast enough? It's supposed to be going fast enough. But if there's like <laughs> a breakdown or something, there must be some kind of precaution or safety. It's supposed to be going fast enough. Watch, what you thought was the air conditioner was actually the airbag. Approaching the yellow barrier, the display shows for the first time an orange barrier down the tunnel behind it. Orange? Like TR4's force, force fields? That's got to be the main one. If the controller has direct control over it, we're going to want to stop before that. If we get through this one. You know, Sirius, I don't pray very often. No, no, you get through just fine. But 
Very shortly after you pass through, all the lights and panels and everything go dark. Yet the voice still comes through. Due to failure to comply with the <laughs> authorized path has been shut down and will be detained. External force gates will not, not authorize passage. You will be detained in the tunnel until a creator authorizes your release. <laughs> oh, that's great. Like an Atarin? They're all dead. <laughs> oh, this this is the this yeah. is the Doctor Who sounding music again. Vehicle slows to a stop about as rapidly as it's safe, <laughs> and they all pile out. Though, since the door is on the side, getting even pocket-sized Rainbow Dash out into the tunnel requires some disassembly of the tram. Some rushed disassembly, since they are really pushing the 12-hour duration of Draven's casting of Reduce Animal. <laughs> Back on foot, they push onwards, <laughs> though compared to the tram, it feels like not moving at all. Scouting ahead, Angel finds that the tunnel is obstructed by rock. It looks like hardened lava, with the torso of a golem sticking out of it. Yeah, we ain't waiting for a knockdown. That is so <laughs> cute. Just poke it with a stick. The rock or the golem? Yeah, we, waiting for creators so probably rock, not going to work out too well. To Do you like me calling customer service? Bear? I'll just shoot it with my crossbow. The rock or the golem? Whatever, shoot the rubble. Release the lava flow. Let's get out of here. Speaking of which, what? Before you get around to shooting the inert golem, its eyes flash, glowing red, and it suddenly lurches into motion, smashing the stone around it, cracking the surface, revealing an orange light as magma first leaks, and then, as the disturbed rock starts to break down, molten magma bursts through and begins oozing down the hallway. How fast? Very slow. The golem starts taking damage from the lava, but the glow in its eyes fades again. The torso is starting to melt down. Well, I climb up on the wall and cast message to warn them lava's coming, and shoot the golem anyway. Screw you. All right, automaton man, what's this golem doing in the lava? I don't know. Maybe it was a defender, or there was some kind of earthquake it got caught by the lava flow? What color were Delta's eyes? Delta had light green eyes. Is it possible this is a dark one? Oh Anything my, possible? get automaton man. Dark ones always haunt us. <laughs> they go on about how superior they are and stuff. But this thing is in lava. Maybe he couldn't stick around because of the damage. We've shown that if you beat on them enough, you can wear them down. I'm thinking this lava may have taken out the last force field. If we could pass this lava problem, we might be in the clear. So we need to burrow around the lava, or teleport past it. We need to do it like Minecraft. Just burrow straight down. Burrow straight down, probably hit lava. And then, like Minecraft, you lose all your gear, and it'll be a lot easier to make reasonable fights for you. Seriously, what the hell was with that golem? Should we pull the golem out? No, I really think the best move is to dimension door forward. If we're still in lava or rock, we'll be shunted to the nearest unoccupied space. Worst case, if we can't go forward, it shunts us back here. How bad is the damage for being near lava without touching it? It could do a ton of damage over time, but not so much that you can't largely protect yourselves against it. So how far are you aiming with dimension door? As far forward as I can go. We know it's straight. Wait. Why don't we augury it? Wheeler Wool. Okay. Whoa. Just whoa? The <laughs> answers it can give are wheel, whoa, neither, or both. We don't know if that means instant death, or just not very nice. I'll have Laura cast Lay of the Land. That'll tell you about the surface, but not much about what's ahead down here. Let's find out what's up there. I fully what's understand why the sounds are saying whoa, but it makes it way very funnier. Unfamiliar to Mora. It takes some time studying her mental map, but she can make out all the contours of the ice, and she soon starts to get an idea which ice shapes are meaningful and which aren't. Currently, they are roughly 400 feet below the frosty arctic surface. About a thousand feet west of them, there is an iced over entrance where the ice seems to be broken, exposing some kind of chamber below. Several miles further south, covered in unbroken ice, is another entrance which is probably connected to that branching of the tunnel they had passed. Miles further south are shapes of old piers, ancient docks, frozen and collapsed. The contour of the land looks like the water has moved away. Hmm. Back into that first entrance, yeah. though, is a frozen moor forest jutting out of the ice. And all that sounds a lot more pleasant than wool. So Graven Silent Dimension wonders Door if is Liz had ever seen snow before. It's a very this. hostile, frigid landscape. Um, but even if they didn't all still I have their elements, their travel cloaks actually do protect I mean, against cold. Yeah. Including the huge one. At little night in the desert, all that in winter, I'm sure it's like from the plenty cold, but there's no like precipitation. But on the usually, human so. scale, up close, it's actually a pain in the ass. Depends how much you mess around with the mountains, I guess. About 50 feet from the small dark entrance 
it looks pretty intact. It hasn't rotted, which I guess makes sense in a dry, cold environment. I poke it. Poke, poke, poke. This is totally poke. fine. The ground starts to creak and groan. Fly back. More <laughs> cast With a low shifting sound of moving ice. Fly the f*** back. I cast mirror image. Suddenly, this column of mostly blue metal junk bursts out of the ground. Yeah, I get to use that sound again. Is mostly Warforged, this is some fucking mirror spiral. shit right Warforged here. Cthulhu. Almost the same time, a second column shoots up over here, then bends over and starts pushing down. What? Kill it. Maybe it's friendly. Am I stabbing yeah. it in the face or not? Probably. If it was friendly, it probably would have tried to communicate through the little bit on the surface. I guess fell the greatest foe on it. This is a colossal warforged made of other warforged? Nah, it's only gargantuan. Also, it's not really humanoid. It's got a head and arms, but the rest is just sort of a mass. Now that's a monster. Uh, hello? <laughs> thank you, thank you, Liz. A hologram-like illusory Yay. image of a warforged appears. Now, a lot of them look similar, but you'll never forget Temple One. With glowing red eyes? Indeed. As you oh can imagine, you can tell I wasn't used to voicing Liz yet. That sounded weird. Regard, but I thought even you would have learned your lesson after Gitteron. Bill says it's like, it's like episode one of Gravity Falls. Uh, you don't know. <laughs> the huge head turns a little so he can see uh. both them and the hologram. Well, I thought you would have learned from the last time that we aren't so easy to stop. Ignore the hologram. Kill the big thing. Don't acknowledge its existence. Do we have, like, orbital laser satellites or something? Draven will have to get right on that. How big's his reach? Bigger than yours. It's got, uh, what... 20 foot reach? Well, I can tumble in. 22? That's a miss. Well, you can't miss, but it bounces off. Draven casts Mass Shield of Faith, and Little One moves in. He can take his attack of opportunity. It hits you for 19, and the impact cracks the area around you, turning it into difficult terrain. <laughs> oh, oh yeah, now we're playing Don't you. Break the Ice. Hit him with Disrupting Blow. DC 21 will save, or he gets no actions for an entire round. Hey, it actually passed his save. Oh, yeah. That's awesome damage I rolled. 10. It only has damage reduction 2, the same as the ordinary Warforged is made of. You actually do a ton of damage to one of the countless bodies within him. I feel like I should be AoEing him. Traditionally, area effects don't do extra damage to big things, but this guy? Rainbow Dash is not getting involved at all. Difficult terrain might not entirely stop her, but it does look a little ominous. She's pretty heavy. No, Rainbow Dash is going to do something. He already used his attack of opportunity. She's gonna trample the hologram, just cause she can. Just as an act of contempt. All right, she contempts right through Temple One, using her hasted speed to stay out of the big guy's reach. Gamma here is a little different than the rest of us. We're not sure exactly how he managed to transcend, but where we discard used bodies, Gamma grows very attached to his. He just never learned how to let go. Gamma, smash. <laughs> Gamma's mouth moves, and all of his Warforged heads begin wailing, more of a mechanical screech and whine. Anyone who fails the save is Gamma deafened and takes 2d6 per round for the remainder of the fight. Little One and Mora are affected, giving the bard 20% spell failure. Then, the left hand tries to smash Angel. It easily hits her AC, but you have buttloads of images, so it only has a 1 in 6 chance to hit the real you. And it does. Take 27 damage, and it smashes all the squares around you into difficult terrain. But the one square which was already damaged falls away, revealing a 40-foot drop into frigid water below. Now that was his left arm. His right arm reaches down and tosses a bunch of Warforged out at you, Black. Hopefully it's just an attack and not spawning ads. It's spawning ads. I'm very happy on flying. <laughs> oh no, the fashion, subs. These Warforce begin making touch attacks for a small amount of negative energy Damn you subs. draining hit points. The first one actually misses Black because his ring of slot gives him plus 5 AC against the first touch attack in the battle. The next couple each hit him for 8 or 9 damage, but his armor's unusual good. negative energy resistance reduces each by 5. Liz and Mora each get hit once for full damage, so Mora moves as far as she can and tries to shoot her attacker, but manages to miss. Meanwhile, the hologram fades away. Is this guy Alpha? Later, Later Alpha. Herpes. I rolled a crit. Don't suppose you can crit this guy. Actually, you can't get demonetized can. for auto subs. He's massive, but I, being I made up of smaller things, he does have weak points where you could disrupt a bigger chunk of his mass. Then can I confirm? Crit. Liz cuts down the two warforged close to her so she can focus on the real threat. I cast silence on myself. 
Okay, so nobody within 15 feet of her has to save or takes continuing damage from the wailing. He's within 15 feet. Yeah, but your spell only covers a fraction of his body. Most of the screaming heads are still outside the silence. Does it reduce the damage or give us a bonus to save? Um, yeah. Everyone outside the silence can have plus two to save against the reduced wailing. Draven gives his crossbow construct bane and flies up higher to make sure he's at least 80 feet away. Little one goes for a searing blade full attack to rack up dozens of bonus fire damage, but his highest roll only hits AC 24, so he misses all three attacks. Rainbow Dash charges right through Angel's position, trampling all the puppets surrounding Black. Deafness saves. Liz fails her save by one. No, she passed because of the plus two save I was supposed to give everyone plus due two. to the sizable part of Gamma in the silence. Nice. Gamma's going to smash black. Ooh, going to be interesting. No, it's not. He missed. I need to lower my AC. No, you don't. It rolled terribly to only hit 28. Black and Mora each hit the massive robots for solid damage, while Liz has to reposition because all the difficult terrain is preventing her from engaging effectively. Is he bloodied yet? No. You guys have done lots of damage, but he has massive hit points. There's so the many hit points. The team are finding their groove, though. Or, at least, their die rolls. Angel, with Fell the Greatest Foe, now in full attack range and flanking position, <laughs> the buff grants her plus 46 hey, damage, one die bit, per size better. category, <laughs> larger her target is. Then there's 3d6 sneak attack, fire from her chain, ice from her weapon crystal. <laughs> Every attack that hits is like a no-saving throw fireball. And she hits three times for 120 Ooh. damage, just strip mining into wow. Gamma's side. Still not bloody though? Just barely bloodied from that last hit. There's blood in the water. And kill I guess, shot. Kill shot. Angel, yeah, I, I feel like Angel seven tends crits. to Even underperform on the damage front compared to some of the other guys, so but uh, this this is a this is a good circumstance for her. Action. I just want to get up on there. Also, so she there are a lot of situations where her damage doesn't really show because she's just shredding a crap ton of minions, and it does really help, like strategically. It would love to take out Angel to stop the horrendous damage but she still has all her mirror images, preventing it from targeting the right one. With its right hand, it tossed a handful of puppets to swarm her and eat through the illusions, but uh, against all odds, just half of them hit the real angel. Goes up some as a, like, gain levels and stuff like that, but they keep, like... Gets a fraction of their life drain because Draven can points, upgrade the items, they keep, only half keep upgrading, like, the bonus shattered. on his Such shield and his armor and stuff. still have poor odds to hit her with a massive fist. And he's a full plate guy, so... It's a lot. Take 27. Okay. It's reduced by 7 because of the greater Iron Ward crystal I have now with the extra 2 points for my Ring of Sloth. I'm going to yeah, save my amulet. That's though. great, Black, except for one yeah, little problem. Look that. The damaged ice you're standing on, it collapses under this second blow <laughs> and you fall 40 feet Excuse into me. freezing water. Okay. What? <laughs> if you were adjacent to an intact square, you could try to grab on, but you're right in the middle of the hole. Can I grab onto him? Uh, okay, you can try. Reflex DC 18. So I need a 10. He takes 5 cold and 11 I made that really easy, too. Water full of 18's ice. not that hard for you what okay? he's trying to do there. Divine Transformation. <laughs> that, that's so funny. <laughs> the opportunity attack is even you funnier. You smash off like half of his jaw. And since he uses attack of opportunity on you, and she finally has a clear line, Liz makes a battle leader's charge and hits for 31. Nice! Go, Liz! Gamma's taken over 400 damage, and it's starting to show, with chunks of them raining down into the water below. <laughs> Angel doesn't roll as well, but after it's Rainbow Dash clears off the life draining puppets again, she does another 40 damage, and Draven shoots it for 30. Gamma's lost so much of its structure, it's starting to list to one side. What? He lived? Ooh, he actually lived through little ones, and somewhat less surprisingly, more as attacks too, but fails to swat the half dragon off of itself. He raises his other hand up towards Draven. Uh, I'm over 80 feet away, nowhere near his reach. <laughs> I hate you. This is the last time Draven's gonna poke anything ever. Been working for that. I hate you. This happened anyway. <laughs> Don't attack Draven. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, no bullshit transfers or anything. With, not, not with Gamma. <laughs> I'd say we made an entrance. Next time on Tales from My D and D Campaign.
Oh, we've got the organization starting to show up now. I don't, I don't, I don't think Operation Awesome Unemployment was started yet, but I don't know. We now stream D&D &D 5th and Oh Eastern yeah, Sunday, Sunday Morning Heroes. Eastern Standard Time. Details at Sunday that was fun for a while. Com. Come join us live. Um, I aggro the clown. Yeah, you yeah, definitely hit. Okay. Um, I put right in the nose. Honk. Aggro the clown. Let's get... Oh, God. Are you grappling? Well, lady's lady is gone. We're down to clown yeah. and bear. God, I'm just clown, clown and bear. Hey, I'm, I'm wounded. Slightly. And it misses. Yay. <laughs> I like this plan. All right. I I'm still holding up the clown zombie. I'm gonna start bashing the bear with it. Like, is this funny? <laughs> is, this, <laughs> is this funny to you? <laughs> All right, you perfect. Do, like that honking sound every time you hit. Honk. Okay, I, I I definitely hit it. It can take nine nine <laughs> points of clown damage. So that'd be nine and then. <laughs> clown damage. Uh, no, we're not. I don't really have any plans to stream D and D again. DJ fail, but if anybody, if, but if anybody's really bored because they've because they've like watched all my other stuff, there is a there is a fair amount of Sunday morning heroes that in the playlist that you could watch. Wait, you were level six. Mark was level eight. Liz has a bunch of extra monstrous hit dice, and her build is at least. As oh, much. is this a? Like uh, we found another one that was like part way through there. Remote to the beginning of the episode. Tales from my D and D campaign. Thirty six. With Liz the Orc now in tow, the party heads back to properly explore the terminus. They call this the Northern Terminus, terminus. but it's not, it's not the, the Northern, northern terminus. terminus. All the heroes plus Liz pile into the tram and they set out northward. A huge military facility with the largest geovolcanic power source we could find. All the lights and panels and everything. Geovolcanic to power source does sound amazing. <laughs> like that's shut down and will be detained. Graven dimension doors. That's that's up. some good Magitek stuff. Gamma here is a little different than the rest of us. Gamma, smash. <laughs> now that's a monster. <laughs> Divine transformation. Don't. Attack Graven. <laughs> I'd say we made an entrance. As Gamma died, never having learned to transfer his consciousness as the other Dark Ancients do, the heap of ancient warforged that made up his body fell over and collapsed. Even though he was more than 30 feet from the original broken spot Mora had found in the ice, as much as 30% of his mass spilled over into the hole. As they gathered around the opening, they could like all the little the parts falling off him. Scattered over a large symbol of Atari. This looks kind of cool. Of creation worshipped by the ancient builders. The icon appeared to mark a great door in segments which could iris open. Did Gamma Falling break it open? No, not enough of him fell down. He more trickled down than making a solid impact. There's not much in the temple. Perhaps it was cleaned out, though it looks like it may have been pretty spartan in the first place. It is a little banged up in places, indicating there may have been oh, fights. Yeah, you're right. Angels already you down there. More real subtitles. Hard time finding the mechanism. Which is like a plus and a minus, because obviously it's not as funny. I think the button should but if, be if anyone right really right. wanted to understand what was going on, it would be a lot better. Elder Mountain <laughs> Hammer. Here we go. Yeah. <laughs> Little one has rainbow dash weight up at the surface. Understand what was going on, it would be a lot better. Yeah. Down with light mm -hmm. bars in the corners, mm -hmm. and the joints of Black's armor begin to glow in the presence of a proper Ataran power source. <sighs> You're bringing Liz? Liz can be right up front with me. Okay, oh. she's gonna complain if you try to leave her up at the entrance and shitty. Oh god, I forgot to the mute first because I'm not wearing headphones. Sorry. Empty room with one <laughs> yeah, opening we'll live. forward. You know what I'm thankful of? The fact that the Atarans do not seem to be paranoid whatsoever. They put no value in traps. They put they don't no value in traps. Place. They well, put no value in traps. Place. I'm just going to echo that for the next ten minutes or so. <laughs> exactly. Like, I don't put a bear trap in my couch. They put no get value in traps. All the time. Because who puts traps on the ceiling? Probably the Atarans. That's actually how you missed all the traps in Ginneron. <laughs> they were all on the ceiling. Only suckers walk on the floor. That would be a decent strategy, though. Who traps, like, the walls? We're gonna have to trap the walls when we build a keep. Whatever a trap does to me, I can totally hurt that trap. So nobody's been around here? You're not sure. 
you notice a number of places where the quality is slightly inconsistent, where you think the metal walls may have been recently repaired, though if so, it takes a very keen eye to tell. The ten-foot room narrows into a short hallway, then widens back into a room with four pillars in the far half. And they a put ramp no value in traps. Some lights come on as they approach. Angel checks the entrance of the room carefully, finding no sign of pressure plates or other triggers. But something about this room, this configuration, does not sit right with you. I could blistering radiance and clear everything out. I figure anything of value. Will yeah, be but to do they value traps? I'm sure it will be good for all they the put books. No value in traps. Not immune. Wheeler, whoa! Well, if it says whoa, we're still going in. Screw it. I walk in. Four figures step out from alcoves on the far side of the pillars. These golems look like knights in futuristic full plate, with large tower shields polished to a mirror sheen. Glowing That's eyes, not a trap. They all have glowing white it's just an ambush. Wings. Looks pretty standard to you. Historically, the Dark Ancients you've met have each had a different colored glow, not white. Still like that Angel Dark Ancients image with the four of them that's been showing so since for like a million years. It showed like all their forms, the and a lot of people didn't realize that in the background was Gamma, like that that, that was a giant eye. I'm confuzzled. They're big golems. I feel their touch AC is probably bad, but those shields have me worried about reflection. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to use my eternal wand of heroes. Those shields have me black. worried about we're, we're reflection. Good. You get plus two on every d20 roll. Yes. Black, who still has two rounds left on his left. I like the polar on music. Charges a golem, hitting for 22, though its damage which is, reduction stops. Which is good, because we're going to be listening to it for, like, the next... Hammer it is. Well, I don't know, five hours, me, <laughs> at least. Him. And if he misses me... I get a free attack from my counter strike bridge. Like three hours tonight and then one of the two. Still going tomorrow with the polar on music. Then Liz moves up beside Black, but misses her battle leader's charge. It's hard when you roll a five. That's when the golems pause for a moment. The wall over here they put opens up. No value in traps. Bright light. The f <laughs> projects a huge beam of energy ten feet in diameter. It's electrical damage, but it has some properties of a laser. Woo, I have five electrical resistance. I think that's the first time I get to use it. Those of you in the beam... Hooray for five 59 electrical damage. resistance. 59? On the yeah. video. So every time he says they put no value in traps, I hear it again two seconds later. <laughs> right. Very happy she passed her save. Wait, the beam's still there? It's continuous. That's why it does so much damage. Also, do not end your turn in the beam. You take full damage with no save. Fortunately, Angel can practically dance through the difficulty 20 reflex save if she needs to, and her evasion rogue ability means she takes no damage when she succeeds against a reflex for half effect. But if she did roll terribly or ended her turn in the beam, she'd be in a bad place. I, I like that the, the beam machines, looks really good. The little one through, I'm, I'm happy with that. This round. Like this, very this section is a very good looking it? battle map because section just because that beam be kicking ass. They aren't actually blocking it with their shields. But while one misses Black, allowing him to counter strike for 23, another hits Liz for 14 damage and knocks her back 10 feet with a free bull rush it gets when it hits. Mora, trapped on the other side beam. of the beam, can see through enough to help, though targets on the other side would have concealment from her. Shit just got real, people. What's up? I'll take care of the lightning. Angel misses a shot, showing the golems have an armor class higher than 30, so Raven fires an orb of force from his wand. Orb spells ignore the golem's magic resistance, and it is not reflected by the shield, as he had feared it might be, so he deals 26 yeah. force damage. It turns, there's, no, there's, a there's like a military, military facility, they're like, of money if this is going to be attacked by... Because if Raven can't finish things, nothing would ever... If we're going to be attacked by an army or something, we, we need to have a defense against coming. that, so they what? just... We have two entrances. Each entrance will have one of these super ultra, like, army-destroying traps. And then we don't need to put traps anywhere else, because we already did. We'll have some, like, basic defenses, but, yeah. The armies stop here. And then his holy transformation spell wears off. Haste. Well, that's good for Liz, who has already been beat to crap. Don't chicken out. I ain't run it. She isn't about to flee while all of you are standing. Pure her. pressure. You should trip it. She looks up at this thing, twice her height and outmassing her by a factor of ten, and tries to smash its leg instead. She touch attack mountain hammers for 26 true damage, bypassing the DR. At the bottom of the round, the wall in front of the beam closes, and an adjacent section opens as it moves west ten feet, currently beaming harmlessly into one of the pillars. 
but proving that it can move enough to blast either that side of the room or back down the middle in the next round. I know Liz that isn't in their league, but, like, the touch attack Liz mountain Liz hammer is still pretty, somehow, like, gets knocked back. that is a move her that works. probably a good thing, because it makes it easier for her to get out of combat. She's thinking, like, 80 damage. Hasted now, angel full attacks, hitting three times. Construct's damage reduction stops all of her physical damage, but her chain still inflicts ice and fire damage, which adds up. She goes 20 this round. I don't nice. know what to do. I can attack, or I can wait and block the beam again. I can probably make the reflex save. DC 20 is pretty easy for Angel, though it would be bad if she failed. Especially since I'm already hurt. Okay, I'm trusting your reflexes. If I hit three times, I bet I can kill this guy with Searing Blade. Those were two pretty good hits. The third hit... Yeah, no, Hierarch Artanis. The, 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 the pillars are also, like, the pillars right next to the beam are clearly very immune to the energy, or they're, like, reflecting and reabsorbing it or something. number of enemies dealing damage. got one down. That's good. All right, Liz needs to GTFO. Don't run away. Drop this guy. She's already done okay damage, but she has less than 20 HP left. I'm not liking Liz. She's f***ing chicken. Whatever, you know, little one. What's she supposed to do? This circumstance. She's out of her league. You guys are out of her league. She gets hit by one fifty damage lightning bolt and falls apart. <laughs> She's more powerful than Mark. Really? What level were we? We were level six. Mark was level eight. Liz has a bunch of extra monstrous hit dice, and her build is at least as optimized. He'd likely yeah, hurt her. Liz, Liz she'd is beat him a lot like every time. Marp plus a bunch of monstrous hit dice. For opportunity for nineteen. Max damage, it's just with more hit points. Stop seven, and the even, if even if her back. techniques the are somewhat different. Sound lance, but the golem skull resistance stops. The beam shifts to the west again, beaming into the angled wall sections, which reflected around the entire outside of the room. But Whoops. though that was unexpected, <laughs> they largely positioned themselves safely while worried about deflection. <laughs> says Raven. A minute ago, or five minutes ago. It, Angles its shield. Look at that those shields, one. and worry about deflection. So it doesn't matter that I moved up. Do I get a bonus from hiding behind black? Sure, you can have plus one to your save. I'll take it. I save, and my armor has five electrical resist. I think half of seventy-four. Holy yeah, crap! Yeah, that's what I was saying, Nightmare I Warden. Like I, I'm, I'm very proud of how that beam six. looks. It yeah, actually just looks really good on the battle five. map. Battle maps are usually not that interesting to look at, but this beam is cool. Immediate action heal, allowing her to stay on her feet. Retreat to safety, Mora. That's an order. As Mora slipped back into the antechamber, Angel attacked, dealing eight elemental and eleven physical damage. Hey, one point of. Meanwhile, like this whole this whole room, Angel doesn't give a shit about the beam for herself. She's like, whatever beam. She just like press herself against the wall or however that works. I don't know. Cutting off the beam and blocking one of the goal. I'm also dropping my shield to two hand my weapon so I can expand the spear up the large. Graven drops another force orb for 30, leaving a golem badly hurt but still moving. Black hits a different one twice, triggering his rend attack. I'm gonna let your rend ignore DR in this case. You've effectively broken your way through already. Liz is just trying to stay alive at this point, but she sees an opening and she goes for it. She hits the most damaged golem with a bone crusher, but the 12 damage that penetrates the DR leaves it just Barely still yeah, Bone Crusher doesn't no, ignore DR, just does good damage. For the player character, minus 25% death threshold, but she still won't die till she hits negative 10. So it's statistically unlikely to kill her. Yeah, she survives. I mean, she's severely unconscious. She requires aid, but she'll live. The beam moves back east yeah. again, preparing to get back into action at the end of the next round. They don't reflect the beam diagonally, right? Right. Though they can just move. Yeah. When someone's got two rooks on you, you're in a bad place. I'm going to resolve that by wanting him. That better kill him. Yeah, it does. Liz virtually had him. I want to walk over and hack the shield off this thing, because then I could redirect the beam. Could that work? I'd say yes, but in the process, you would take the damage. Really? Yeah, the beam would be in your square. Like... I'd give you the save, because you could maybe reduce the damage by angling the shield well, but these golems are actually immune to it in order yeah, to... The amount, of, dam yeah, yeah, the amount of damage on the beam is pretty damn them. high, they all do. even together, relative to like their level and how tough they are. Defenders. But even before the last goal but fails, it, the beam it's, shuts down it's a tricky balance, because it is theoratically avoidable. 
it's just not easy surface. because of the, the guys moving around with the shields and stuff grass. like that. Rotrick? Exactly. What if they're reinforcements, though? We don't want to have to fight all that again. We can leave Angel behind to watch. If anything shows up, you can let us know or run the hell away if spotted. No problem. They heal me up first, then I'll stay with her. That sounds dangerous. If I store my armor in my ring of arming, I have pretty good stealth, too. You're not invisible or anything. I can cast it on him. Well, if it gets serious, send us a message and we can dimension door back in. But you realize it takes three rounds and they'll know exactly where we'll be. Oh, right. They've got the slow port. Rather than retreat Yeah, if you dimension door in the beam room, you're going to be really unhappy in three rounds when you show up. <laughs> respawn quickly, while Angel casts invisibility on Little One and herself, giving them the better part of ten minutes to see if there was any response to their attack. And sure enough, after only a few minutes, a mixed group of constructs arrived. Led by two golems, just slightly smaller than the conducting golems they just fought, there were also a number of construct workers, similar to the ones they saw in Ginneron. But instead of dog size, these ones were the size of, well, really big dogs. At in least these golems do not want to be in the beam. <laughs> One, those construct those those, those, those conducting golems are very specially constructed. The whole group shimmered with some kind of it cost a lot more than the basic ones. All this again? We can if we really have to. You're fully healed. I stay the hell back. We can't let them repair all this. Are we attacking or retreating? Hang back and watch for now. The workers load one of the shield golems on the flatbed, and they watch the two blue golems leave with it down the ramp, while the others stay poking prodding any fallen defenders. If they're just clearing them out, that's fine. What if they're being repaired off-site? Then kill all the workers. We can't take the chance. You think the cannon has to recharge? Assume the worst. I mean, we can probably take these two, just Angel and I, but if Alpha shows up, we're f jumping from body to body at the laser death room. Draven buffs Black's weapon with constant Laser room aid, creates so many F-bombs. Temporarily change the mace from mithril to adamantite, a metal which penetrates the damage reduction of most constructs. When the wow, it changed the, the color. Mithril, Exciting. Later, Little One and Angel were still lurking, invisible, and the others rushed in to destroy the repair team. You should have Rainbow Dash run over all the workers. We didn't actually bring her down, remember? What about Liz? I don't think you guys spent the time or resources to heal her up yet. Tell her to watch the rear. Alright, she takes it very seriously, even though you think she knows you're humoring her. So the rest of them engage. Mora shoots and Black charges the nearest worker, and Little One Searing charges one of the golems. They discover that the Shimmering is some kind of energy shield, granting a This was another rude surprise. temporary hit points to all the enemies. Boron has a lot of stuff up, going on. He barely broke through the field, but as soon as he broke through the shield's resistance, the worker was crushed by his attack. So these are like minions, except for the shield. Like 31 hit point minions. The shield is very beneficial to them. One of the minions with the tube shoots you twice, and it hits with one the bolt. shield makes them uh, like 3,000 like times tougher. 3,000% <laughs> 3, tougher, yes, I mean. takes six damage. I have like DR7, so I take nothing. The golems beat on Little One, hitting multiple times with pretty good die rolls, but their damage per attack seems to average in the low teens, much like the conductive golems. Each time you're hit, it applies one charge. You can feel some magical effect uh, building yes. up. Ah, yes. on charges. You don't know. It doesn't do anything obvious. Then the hemisphere, the round minion, shimmers. That's the shield giver? Oh, a shield generator? That is cool! Try not to destroy it. Oh, you want me to stop it without mass destruction? Yes, little one, one try not to destroy it. Protecting us. everything with a shield where I'd have to do 500 damage to kill this golem? I want Every to time you that. ask little one to not destroy something. It doesn't have a head. I'm gonna <laughs> oh, rip man. something off. At the end of the round... Damn it. Round two. Fight! I thought it stopped over there. You don't think it can move behind the wall? 45 damage, save for hat. That saves, as does Little One. While one worker <laughs> Little One, try not to destroy, destroy things challenge. Impossible! <laughs> Meanwhile, Angel evades there's a, there's a very challenging a challenge. Of the round beam. You're actually trying to dodge the arcs of electricity. I could try to pick up the shield generator and run out of range. No, you, you can just attack it. It's I don't fine. know how her evasion it works half, sometimes, it just does. So I'm okay to kill this thing. He runs over and grabs the four-foot dome, and Ballista throws it into the beam. Hey, wait! <laughs> I really thought it would just get electrocuted. 
Do the shields disappear? Not immediately. As soon as the shield generator's initiative came around though, all remaining shields disappeared, showing that it just generated a mass shield each round with a one round duration. With that powerful defense removed, this group of enemies was suddenly quite manageable. These basic Atronium golems had similar stats to the conducting golems that had guarded the laser room, just slightly weaker, and judging by the beam's reluctance to target them, they probably weren't immune to electricity. However, instead of a free bull rush on every successful attack, these ones applied one of the mysterious magical charges with every hit. Mm. And the shooting workers had an alternate fire, which also applied a charge, as a ranged touch attack instead of dealing damage. What are these charges? 31 is a very good check, but it's simply going to take more time, more evidence to figure that out. It's clearly a stacking effect designed to. I don't know to why they were giving out charges something. in this room. You haven't seen what yet. So they Except basically just as like again, a warning. From yeah, like a video game tutorial. Because I don't think there's anything in this room that I actually could discharge them. Expert eye, the wall appears capable of opening. Elder Mountain Hammer with my bare hand. That dents the wall, causing significant damage, but it'll take more than that to break through. You find out it's on on the other side. Wah! Yeah, why am I punching the wall anyway? If you start <laughs> to break through, it may respond in some fashion. Here's what we're going to do. I'm going to wall of stone the whole this, laser wall. This is a good one. Wall of stone is very rest, good because it's so come flexible. Back and adamantine our way through it. So they back off, bring Rainbow Dash down, and rest in the invisible space created by a rope trick to regain spells. The Polaron charges dissipate after a few rounds in which no new stacks were added. But what do they do? The characters also level up to 13, all except Little One, who is a little short due to the, the shield domes discharge charges. Partial half dragon template combined with the chunky. Yeah, I guess they. But with all their health and spells they back, had something they for that. I don't remember and found actually. The wall of stone appeared to have done its job. Other than the first one hauled away, all the destroyed worker and golem bodies were still there, and the wall was fully intact. They smashed Yay, the progress. Blocking the ramp, leaving the rest of the wall to continue blocking the brutal super laser, and headed deeper into Polaron. The hall sloped gently down over a 40-foot length, then leveled out for a 30-foot stretch lined with row upon row of arrow slits at two and a half, five, and seven and a half foot heights. Beyond this stretch, I'm not sure exactly what they were expecting to stop height, with to the, the hallway full of crossbow so shooters are probably bigger out that there. would get the past the so super laser. I guess it was they were worried about someone just being fast be and sneaky Indiana and just like charging through zombies. there. We need like a I mean, this is oh, the yeah, part that like has really stuck with me. Do you have any like, I don't really watch series that often compared to some people around here. No but this is, I never forget this part because line, like, there didn't they're sitting there trying to figure out what's there, going on and it's tense and Angel sneaks in and, and then it's yeah. like, oh yeah, this is a dead civilization. Yeah, no, I, no, it's definitely memorable. I'm just talking strictly defensively. I'm not, like, it's not the most impressive arrangement. It makes a good scene, yes. Turning invisible, of course. God, she's got to be the creepiest character ever. On closer inspection, the Warforged, armed with Masterwork crossbows, have little left but their metal parts, their organics having long since decayed. Some actually look to have huddled together. We should give Liz a crossbow. She prefers melee, and she has throwing hammers if she needs range. She hasn't read the PHB, so she doesn't know throwing hammers suck. Badges? They do <laughs> like, all have some kind of I like how Liz reacts to me dissing her throwing what hammers. They to be the badges TR Force had to describe. They widen the hole enough to get everyone but Rainbow Dash through and explore. But yeah. The long, narrow guard room's arrow slits are angled in such a way that with a six foot crossbowman on each side of the hall, they'd have excellent overlapping fields of fire. There's a stairway that appears to lead under the main passage to the other side, but they first yeah, the, the, the war force lying there like holding hands. The like, you know, I guess we're, I guess there, we're dying now. They find what they recognize as a geovolcanic power source, similar to the one from the northern terminus. So there must be a volcanic ley line here. Despite Little One's offer to smash it, hoping to cripple Polaron's defenses, Raven uses his incredible use magic device skills to shut it down in a less permanent fashion. You Walter Peck this thing. Shut it down. There's no effect on the lighting, but judging by some metal tracery on the ground, they put together that this may have been a dedicated power supply just for that beam weapon. Backtracking a little, yeah, they, they use the same amount of power for that beam weapon that TR4 was using to power all that shit at the northern at the northern terminus. This side had a passage heading east, parallel to the main hallway. So, equipped with Polaron badges, working their way down the staff area, leaving Rainbow Dash behind for now, they find a door. 
It looks like a blue metal dead end, with no obvious means of opening, but Angel's seen enough guitar and construction by now to I wonder how long I keep now. showing and those badges on them. I can't imagine I remember that sticks for long. The mechanical lock. However the hell that works. Angel, Angel's already not wearing one. It's a 60 by 60 foot room filled with golems and workers. Fully four times the repair crew I mean, took down, maybe Angel's Mortiball ship. vest just ate However, it. There are also two uh, eight foot metal uh, spheres. I don't think it's supposed to work through. that way for jewelry, but lines, sure, why so not? The ball has been diced, turned 90 degrees, then diced again. Sliced and diced. I'm Mortiball vest is not really supposed why? to work for I'm metal stuff, but at that. some point I just gave up and let it have the chain shirt. Oh. Because yeah, it was have to go in. Frankly, less like nitpicky. I'm just trying to give you an excuse. Does. It's driving me crazy. <laughs> Maybe that's what it does. As little one walks in, as carefully as one can, despite his bluster, they see a transport and a few other workers head out the door into the main corridor, which closes behind them. Where's the body of the conductive gold? No badge. Room? Yeah, they did. You don't see any sign of it. The badges there. are going to be I the least consistent thing ever. You get a buff. Oh man, I totally should have done that. Too late now. But if I said that, it would have been <laughs> awesome. No, no, nothing happens. All right, I'll walk over and try to pick up the four-foot shield generator one. Is it heavy? Well, when you start to pull up on it, lifting it a bit off the ground, it activates the energy shields and starts trying to roll away. Activates and the tilt the sensor. Goals, which are all the f around you start activating. They're all activating? He just kept poking and poking until something happened. He activated the tilt sensor. I can blistering radius the place. Okay, hey, right. now it reminds me of my robot yes. vacuum. <laughs> I know what I would do. Is there any way to yeah. turn these things off? Not turning them on would have been a good start. Curiosity, man. Curiosity kills the things. <laughs> we should just shut the door. Come back later. Come back with a gem and raise him. Maybe you guys should wait. If they only attack me, maybe I can draw them off. Right now, I just want to get the initiative so we can nuke the room. There, there's no laser beam, right? Uh, there's my favorite stuff is the no Feywild laser, stuff. Um, the Raj's. That, like, weird Feywild guy first. who, like, we'll had a mask and kept changing personalities and, like, teleporting shield. around annoyingly. In that stuff's yeah, just awesome. I love that shit. The regular <laughs> and stabby workers. So that would you love all the annoying uh, shit. What would have happened if, instead of hitting it, you petted it? Sing to it. Be nice to Which it. Which makes me wonder Very if you'd love that stuff as game. much if you that were a player and you had to it. deal with the annoying shit. <laughs> nope. Anything that has eyes. Uh, has no. I'm sure I would hate it, but <laughs> also love it. <laughs> well, you know, you hate it in the moment, and then you look back and you're like, that was awesome. Yeah. Have more a haste us and GTFO. Yes, but next round we'll get more to shoot me, then close the door, and you drop another wall if you can. Shoot you. I'll leaping flame counter over to her. Right, it just teleports you to the attacker. It won't hurt her or anything. I'll get caught in the teleport damper thing, but I'll, I'll be back in three rounds. So he's You'll even thinking about that. No, I disappear thing. right away. I just wouldn't reappear for three rounds. Shouldn't Laura shoot you first then? No, they have to attack me first. Otherwise, they'll come straight for the party. And a lot of them act before Drake. You guys have to get out of the room, then shoot me. I'm going to take some licks. It actually doesn't matter who shoots me, as long as somebody does. Honestly, if we can take out the shield generator quickly, the whole situation changes. Unfortunately, based on the initiative rolls, only Mora would act before it refreshed its 30 hit point shield. She focused her magic on utility and buffs, so she didn't have any big nuke to try and take down the generator. Shooting it, she found it has a huge deflection bonus specifically against ranged attacks. But she hit it anyway, dealing max damage and... It's not bloody yet. No DR, it's just tougher than you thought. I may get stomped into paste here, but I am the one who poked it. It's gonna be a bloodbath. And you know whose blood is in this bath? Yep, mine. At least I'm unflankable. Eight large golems pile on little one with their ten foot reach. His medium grade <laughs> iron ward crystal stops ow, three ow, damage ow. per hit, though it can only stop thirty damage per day, a number which was going to come up very quickly as they wailed on him with fists and blades for about ten to fifteen damage per hit and each hit gave him another Polaron charge. What do they do? Miss, miss, hit, miss, crit, miss, miss. It's a good thing they're missing so much. Considering they need like a seven to hit, yeah, we it, really they rolled amazingly before bad. coming in here. They missed all those times. I still took 92 damage. I think I can taste my own spleen. You can taste a lot of iron anyway. The party members who had moved into the room were falling back to the tunnel, where they had a bit of a choke point. 
making it difficult for even four of the golems to get at them once they finish with the little one. Black tries to take out the shield generator with a sound lance, but its energy field had refreshed on its turn, and when it made it safe for half, the remaining damage just takes out most of the temporary hit points. Alright, I'll shoot little one. You're gonna enjoy that just a little too much. As Angel backs down the passage and fires at him, the half-dragon warblade disappears in a gout of flame. Normally, he would simultaneously reappear next to his attacker, but as they expected, he was suspended in limbo by Polaron's teleport damping abjuration. In any case, he was out of danger as long as they could hold the entrance for three rounds until he reappears. Wait, you did a counter move on her. Is she dead now? No, it's just a movement thing. If somebody shoots at me from a rooftop 100 feet away, I can teleport next to them. There's no range limit? 100 feet. That's ridiculous. That's scary as shit. It is such if a good If only move. four golems can fit in around the tunnel mouth, maybe we can do more. Maybe we can actually succeed here if we can just get rid of the shield. I can maximize a wand attack. If I force orb, I should be able to guaranteed kill the dome. Though you have seen from Mora's attack that it has a significant deflection bonus against ranged attack. You know this thing won't have a touch AC of like 10 or 12. Still, I'll do it. AC 25? That hits its touch AC, but not by as big a margin as you'd like. And the 60 damage kills it, but doesn't overkill it as much as you would have thought. So f expensive Whatever. but it Die. had to go <laughs> so the existing shields would wear off next round at the i like i like that little animation where it was like on the the, the table and that's it showed it getting blown away just randomly generator instead or just look at liz you ready to hold this off the say so one sphere repositions a little while the other delays its initiative then the, the shield generator brings out this like shots. weird the, part of me that thinks it's cute like the mouse droids from star trek zapping their targets yeah well it is Black it has nothing to detri- nothing that makes it uncute. Care. Another shoots for six damage. <laughs> is, is which, again, my best explanation for that. Damage reduction of seven, though it has to be counted because I guess because it's kind of like one. harmless. This crystal can only mostly. absorb fifty damage per day. They hit Liz for twelve damage, then for two charges. Draven gets two charges, and Angel gets one as well. Then the second sphere rolls up next to them. Liz and Black each get an attack for opportunity, but they bounce off because it has plus eight AC against attacks provoked by its movement. Why? It's not dodging or anything. No, it is not dodging. It has absolutely nothing exposed. Then it unfolds into a giant mass of counter rotating blades, and whirlwind attacks as a standard action. Yeah, I, I like that, that animation too. It's AC twenty nine. Shit, I'm at thirty. So that just looks really good. Missed. So it when those spheres get their blades except out. Black. This is one of my favorite parts of all of Polaron. It's just the spinning orbs. Your original yeah. plan with the wall would have been fine. You all take 31 physical damage. Hey guys, you want to play ball? Every charge on you is expended, dealing 5 electrical damage per charge. Well, now I know what the damn buff is. I would have taken an extra 45. Minus 5 for resistance. Hey, do these charges count as a hostile spell for my ring? For each charge? No, I, I, I don't think so. Uh, what about the discharge then? Sure, that that can count as a hostile spell. Mora hastes them all because whether they fight or run, it's a huge help either way. Then the majority of the enemies act, but <laughs> most at... of them can't get into reach, so they just kind of most of that's just not that dangerous individually. But there's so much. Liz hits the slicing golem for 22, half of which gets through the DR. Then attempts to tumble away. She has a hard time tumbling with all her armor, but she tries. It worked this time. Yay! Angel scores a couple hits while Draven readies his action. Then, on Black's turn, Blistering Radiance. This is my knife spell, out. Draven drops a wall of force just in front of them, protecting them from the furnace like glow. Black rolls 9 damage for the first round. There's a fortitude save for half, and minions never take damage on a successful save. But nevertheless, half of them die in the first round, while it begins to damage the larger constructs, most of which made their saving throws. And the spell lasts like a minute. Now we just buff up. And get ready to mop up. Making Black's Mace Adamantine and Bane should be strong, since she should be up front, and they'll come to him so he can full attack. Mora and I can just force crossbow from the back to beat the DR. At the end of the round, though, a blue glow fills the room, fighting against the Radiance. A fire suppression system. Uh, that would be convenient, but actually, no. They all start making their saves. Yeah, there aren't any fire suppression systems saves. in this room. What the hell? <laughs> The big ones are still taking half damage, but with perfect saves, the minions are evading the damage with metal. Override. Intruders detected. They all start moving out of the room. I pop back in and see them leaving, and I'm like, hey, you won. Good job. <laughs> but have they? 
next time on Tales from My D and D Campaign. That was a weird tinny voice section, not blended well with the main video audio. I like the, the controller has these other these random powers that don't come up very often, but like when it's if it decides to, it can just like it's like oh hey in this local area, which is a pretty large area, it's like. It just takes control and starts making them, gives all, giving uh, all its guys yeah. plus 10 to save. Yeah, or a flying <laughs> fortress. Have that rainbow dash. Make your own rainbow death star. Get a prison for it, be a rainbow death star in multiple senses. Actually, rainbow dash is not that brilliant. May not want a death laser shooting wherever she looks. Possibly. For the next million years, every video ends with the tunnel theme. I guess we were doing that for a while, probably. I like the dome going in front. <laughs> what do they do? <laughs> uh, classic. Tales from my D and D campaign. Previously, we don't build a trap every two day. hours There's left. One serious. And then we'll be halfway now done. With what they assume <laughs> to be the bad for the night. Our force head and describe. <laughs> I'll walk over and try to pick up the shield generator one. Is it heavy? It activates the energy shields, and the golems, which are all the f around you, start activating. They're all activating. There, there's no laser beam, right? There's probably no laser Night beam. Help but home. They have activated the strategic reserve. <sighs> they missed all those times. I still took 92 damage. All right, I'll shoot little one. You're yeah, really I'd, I'd, just there's no way we're getting to much. ride the As lightning today. As down the passage and fires at him, the half dragon warblade disappears in a gout of flame. I'll get caught in the teleport damper thing, but I'll, I'll be back in three rounds. Blistering radiance. Raven drops a wall of force, protecting them from the furnace-like glow. Minions never take damage on a successful save, but nevertheless, half of them die in the first round, while it begins to damage the larger constructs. Now we just buff up. And get ready to mop up. A blue glow fills the room, fighting against the radiance. Override. Intruders detected. They all start moving out of the room. I pop back in and see them leaving, and I'm like, Hey, you won! Good job! As the constructs marched out of the security room, the larger golems suffered another round of damage from Black's blistering radiance. Yeah, spell, Island. Protected by some power of Polaron controller, the massive bonus allowed them to pass all their saving throws, the golems taking only half damage, while the remaining minions, who only take damage if they fail a saving throw, were able to skirt by unharmed. Which way are they going? They're splitting up somewhat. Many are heading out through the north door, which you are pretty sure leads back to the major hall you came from. But some are also going into the large doors on the east side. Splitting up is good. Splitting up is a big deal. Won't they come back with reserves? This is the reserve force. This is probably who they would be deploying against us. Yeah. Remind me not to touch things. Ever. I don't know. That's where all the fun comes from. Oh well, it was worth a shot. How awesome would it have been if we could have stolen that guy? TR4's head did warn you. The badges don't make the golems act like morons. Yep, we were warned. <clears throat> you can teleport down here. So if you're not going to fight them, you have a good minute to screw off. Yeah, I have would to blow my nose a lot. Go in. I'm just I like that. Know if I like going what badges? The <laughs> we had a good choice yep. point here. I yeah, I drew, I drew them in that, like, one scene, and then just, like, it's never again. They're just, they're just invisible badges now. To stone in, in stone form, that full heals me. As opposed to you just casting heal on yourself? But it's cool. So what <laughs> are you guys going to do? I'll find the path to the main reactor. Find the path is an extremely powerful level 6 divine spell. It's a divination that takes up a spell slot of the same level as heal. For 10 minutes per level, the spell tells me the most direct path to the chosen location. Find the path's pretty good. Reactor. Find the path to Alpha. It has to be a place, not a person. Right, that's why the main reactor. Why not the controller? That's sort of what I meant. They aren't necessarily in the same place. On reading Find the Path, the one thing you might have a problem with is it always gives the most direct path. It will include stuff like secret doors and how to open them. Wow. But it doesn't factor in safety. That's, That's fine. fine. At all. We're not worried about he danger. He says that because he's not in the lead. That's part of it, but also danger equals XP. So what did you decide on? Main power or control room? Control. That's where Alpha's got to be going. Based on previous experience, it's a good this guess. Is... 
This is such a good spell, but they, they didn't get what I meant. an obstacle when you come up to it, but it doesn't give it all in advance. For now, Black Spell just indicates the most direct path to the control room is through this door, so that's where they go. Once the last construct leaves the room, the blue glow fades. The party enters the space hesitantly, but nothing jumps out. The door's not locked from the inside. I'll take the lead. Can I rig the door to only open from the inside with my disabled device skill? You may have to do some stuff first, because when you open the door, two golems, some workers, and a sphere are waiting. After the crap they've been through, <laughs> I the sphere rolls up. up yes. They aren't exactly intimidated by the standard golems. Their only encounter with the sphere thus far was nasty, but also very brief, so they are a little wary of its capabilities. And with good reason. When the sphere attacks, the sphere rolling up reminds me of um, whatever I don't remember the name of the droids from the prequels, where they roll up and then they like yep. stand up and have the guns. Full attack, where each successive attack. The droid decals. With one attack against or dis each destroyers in using their highest attack or a bash in English or whatever that can be it is. A very effective move, but has a lot of prerequisites and can be tricky to hit more than a couple enemies since you generally can't move more than five feet before a full round action. Compare this to the sphere, which had a ten foot reach and could whirlwind attack as a standard. Oh, a little action, fire on this episode or something. Movement to get more targets in range. It did a good chunk of damage already. But any hits landed by the Atronium Golems, or even the workers, could add Polaron charges to the PCs, which the Sphere's attack would discharge for an extra 5 electrical so damage apiece. Man, it's a good thing my 9 charges from a minute ago dissipated since the last fight. At the bottom of the round, initiating energy dispersal. A curtain of blue energy from above washes down upon all of you. You each gain 1d4 Polaron charges. God damn it! We need to stop saying anything. Ever. Especially you. That would probably be wise. Wisdom's not really little one's strong suit, though. The sphere, which the Eternans call the slicing golem, can definitely cause a lot of damage, but overall, this is not even close to the threat level of either fight in the laser room. The slicing golem has the same hit points and damage reduction as the conducting golems, and though it moves around the heroes making no effort to avoid attacks of opportunity, those almost never hit because it rolls around as a solid armor sphere with plus 8 AC. That said, its normal AC, when it's actually fighting, is 4 points lower than those first guys, which means the party's powerful melee can very reliably beat it down, and their NPCs have a pretty good chance to contribute their own damage. So they take it out and wreck the rest of the trash, little one showing the Atronium Golems how he feels about the beatdown they gave him earlier, leaving them free to explore a little further. Emerging from security into the east-west tunnel, it's clear that the ramp upward would lead back to the arrow slits and the laser room. They don't know what they'd find if they continued down the tunnel to the west, but Black's find the path tells him that it's the door straight ahead of them which leads most directly to Polaron's control room. The door is locked. <laughs> sure. Angel begins working on the lock. Straight the ahead. The light courses around the edges of the door due to the ongoing security situation. Access to the atrium is currently denied. You find it harder to open than previous doors. Your first attempt fails. Oh yeah? I cast Knock. Knock is a level 2 arcane spell that pops open a chest or blows open a door. I don't... In the rules, there are actually a bunch of reasons this wouldn't work. It's not supposed to raise bars or port glisses. It's limited by the square footage of the door. Max 10 square feet per caster level. Knock being limited to the square footage of the door is so weird. door is more than double that. But the purpose of Knock is to open a locked door. It even suppresses the arcane lock spell, which is very similar to the controller's door focus ability. It seemed more fun and better for the narrative to allow Angel to use her spell if she wants to spend that resource but, instead but of spending. This is literally what Knock does. Just, just let her Loud knock. Bang. The energy field is dissipated and the door jolts into action, rising into the ceiling. Beyond it, the tunnel changes into a long, covered bridge of blue metal extending over a vast, deep chamber. A space shaped much like the main area of Ginneron, but doubled in every dimension. And instead of water, it's lava. Wow. I feel like we should have predicted this. <laughs> if it's underground, wouldn't it be magma? Why don't you go ask it? How hot is it in here? Seems fine. Unlike Ginneron's <laughs> open bridges, Polaron's walkways were covered and seemed to have some... I like the symmetry between these two facilities. The ...top and bottom, which blocked the heat, because the 20-foot-wide troughs of lava around every level of the atrium should have turned this enclosed space into an oven. Surroundings aside, though, there was another group of defenders approaching across the bridge. A couple more standard Etronian golems, a few workers, and something new, with another sphere close behind. The new type was covered in ice. 
Superficially, it looked like a big block, but it can't have been all one piece because it still had the range of motion to stomp towards them. The heroes still had some serious buffs they'd cast while waiting for the blistering radiance to expire. Zamora and Draven each recast something short term before the two groups collided. Make a spot check. I get 35. No. However, Little One does see something on the ceiling of the bridge. An invisible blue oh, metal hemisphere four feet across, creeping steadily... Never, never say that I don't reward him for there? having the ability to see Invis, because holy Fix. crap. Wow, that's... If Little One didn't see Invis, that could have completely screwed us. But even that knows Little One has seen see Invis all the time. I knew that. The Atarans didn't. Seemed like an awesome idea to them. Little One searing charges the invisible shield drone, and combined with a hasted volley of Draven's construct veined crossbow bolts, they drop the force field generator in record time, and the others hold their actions until its initiative passes and the shields go away. I hit the ice guy. What AC? What? Like 37. That's a miss. That's a miss? Your bull can't penetrate the armor through all that ablative ice, just chipping off a bit, leaving a web of cracks which start slowly freezing over. On its turn, it raises its arm and projects a cone of gold. I like the ah, I like the, I like the way back here? gun charging it's a cone. Gah! The walkway and all the heroes are blasted with ice, while the edges of the cone blasting out to either side of the bridge instantly sublimate into steam. It's an 11d6 cone, so not as powerful as the photonic lightning yeah, There's so many people that are still watching even though it's an unpleasant like a amount of bizarrely terrible an time for them. To work on the lesser enemies, where they felt they could do the most good. I've still got two more hours before midnight here. Whole group with an overrun attack. Anyone I will with sleep a and do it again. Attack of opportunity, but of course with plus 8 AC while moving, they all bounced off. Now, when an enemy tries to pass through your space with Overrun, you can either avoid it or try to stop its advance. Liz tries to block it, but is bowled over and knocked prone. Though, Dope. fortunately, Overrun takes a standard action. You so tried, Liz, you tried. can get behind them, but can't attack in the same turn. Raven hits the big one back with an orb of force, which bypasses the icy armor and does solid damage. Looks like he shot it in the crotch. Of the ice <laughs> that was the unfortunate. It goes down when you miss, and... Actually, on its turn, it regrew two ice points, so four AC. Back up to almost max. Huh. Ice things can either be strong against fire or weak against fire. True. It's very hard to metagame. Well, I'm gonna find out. I'll see Ring Flame in full attack with 3d6 plus 12 fire damage per hit. It's very fire resistant. This is actually the fire suppression system. The fire suppression system has a decent base AC of 26, but it builds up an icy shell based on shaped growth patterns, carefully engineered to form three-dimensional structures which preserve joint movement. It gains two sure. ice points per round, gaining plus two AC and fire resistance five per ice point until it reaches a maximum of seven points for plus 14 AC and 35 It's practices. not complicated at all, guys. It's just totally simple. Each time an attack against it misses, but it doesn't take much for it to build up or retain ten or more fire resistance. Are we getting combed again? No, it appears to have a cooldown. Yay! The Golem's Ice Saber does quite a lot of damage and has good enough to hit to reliably land one or two of its three attacks per round. Meanwhile, they've inflicted some damage on the Sphere behind sure, it, Ice but Saber. it has most of them somewhat pinned down because it has combat reflexes giving it multiple attacks of opportunity if anyone should move away. Now it Whirlwind attacks again, hitting most of them for a pile more damage, though at least they have very few Polaron charges for it to explode. Still, by now they have attacked and missed the fire suppression system enough to knock off most of its ice, so that now most of their attacks are hitting it, and the couple of misses which naturally occur just help knock it back down to its mid yeah, I don't know. I, each round. This means that I like the, the I like the idea of the the ice armor. I'm not sh I'm not sure the implementation is the best. The Maybe a little the party too to destroy that thing before its complicated and annoying. Its cone of cold would have been ready to cast again, and the battle was over not long after that. So much healing. It could have been a lot worse if we had to fight them for multiple rounds of shields before we could find the invisible generator. Could have been worse, says the guy who kept out of melee the whole time. Exactly. Black, you notice a problem, though. A problem? Without the fight to distract you, your find the path spell becomes top of mind for a moment, and you realize that it's telling you the most direct path to the control room is to jump off the bridge near the far end. Jump off? Like, into the lava? Not directly into the lava, but safety close. is and not a factor. Three hundred feet down. He said it doesn't care about safety. I wonder how bad it is out there. I'll stick my finger out the side of the bridge. Okay, you take six damage for a finger. It's hot. It's like a kiln. 
with only a thin energy shield between you and temperatures that could spontaneously ignite human hair. About I, I, I've had hair. people I arguing with me about like the the, the radiate how how heat radiates off lava, and you can stand next to lava and the kind of temperatures that can occur. I don't care. It's not, it's D and D lava. It's underground. Don't. Don't be near lava. <laughs> Just don't. For ways, I bet the most direct path will change. At the very least, we have a pretty good idea where the objective is. Maybe we'll find a better shortcut further down. Stepping over the smashed golems, they cross the bridge back into the tunnels around the exterior of the atrium. Passing another large door, they find a tunnel extending both Spent east and west. Spent a lot of west, time messing around making these maps. Leads into the living quarters of the Ataran personnel who once worked and researched in Polaroth. Though the apartments are more spacious, with much more extensive lounge areas than Ginneron, the story is similar. The inhabitants had plenty of time to leave taking their possessions with them and leaving little except some murals painted in the Ataran 2D style and smashed and cracked almost beyond recognition by hard, powerful fists. And they find a damaged golem face down in some kind of pool or fountain. So Alpha has been in here. I'll say. But it seems so irrational. Emotional. He's usually more... Emotionless. Emotionless my ass. Oh, he wants us to think that. But that guy is all pride and taunting. He's terrified of dying. He's a total fake who starts shit and runs away. Uh, that's true. I'm still not sure this was him. They do a lot of exploring. Polaron's layout, different but obviously similar to that of Ginneron, is mainly a so much time messing around with these maps and ramps downward periodically crisscrossing the cavernous lava-bound space of the atrium. Along the path there are numerous laboratories, all more or less cleaned out. Some have bits of equipment, wall and floor and ceiling hookups, all fragments of ancient Magitek Draven could spend days studying, but nothing of immediate interest or of noteworthy loot value. Down two levels, crossing perpendicular to the top bridge, then again parallel to it, they encounter no resistance for some time. The only signs of life are those odd flying golems dutifully stirring or sifting the troughs of lava. But then, as they round the bend approaching the next bridge, they spot an Itaran sign. And they see these from time to time, labeling various rooms. But despite the time Draven spent with GE7 translating old tomes, none of them reads Itaran at a glance. Not without spending a little time to translate or casting comprehend languages. But this is one word Draven does immediately recognize. Library. Library. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I no. forgot that was coming. It's no surprise that the library shelves would be empty or covered in the dust of long desiccated books. But a couple of bookcases have collapsed down into a gaping hole in the floor. The room is hot and peering down they're confronted with a painful curtain of superheated air. The chamber below, which looks like a second hidden library, appears to have suffered some breach, allowing molten magma to flood the lower level, with one of those hover drones crashed in the midst of it. What the hell happened? Alpha. He knows you like libraries. He was Temple One. <laughs> Unwilling to give up, they searched desperately for ass. anything that could be saved. Angel found the secret staircase down, not that it helped. They cast a fire-resistance spell on her, and she spider-climbed around the ceiling, searching for any other secrets, but if there had been any old preserved tomes, like that secret compartment they'd found in Ginneron, they had been <coughs> plundered already, or buried in orange-hot molten rock. Alright, let's go kill him. Across the next bridge, they ran into another group of defenders. This time he killed my library, and I will never forgive him. Where the golems engage them in the corner to attack from both sides. And the reach makes it tricky for the less agile party members to disengage back to a better choke point. But there are no new enemy types here, and they're handling it just fine when one of the hover drones from up above flies down across the void of the atrium. Okay. W wait, have we seen any of them do that? No, it's definitely different behavior, as is the psionic power it casts on you guys. Alpha. <laughs> this mysterious misbehaving magma sifter, Alpha, hits Angel, Black, and Little One with a will save. DC 19. Gah! Yeah, gah. I saved. Saved. I failed, but I'm gonna use the moment of perfect mind maneuver to re-roll. I passed! Okay, since you all saved uh, for half, you only get minus two to hit from Inflict Pain instead of minus four. That's it. 
I wouldn't have spent the maneuver on that. I thought he was going to mind control us. Even if you happen to be looking that way, instead of at the array of large machines attempting to cut you, you don't have spellcraft. You just feel the attack on your mind and react accordingly. Raven could identify it being cast, and Angel has a good chance to, but they can't tell you faster than it can hit you. So I have minus two on all my attacks, even though I saved? It's one of my favorite psionic powers, and it's only level two. You said that before. Probably. Problem solving really isn't your strong suit. Have you ever found a wall you didn't bash your heads against? The Dark Ancient, however, didn't stick around and join the fight. Next turn it continues flying down past them to a lower level, and even Little One wasn't quite ready to tumble out of the current fight in order to searing charge something that was certainly fire immune while it hovered outside of the heat shielding over a lake of molten lava. So the suspicious yeah. psionic the Magma Sifters are interesting because they're, they're not, they, they look different than stuff you normally see. They vaguely remind me of like the helicopters from Terminator 2. Or Terminator 1, I guess. Yeah. It lasts like two hours. But whenever they crossed the atrium, it always pointed dangerously down into the north. The rest of the time, it tended to suggest the tunnels they were following. And as no yet, comment, no Eric. Other, <laughs> other than jumping across the lava. The large two entrance room from which the golems had ambushed them was the first one they'd found which was full of untouched equipment. Draven poured over it and quickly Ooh, determined equipment. that a small section of it was very similar to the water purification room from Ginneron. The rest was quite different, but there were some echoes of the same... It's almost like a purification system for the lava. For the lava? Yes, you want to smash it. No, my default is not to smash anything full of lava. I want to believe that. <laughs> it's a hell of a lot of So they decided to rest and regain spells, opening up an invisible rope trick portal near the ceiling where they could peer down upon uh. the intersection between the bridge and the two entrances of purification, giving them sight lines through a good part of the atrium and also partway down the ramp. These golems really aren't very good at security. So I'm worried about Rainbow Dash up there. Can we just teleport her back to Vistria? We have an eye. You can't teleport something away from you. Somebody would have to go along, and if they're going to come back, that would take two eyes, doing that link thing. Right. I don't think we can justify spending Eldritch Eyes to send her away. Laura can cast Teleport if she has to. Yeah, but she's a good caster. We can still use her. Why can't we use Rainbow Dash anyway? She can trample all the little bots. She couldn't fit down the one set of stairs. She couldn't fit down the way you went, down the back way to the security room, but the main hallway was golem yeah, size. There, there may have been a miscommunication there. Oh, that's right. Well, then why did we... What I, the hell? I should have... I it. probably should have reminded them back. when they went back we'll into the main passage. And spells. You guys do that. I'm getting my mount back. I'll go with them. That's still splitting the party. The party. Any spells? I need Rainbow Dash. We'll be <laughs> fine. So, they are dead. Little One and Angel make their way back up the path, up the bridges, saving the gnomes' invisibility this and is, silence. This is one of the places that is totally big enough for Rainbow Dash, no problem. the hovering magma sifters with a lot more suspicion now, they get back to the site of the bridge battle without trouble. You notice there should be more golem bodies than you're seeing mm. here. They're being repaired. Notably, the fire suppression one is gone, as is half of the body of the round slicing golem. Ah, that's bullshit. Just the other half down the f lava. No, no. When we take over this place, this place, we'll have a golem army. Yeah, <laughs> that said, there's something to be said for delaying them. Don't throw them in the lava, but we could always smash them up a bit more. Although, you guys don't want to create any noise right now. Not while we're split up. Given the amount of trouble they've had in this area, Angel casts invisibility on the two of them, and they pass through the door towards the entrance of security. From here, the leveled off tunnel segment with the arrow slits obstructs the view up the tunnel to the laser room, but it's pretty clear this main tunnel must indeed join up with the spot where they left Rainbow Dash. So they head back up to that spot. Damn it! Son of a. There's no body either, so that's good news. Did you forget where you parked? Where the hell's my horse? They quickly look all around the laser room, where Dude, the where's my mount? walled off, as well as the entryway and temple. Angel even running up the wall for a quick check outside, though there should really be no way Rainbow Dash could get up there on her own. They find no sign of her though, and most of the smashed golem and worker bodies are still there. If they killed, if they hurt Rainbow Dash, are there any tracks? It's a pretty heavy duty haul. The golems don't scuff it up. Do you have any tracking ability? I have a scent stance. The scent ability alone, without the track feed, doesn't automatically let you follow a trail, but 
this isn't a trackless jungle or a wide open plane. The track really feet's kind of an annoying thing. They need to. Part of the facility. The Indy needs to just like get. I guess the Indy mostly has gotten rid of that. I think and they just like they're like eh, survival skill includes tracking or something like that. Security, but not further down the tunnel, nor back towards the bridges of the atrium. Rainbow Dash has a distinctive scent. Smells strongly of horse, but a little spicy. A little something on the side, a little dash. Angel had done a quick job rigging the door, trying to jam it. It still shows signs of your tampering, but it has been repaired enough to open. Damn, they work fast. So, you going to reopen the door to security? Yeah, I guess. This is the big security room where I tried to grab the ball. Didn't go so well. But we've got eight hours before the others have their spells back. There's definitely Rent talk, you've been going for. Before, but there are a dozen workers. Any balls? About 13 hours no now. Golems, and you don't see any shield domes either, but three of the regular golems. As long as they don't attack us, we don't attack them. Are they attacking? No, they're not moving. I learned my lesson. Don't touch anything in this room. Nothing tries to kill you, theoretically. And the sin? Rainbow Dash had definitely been in the room. From here, there was a small door on each side, including the western one they had entered from before, but the huge mount clearly wouldn't fit through them. That left two more large doors on the eastern side of the security chamber. We'll try one of those. This door isn't being nice and opening. <laughs> yeah, Polaron is indeed a long arc. the 20-foot wide door into sliding upward, they indeed find Rainbow Dash. But she's being pinned to the wall by the gentle but unwavering application of the monolithic shields of two conducting golems. As soon as we see her in here, we should shut the door, lock it, get help. The first thing we should do is get on Rainbow Dash and ride her back to the others. The two golems are facing away, but Rainbow Dash can smell the guys and is getting a little excited. Moving into the room, <laughs> Angel shuts the door and starts trying to disable it. If you want it disabled such that you can open it, but hopefully they won't be able to easily override it, it's going to take time, like a minute. You could take minus 20 to do it much faster, but based on your experience so far, you're very unlikely to succeed with minus 20. Yeah, no. While she's doing that, I activate my ring of army. Uh, Dylan, to help you. theoretically, to because Rainbow Dash is properly. huge, so she ought to be 3x3 three three squares. I usually make her 3x2 squares on the battle map whenever quickly, possible, even though D&D sure D &D normally doesn't like that kind of asymmetry. She figures she can sort just like, that it just makes more sense. So, even though there are no rules for turning. Floods down around the borders of the door. Intruder mm -hmm. alert. Intruder mm -hmm. alert. The golems are alert. Oh, shut up, Controller. Around, they Nobody likes you. They can see the invisible intruders. So it's Rainbow Dash who, sensing a change in the situation, acts first. Her kick-kick-bite attack routine only hits once, though, and the golem resists most of the 15 damage. I've got to teach her Elder Mountain Hammer. That's probably a little beyond, but if I get her to the Helm of Intelligence, can I teach her, like, level 1 stuff? Presumably. There's time investment and such, but... Cool. I mean, hex maps are good in general, although I don't know how the, opener. I don't know how you handle the size of things in D&D that are larger than goes on one square. Miss two out of three attacks hex. with Searing Blade in the next round. Angel tries to get one of the golems out of the way using the low-level, non-damaging version of Little One's throw maneuver, but despite the bonuses she gets, the golem wins the role and her attacks like the next round misses two by two. well. They have AC 32? These Just guys are a higher priority on the repair list. Rainbow Dash isn't having much better luck, only getting another 2 damage past their damage reduction of 10. Meanwhile, the golems are hitting them back reliably, which is reasonable <laughs> based on their stats, Just getting but also scored two back and forth. crits on Little One while knocking both Ow. of them around the room with their free bull rush on hit. <laughs> Fortunately, they don't have a death laser to knock you into. Not a very auspicious start. You two can't die, because me and Draven already discussed that. Yes, it would be really inconvenient, because we wouldn't even know you were dead. How long do we wait? I told you before we went, if we aren't back in eight hours, assume we're dead. Rainbow Dash tries a bull rush of her own to get out from against the wall, but she rolls a one. On the plus side, They've shown no sign of attacking her yet, even though she has dealt some damage. You need to turn invisible and get out of here. They're not going to hurt Rainbow Dash. They're going to hurt me. That's what I'm saying. Get out. I can jump on the roof and run. They can reach the roof. I'll tumble on the roof. No, just cast and fizz and get away. I've got a plan. Don't worry, guys. All right. I trust you. I've still got 100 hit points. I have 80. Don't get me wrong. It's getting hairy, but I have a couple tricks up my sleeve. That's when the door opens, and suddenly the fight includes three more golems and yeah. a dozen workers. Angel bolts out along the ceiling, as he'd asked, but this is what little one was waiting for. Now I can ballista throw one of these shield guys into the others and ride Rainbow Dash through the lot of them. 
Ow. Damn it, why can't you just give me my horse back? Can't you tumble through? I could manage, but that's another 30-some damage, and they're going to do some damage on the way out. Unfortunately, the facility... So he I have to make the, the facility act smart. Patch, taking out two-thirds of the workers, then tumbles and moves after it, barely making his tumbling checks, despite how easy those checks should be for him. Try to stay within 30 feet of me. The remaining golems keep after him, but as long as they move more than five feet, they only get one attack per round instead of two. The conducting golems, the ones with the big shields, don't leave the room, focusing on holding back Rainbow Dash, who is rearing to follow. One of the surviving stabby workers gets lucky and hits the little one for another nine damage in a charge. Ow! Angel From a worker? The the gnome hype Damn control it. And opens the outer door, and little one attacks the nearest golem with a rallying strike maneuver to heal him and Angel for 3d6 plus his initiator level each... But misses by one. Ugh. God damn it! I just want my f***ing horse. I'll kill you all. Kill you all. I'm getting a little salty. Minions shoot little one for even more charges, but all the golems manage to miss him this time, and there doesn't seem to be wow. anything around that can expend the charges. Little one runs through the door just as it closes again, and I jump and mountain hammer my sword into the door to jam it, trying to bang it out of shape a bit, or actually leaving your sword in there. Yeah, leaving it. We can recover it when we come back for Rainbow Dash. The sword from Marp? Hey, I love that sword, but it's not my primary weapon anymore. It'll still be here. Damn it, all I wanted was to get the f***ing horse. Didn't want to fight these guys again, but they were just lacing into me. You did walk into security again. Yeah, but I didn't want to fight them, just wanted to throw one out. You took out a bunch of the small ones. Whoa, that'll show them. They'll be back in action in, like, minutes. Weren't you just mocking the security effectiveness of golems a minute ago? I do recall that. Well, yeah, when we fight them as a team, they kept going, dashing down the hall toward the atrium, but already in the me feel the bad, but, like, squeezing under the I, I feel like them, this behavior was reasonable. And repair it. Smash, smash. This is as you're leaving. You're going back for that? Uh, all right. They're going to take your sword. I'll get it back. You realize everything that moves in this place is going to die. The person who has a problem with He's that is so mad. probably Draven. I'm gonna melt down this whole place if I can. Let's just take over the whole place so that we order around the robot. Uh, that that solved, could be used in evidence against him. Back to the other safely as long as you Later. exercise caution. Yeah, we don't want to fight anything. Angel exercises caution by accident. So you return to the portal, beaten and bloody, climbing up the rope they let down. All right, we found the horse. Rescue didn't go so well. We haven't even settled into bed yet. I'm still nursing my cocoa. This time, the whole party holds up as they complete an eight-hour rest to regain all their spells so they can heal and buff and set out again at their full fighting strength. Those without spells split the watches, but the only event was when one of the sphere golems rolled past beneath them and swiftly down the ramp. For all we know, that could have been Alpha that just rolled down the hall. Could have been. I'm going to have to cast Find the Path again. Not necessarily. We clearly know where the control room is. That hasn't changed as we've worked our way around. Unless you think there might be more information, secret doors or whatever. Those level 6 cleric castings are really valuable. Right. So, where do you guys want to go? Follow the sphere? We're going to get f***ing Rainbow Follow the Dash. bouncing ball? Oh, right, they still have her. <laughs> the have a lot of Oh, right, they still have ass. her. They are going to level up. I don't think it works that way. They learned Bane half Dragon. The atrium remained a gigantic chamber, ringed by wide troughs of molten rock at every level. But by now they're used to it. Like... And eh, whatever. Is my sword in the yeah, door anymore? place is boring already. Nope. Let's get out of here. There's still some damage where it had been. It hasn't been repaired that much, but they removed the sword and cut off any twisted metal that was stopping it from opening. Graven casts Bane Construct on all their important weapons, and Angel opens the now familiar door and finds the main room of security empty. Kind of thought that would happen. Well, Rainbow Dash was in a side room. In there, they find only one golem guarding Rainbow Dash, who has now been chained up. Not tight or cruel chains, but she doesn't have enough slack to fight back anymore. Hope they've been feeding her, or at least giving her water. They tried giving her electricity, but she didn't like it. Alpha strike his mother. Angel and Little One could have easily handled a single goal. With the whole extended party, they make short work of it, especially as Little One lands Elder Mountain Hammer with crazy damage roll of 56. What if you do Newborn Mountain Hammer? Just does one damage, but ignores DR. Is my sword in here? Actually, it is. I pick it up and hack the chains apart. I already unlocked them. I hack the chains apart. <laughs> after she undoes them all like a ninja. Then I walk over to the golem and shove the chains up its ass. And if it doesn't have an ass, I make it one. The little one makes it an ass. Just carves out an ass. All right, Kendall. Yeah, you give give it some sweet it curves. Married. They feed Rainbow Dash. You seem pretty hungry. There's an outside chance there isn't any food around here, though she had been given water. He was mad. Metabolically, she could go, like, 
three weeks without food before it became a real problem, if she had to. But they didn't kill the horse. They actually wanted to save the horse. Well, we know Etarns liked knowledge and shit. The controller was probably like, we'll hold this specimen until somebody comes along to study it. Just keep her till she starves. Maybe they'd have eventually built a machine to make food? Who knows? You aren't sure how much ability this place has to make new stuff. They head back down, past the living quarters, past the library, past the empty boring labs, and they are still not inclined to investigate the steam pipe, lava pipe room. They continue on down the ramp, but shortly after turning the corner, Angel notices a secret door facing away from the atrium. Some effort has gone into hiding it, but between how skilled you are in general and the amount of experience you are getting with the way these guys hide doors... Yep, there's something here. With Mora dedicated to just I'm walking sure not up important. the ramp so they don't get bowled by a slicing golem, our Whisper Gnome finds no traps on a modified roll of 36. So she proceeds to open the door. Okay, make a reflex save. Really? <laughs> Yep, Angel, make a reflex save. 23? You almost dropped the <laughs> Just lock messing. Tape, but you managed to hide it from the rest of them. Wait, so there's no trap? You don't see anything. Behind the door is another door. It's a dead. No, I'm not kidding. So much messing with This door with him, is much less hidden. It looks like a very heavy-duty gate with red and yellow hazard stripes. That's not good. <laughs> Next time on Tales from My D&D Campaign. Uh, next time on a door? Man. Thank you to the organization! But, but what's please. in the door? <laughs> yeah. I should have been calling out the organization in the previous ones. I didn't think of it. Now for Straight Mother. <laughs> I'll tumble across Perfectly. the ceiling to flank it. Angel does the exorcist crab roll on the ceiling. Do not do that. I will kill you. You know what Angel needs to complete her persona? Become a vampire. <laughs> Let's make a deal. If one of us <laughs> becomes a vampire, you have to bite the rest of us. I don't want to be a vampire. Okay? You can be our thrall then. <laughs> oh no, the terrible curse of being a vampire. Whatever will we do? <laughs> yeah. Make a D and D they setting where, like, D &D all the like powers D &D. everyone gets, like, are just from curses. Really? They all have drawbacks, but people are just trying to just get more curses and become Ever. more powerful. I don't know. That's where all the fun comes from. I'll find the path to control. That's where Alpha's got to be going. It's telling you the most direct path to the control room is to jump off the bridge near the far end. Jump off? Like, into the lava? Not directly into the lava, but pretty close. And more than 300 feet down. He said it doesn't care about safety. Maybe we'll find a better shortcut further down. Problem solving really isn't your strong suit. Have you ever found a wall you didn't bash your heads against? Angel notices a secret door facing away from the atrium. Behind the door is... Another, another door. Another door. No, I'm not kidding. This door is much less hidden. It looks like a Little one doesn't bash his head into doors. He bashes his strengths. weapons into doors, That's and the doors guy. die. Interestingly, yeah, or just this punches door them. opens from the middle, where every other one is opened upward. Watch, door this meet fist. Go ahead and open it. I'm back 50 feet, out of the path of hypothetical lava. I'll try to sound it out. Not don't worry, there's no lava there behind this open door. Space behind the door. So you don't, it's literally filled with lava. I get a 42 to open it. You succeed, but this one was significantly tougher than the first, and you didn't beat it by all that much. After loud unlocking sounds, it powers open, revealing a 10-foot space, then another door. <laughs> Does it have any warning signs on it? Same hazard stripes as the first one, though this one opens horizontally. Should we actually be opening these doors? Three doors? I'm getting out my Geiger counter. Actually, Angel can hear faint voices from the other side, very muffled by the outer door, but it's not airtight. No talking, open the door. The only voices, only thing we've heard talking in here is Alpha. There is a familiar voice. I know you probably aren't very happy with the creators, but if you think about it, it wasn't all their fault. 
I'm dead. I've got Zeldegrius full on angel. I get plus 2d6 damage against large creatures, and more if they're bigger? From now on, every fight, casting that on you. Like, <laughs> all the time. As long as you have time to prepare. It was Itaru who showed them the path, encouraged them, and then abandoned them just when they needed wisdom and guidance the most. Like handing a loaded crossbow, loaded crossbow to, to, a, to toddler. a toddler. Open the door, open the door. Yeah. <laughs> we're going, we're going. <laughs> Alpha, so bad. Alpha, 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 alpha. Guys, it's very weird. When you start trying to open <laughs> Thank the door, you, Liz. the personnel may not enter the open spot without appropriate protective clothing. Over at the side, a little four foot high door opens up. In the gnome sized closet are six hooks, five of them empty. The remaining one has a heavy hooded overcoat with some odd bits, pipes, etc. Raven's pretty sure it's magical. Forget the coat. I'm taking the coat. Just open the door, I'll smack them. <laughs> Are there any knowledge rolls to know what this is? You could do Knowledge Arcana, or Draven can easily concentrate and figure it out, but that takes like a minute. Yeah, not right now. Open the door. 28? That doesn't <laughs> cut it. Personnel may not enter the open slot without appropriate protective clothing. I cast not. That'll do it. <laughs> Warning, a breach has occurred within the Eldritch Lab. Personnel should evacuate immediately. You hear sounds from within. A pipe <laughs> Eldritch Lab, the that's not good. Escaping gases. <laughs> we just broke it. We just broke it. Like the last f***ing place? I'm pretty sure opening the door didn't break anything. No, it's what we're going to do next. Charge into the room. It's a large room, though relatively poorly They're lit. so the bad. The hall is flanked by cylinders. Tubes like they'd seen in the various labs in Ginneron. Could I ready a spell? Sure. You have lots of time. When Alpha starts talking, I'm going to, like, hit him. What if it's just a hologram? He did have a hologram sort of thing going on outside. We're not going to wait around for a conversation. I'm just going to hit him. Oh, yeah. We're charging into the room, and we're going to hit him. There's no effing around. Oh, man. Jim's going to taunt us. He's probably not even here. Why are we even after Alpha again? You're pretty sure he's not good. This is the same guy who got you all irradiated at Ginneron. As they pass the tubes, two of them have more gibbering mouth or stuff. Oh, that's, them. that's a good Eyes sign. And nasty mouth, suspended in goo like they had seen in Ginneron. They either don't die of old age or they've been breeding or something. These two just have two and a half to three feet of dirt or dried mud. He's talking to some kind of aberration thing. Mora casts haste. Where's Alpha? This one is empty, not broken, just empty. And this one has a beholder. I'm describing the room, damn it. Blue liquid. Oh. It's clearly dead, with a big eye missing, and actually the eye socks are floating limp with no eyes either. Where's Alpha? The room goes further in, but your view is obscured by a destroyed fire suppression golem body here, along with one of the Describing the room is not trolling him, okay? It's describing the room. As they move to peer around the blockade, they see two large metal cones near the far wall. Each cone tapers upward, then there's a little gap, a These are weird. weird structure on the ceiling, like a cluster of spheres just slightly overlapping each other. One has some nasty, sinewy flesh stretched up to the top. I don't understand any of this. Where's Alpha? You don't see him yet. Alpha! But you still hear him talking to something. Yes, they managed to kill themselves off. No Atarans remain, but they're artificing. The knowledge that led them to this. That legacy survives. It has taken root among the other children of Ataru, the dwarves, now even humans. If you want revenge on that bastard god, I would focus on them. <laughs> I don't know what discussion you think you're having, but I'm running in there trying to find him. I'm putting on the suit. It would have to replace your armor. It counts as a non-metallic chain shirt. Okay, maybe not then. Instead, I cast minor image and drop an image of someone wearing the suit. If the creature saw Itarans, they would have been wearing the suit. He's trying to tell if they're all dead, and there's one standing right there. <laughs> there's some kind of reaction. That's a pretty good idea. You'll be like, he lied to me. You're fooling with my head like they did. It may not go berserk. Oh, it's going berserk. But maybe not on Alpha's side. I don't know, but it's a cool idea. Yeah, I like it. I don't expect it'll work, but the opportunity cost is very low. I'll take cover behind this junk. If you're on the ground here, you have pretty good cover. You guys can get over the debris, but it takes some effort. With haste, I'm moving at 50. Charge! We still have those one-shot dimensional anchor daggers from the Adar place. We need to dimensional anchor his ass to the floor. Yeah, bad luck with so these things. 
Not sure that would work. His ability works kind of differently. It may not stop him from transferring, but it would stop him from actually teleporting away. I put the illusionary turn over here, on top of the wreck. Ahem. You do seem rather weak, but they carelessly left this blood in security. How long has it been since you tasted life? Yes, you like that. This taste. Blood of a dragon. If you say so, you say the rest so. of it is waiting out in the hall. You can get your blood back. It is a vampire. Hey, this is Angel's chance. Don't care, I'm charging in. Okay, roll initiative. I like that the Dark the Angel thing is going doesn't know or care about it's their, fair, like, fair, dragon fair, thing, like, whatever. Is going on a nine. The Dark Angel? He doesn't have a name? He probably does, but he's never given one. I told you it was a vampire. <laughs> it looks a lot like six Beholder eye stocks, but these eyes was, are each Thank you, Black. That was a very Futurama-like line. Beholder. Oh my god, they made a mutant Beholder? Look, it's really hard to farm Eldritch eyes when they double as anti-magic eyes. But the little eyes didn't have enough energy to count, so... This self-levitating abomination was already a large orb crowned by many spell-casting eye stocks. Now... Altered by bizarre arcane processes, then imprisoned in that cone, its eyes trapped in the dark, its eye stalks all stretched out, unable to do anything for something like a thousand years, its aggressive nature does not appear to have been mellowed by the passage of time. Beholders are f***ing terrible. It can't be that bad. It's a mutant. But it should be pissed at Alpha. There's an Atard standing right there. I've got news for you. Is it going to be more pissed at the lie, the lie or at the Atard? Or the Atard. Well... A race streaks right over here. Wow! <laughs> he never had any real chance to hit Draven. Aimed at the fake Ataran, and with our artificer in almost complete cover against it. But the petrification race streaks by too close for comfort, slightly stonifying a section of metal wall. That was one eye. It gets to use three. Another ray goes over your head. This one not as close. And these cylinders are shattered by its telekinesis. That was it. I positioned them in the right place when drawing out the map. I'm a genius! Angel gets two attacks of opportunity against the gibbering mouthers as they emerge from the nearest tube. Their AC is garbage. I rolled a one. Okay, you managed to miss that one. With the not one attack, one Angel one. hits one of these lesser abominations for like 20, and though it resists a little bit of the damage, it's bloodied by the hit. Would it be smart to turn myself to stone with stone <laughs> form? I'm sure he could still disintegrate me. Speaking of... Here's the thing. The mutation affected how its disintegrate eye works. So it starts to beam here and sweeps it across, disintegrating some of the ground under the illusion. It wanted more than one shot, but now it's pretty sure it's not a real thing. It does disintegrate its damage, but spread over the area. 12d6, fort 17 for half. Did you say 12d6? That's half the damage from a disintegrate spell. It's normally 24d6 if you fail your save, but this is save for half instead. He deals 46. I save, so 23, but I reduce it by 8 with my amulet, so 50. Amulet. So it's weaker, but also stronger? It's just different. Angel yeah, puts herself the, the, in position to cover the NPCs with her They, they did a lot of science. On the things when they move, and a lot of their science was maybe not the greatest. So what do we do? Like, attack the eyeball thing? Or ethically? Out? Which one's the priority? I think the beholder is It was so science-y. Beholder is definitely more dangerous. It's Mora's turn. She got a fireball or something? She's a bard. I don't know, I'm asking. Firebard. She's got a crossbow. She can attack I think 5e e bards may actually have fireball, the right? Mouthers, finding their they have pretty good the only 19 mix of arcane and divine spells. Anything else in and they're full casters. Place. Should I fireball those things? With Liz and Rainbow Dash, they ought to be able to take them out. If it's using rays, there's no anti-magic cone right now. If there was anti-magic going on... You'd know it. So Draven wands the mutant beholder for a bunch of damage, but next is the Dark Ancient, currently flying a magma sifter. Assuming he's real, looks pretty physical. The Temple One hologram with Gamma was blatantly illusionary. The possessed magma sifter hovers up closer to the ceiling, peeking around but still using the metal cone for cover, and the Dark Ancient drops a psionic area dispel on the forward members of the party. Alright, I changed my mind. Screw the Beholder. If you focus the Dark Ancient, he's been pretty adamant about jumping out of bodies before he takes much damage. You may get him to take himself out of the fight. Black, how many buffs do you have? Oh man, all my buffs. Well, it's an area dispel, so it can only get one buff per target. If it was single target, it would genuinely try against each buff separately. Because this is, instead, an area dispel, 
it's a pain to adjudicate, but on each target, the dispel keeps rolling, keeps trying until it gets one, or has tried and failed against each of that target's buffs. When it does succeed at a dispel check, it removes that single buff, then stops moving on to the next target. And we are treating temporary weapon buffs, like when Draven banes their weapons, as a buff on that character, it's, because it creates fewer rules and It's so much better for game balance if you just treat it as a buff on, on the character, keep haste, even though it's technically on the weapon. And on Draven, what, I'm in the thing? On Draven, it dispels your fly spell. Okay, I can live with that. Then it casts another psionic power and disappears, with Draven's phenomenal spellcraft and we treat psionics just as any other type of magic, he determines that the enemy had cast Dimension Hop, a level 1 swift Dimension Door type of thing, which would teleport at a short distance, certainly still inside the room. See, so this was, I like this was an interesting man. problem for them. Stuck. Depends on your definition. But he's phased. What color eyes did Alpha have? Well, Magma Sifters don't really have eyes, but this is the Dark Ancient with the red eyes. Where'd he go? You can't see what his destination was. This place doesn't have TR-4's detector. Of course, he can't see what's going on either. He had to choose the spot now, at casting time, but he's phased for three I mean, the, turns. The controller should know right, where three turns the teleporting being is arriving, but it doesn't it? broadcast it more to the entire area like TR-4's thing side. did. Huh? The limit on how many eyes a beholder can use at the same time is based on 90 degree arcs. If you spread out too much, it can use three in one arc and use another three on anyone who has moved into a different fire arc. Let's not do that. Is this thing mobile? As far as you can tell, it's still trapped in this cone thing, which doesn't look particularly mobile, at least for now. It's obviously designed to contain the monster, but you can't tell how much damage has been done to the other side. I'll charge it. Well move and attack it. Don't know how well this is going to work because it probably has a I don't know if this is the most save, interesting fight ever, but it was an interesting well, idea. 16? Well, there's no DR. Thank God. Yeah, first thing we fought in forever with no DR. Kind of surprised with the can. I'm treating the cone more as armor, even though that's not what it was intended for. Nope. It failed its save. Your maneuver shocks its nervous system or chi or whatever. Right, that's gonna it, it goddamn can't help. any actions for one round. Whoa. Jeez. I hit for 20. I could spend the belt of battle for another three hits. Uh, save that for Alpha, because we have a free round of licks on this guy. Right, right. Liz, who is outside of the dispel and still has her haste, decides she's better off switching to punishing stance and full attacking rather than using a maneuver, trading defense for more damage. She finishes off one of the gibbering mouthers, then hits another for 18, then rolls a one. But she killed one anyway. One down. Mutant Beholder misses his turn due to the disrupting blow. One of the Mouthers tried to shoot some credit Angel, but she dodges the ranged touch attack. Another moves up, eating another free attack from her. But instead of attacking, the Abomination used some Eldritch power to transform the. The Mouthers have such weird ass sand. abilities. Nice dance? Um, no, this is much worse than difficult terrain. It's a bizarre supernatural ability. You'll have to suck it up and move out. While in the quicksand, you have to spend a move action each turn to avoid being pinned. The third surviving Lothar hits you with a ranged touch attack. DC yeah, there is. I, mean, I had a map error at Man. some point here Funny where there were two Liz's. I didn't CR5 notice. Monsters have a tougher save DC than the Beholder. Most of Stone's a fortitude save, right? Combat, <laughs> combat maps are a pain <laughs> in the ass. Like, they look so simple, but not big there's so much effort versus. that goes into two trying to figure out where people were because I didn't but have, like, pictures of every over the broken phase of the battle and stuff like that. It's a mess. I know why not. I rolled a one. You're so lucky. These guys have like six special things. You guys uh, are just de facto immune to most of them. Enemies have definitely saved against little ones disrupting blow before hierarch. Uh, but he has a pretty good success rate. I think Alpha is going to appear somewhere over here and try to escape because he's a chicken shit. Or a mastermind who doesn't fight people like you if he can have someone else do it for him. Mora only gets two attacks now, having lost haste. She shoots him out there for 11, then misses, rolling another natural one. I forgot so many their ones. special abomination power to make the players roll ones. I could attack this thing, but I don't like getting spittled at. Don't you think it would be funnier if you'd been blinded? No. I'll wonder force the beholder. Take 41. It's pretty badly beat up now. There are holes and gashes all over your side of the cone, 
and no small amount of blood spatter. Good. Then I duck some more. Little one hits the eyes look like my eyes at this point. 32 damage. Then Black bashes it for 14, then 20, then kicks it for 10 with the extra attack of his helm, and then rends it for an extra seven from his rending gauntlet. I like the shit how the eyes are shaking separately from the cone. Very dead. The question is, which one of its eyes goes off? It wasn't really a question, though. One bloated mutant eye stock explodes in a big disintegration blast for 43 damage. 42 for half. And it was another amulet charge. So it did do damage to me. Then you do damage back to it after it's dead. The eye's explosion also flings the other five eyes around the room. I know he's going to be around here or something. Watch him show up and explode the eyes. I'd be very unhappy. We're both hasted. Black and I can grab them. Should we feel bad for this thing? I almost feel bad yeah, for the, it now. The, the older anti-magic eye is so annoying that aren't the happiest uh, things I think this change is definitely make it less threatening, is which is probably better off dead. Which so I was totally fine with. obliterated the mutant beholder before it could do hardly anything. Half the mouthers are still alive and spinning up a storm. I would have liked if it had not gotten ability. like this saves one actually misses disrupting mode, mode though. Touch attack. That was awesome. But hits Angel Fort 18. No. Angel's blinded for 3 rounds. Now she can't hit him with the Dimensional Anchor Dagger when he shows up. Mora also gets blinded for two rounds, so she puts away her crossbow, gets under violin, and starts playing to inspire greatness and Draven with her bard abilities. And somehow, even blinded, Angel hits two out of three attacks, finishing a mouther and okay. almost killing another one. You should blind yourself more often. Can Rainbow Dash trample those damn things? No, there's still supernatural quicksand all around them. Rainbow Dash just kicks them, rolling terrible for damage, but by now, all remaining gibbering mouthers are near death, and the Dark Ancient is due to pop out of teleportation limbo any time now. I guess I'll ready my action for Alpha to reappear. You can dimensional anchor him with one of the daggers. I'm not really close enough. You could throw it. What's the range increment on a dagger? Draven can do a charge attack. Mora's giving you extra hit points. <laughs> yeah, Draven can do a charge attack. Me and Black. Hmm. Tough decision. What was his strategy here? He probably expected the monster to last longer. He probably assumed it would yeah, Some of us expected of the us. monster to last he had longer. a lot of things that could take people out of the fight if it hadn't lost an entire turn. Now, technically, all fight we should have been rolling for the Mouther's confusion aura. The save DC is low enough that it wasn't worth the massive amount of bookkeeping, but we're gonna roll for it now because this is the round it's most likely to matter. You two, Black, how far does it go? 60 foot radius. Holy crap! Despite the moment of concern, everyone saves against the paltry DC-13. Except Rainbow Dash, who is confused into inaction for her next turn. Oh no. Still blind, Angel hits again, rolling near max damage and killing the mouther. Eyes and teeth and flesh spattering all over the place. She's like a blender walking around. Black and Little One have been rushing around, hasted, collecting the Beholder's eyes, hoping to use them as spell components for teleportation. Now, Little One retrieves the last two orbs, while Black readies an action, and each of them stakes out a different corner of the room, since they don't know where the possessed Magma Sifter will reappear. So they're all ready when the third round ticks down, and it reappears... here. Oh, what? Right back where he was? Yes, he bluffed you all, because he thinks he's way smarter he's than smart. you guys. I expected better from that thing. That's what I get for counting on worthless biologicals. Dagger him. Oh well. I've got to go. You know how it is. Places to be. Continents to devastate. I think dagger him. Dagger him. Who's got the Continents? dagger? I do? Seems so. It's going to be pretty hard because of the cone in the way. This is the time to roll that 20. Or not. Clank, clank, clank. I have a ready action though. I charge him. Oh. That's not going to hit, is it? You charge over and just as he disappears, you smash a huge dent in the wall. The Dark Ancient doesn't even notice this shockingly dangerous dagger attack, which could have trapped him in the room with them. And he dimension doors just as they predicted. Good thing you grabbed all the eyes, though. He would totally have flown over and landed on some first. Son of a b That jerk. Damn it. <laughs> I think I can piss them off by telling them things would it would have done that never here. actually happened. That's and loot. They mop up the last of the mouthers, then once they peek out into the main hall and find no sign of the Dark Ancient, they take a quick breather to do some minor healing and to identify the coat. The gnome-sized handler's gear counts as a non-metallic chain shirt plus three, so just slightly less AC than the basic plus four chain shirt Angel had Draven craft for her, but this suit also grants fire resistance 12 
plus three to saving throws versus abilities or spells of abominations. That would have been good and in that room. Bane no, abominations to any weapons or unarmed attacks wielded by the wearer. Sweet! Also, once per day as a free action, it can give the wearer 1d4 plus two polarot charges. Wait. To the wearer? Yep. And you control it. Yes, it's a free action by the wearer. Why would you want to give yourself charges? However, searching around the ruined Eldritch Lab, they discovered another magic item. It's an inanimate carbon rod! The Catalytic Polarizing <laughs> Reconstructor is a rod with a range of 60 feet. As a oh, action, Simpsons it jokes. It converts all Polaron charges on a single them. target into healing at a rate of 1d6 per charge. Like maximum 40 healing something now. 1d6 per activation. Gonna like, my friends and I, we're going to be like 60, removed, 80. Dude, well, I guess Simpsons fine. jokes from like with the 90s. Charges. Interesting. I mean, I still can't hear the word default without going into the default chant. <laughs> I wonder if things like this are how they are repairing the gold so fast. They're just sitting around giving each other charges? Possibly. They are now close to the bottom of the atrium. Seems strangely they inappropriate. The corner after the Eldritch Lab's hidden door into yet another covered bridge. This is not actually the bottom bridge, though. There's one more that you can't see on the map because it's directly below the top bridge. A little stubby one leading across to the dome in the center of the artificial lake of lava at the base of the facility. But this is the last full-length bridge. The last one before the core. What lies in the deepest levels of Polaron? Next time on Tales from My D&D Campaign. That's right. Things can still get crazier. <laughs> Organization is growing. We've got Orban, Sildari, Pericles, Ganderk, and Tyranno MCG. Is it Tyranno MCG? I think it's MCG. Whoops. You can just climb over the pile of gold. Angel just goes. First of all, I don't go first. Second, I don't climb. Okay, so Draven can still fly, but he can't gain altitude because apparently Draven doesn't climb. Damn it. Climbing also means to gain altitude in flight. Go English language for being just a general mess. Now the tram was not a monorail. It was a double it was a one of those double monorails, a dual rail. So 39! Tales from my D D campaign. So 39 out of 66. Really? After, After loud unlocking sounds, 13 and a half hours. A 10 foot space, then another door. Three doors? I'm getting out my Geiger counter. What, Actually, what's the halfway mark? What's the stopping point? From the other side. Uh, I am stopping in an hour and 20 minutes. Because that's midnight here. Warning A breach has occurred within the Eldritch Lab. Personnel should evacuate immediately. Oh my god, they made a mutant beholder. I told you it was a vampire. We still have those one-shot dimension <laughs> I like daggers. I told you it was a vampire. Because he it actually said it. It's hilarious. But it would stop him from actually teleporting away. I expected better from that thing. Oh well, I've got to go. You know how it is. Places to be, continents to devastate. to devastate. Think dagger him. Dagger him. Or not. not terrible like, success rate with those daggers. Now just close to the awful. Of the like, I guess it's not anyone's, like, best weapon, the but, like, damn. Door into yet another covered bridge. The last one before the core. As they look up around the ceiling of the walkway, there is 80 feet of vertical space between each outer ring of magma, such that the first bridge where they entered the atrium is now hundreds of feet above them. The height of a 30-story so building. There's still at least a couple helicopter-like magma sisters flying around up there. There seem to be fewer now, but it's hard to tell because they're difficult to spot looking up from below. Are we gonna get, like, swamped in lava? That would be fun, but not right now. In the tunnel up ahead, you can see an obstruction. A number of damaged golems are strewn across the, the hallway. Answer, the answer is terrible thing gonna happen. Violence. The answer from the GM is always stuff not right now. While we were resting. <laughs> You notice some bubbling in the lava. It's never and the no. saucer section of one of those flying drones nearly submerged, like ninety percent sunk there. So that one's recent. Like that stupid alpha. That is the same type you just saw him using. Roll your spot. Yeah, I spotted it. I already give you the semi-difficult stuff. What did you actually get? Forty-five. 
you could swear you saw some movement out of the corner of your eye, further down the surface yeah, of the lava, it is. like something moving into cover. But the surface of the lava does move on its own, no, occasionally bubbles or sloshes. You could just be going crazy after being on. That is some good-looking, sort of slightly crusty yeah, lava. That's probably what it is. There's nothing better than a spot check for hallucinations. Pretty proud of that one. Are you paranoid? I'm paranoid, standing next to you. The golems have suffered varying degrees of damage. Some barely went down, others have been torn apart. Suspicious of dark ancients playing dead, Black Cast What was, Reaver, what was that, Ask to Nine? That was the the little salamander. Gets no reaction from them. Swingle skitters over the, top the, of them. That movement, the in the, movement in the lava was the fast, salamander they find it. later. If any door was going to have lava behind it, probably would have been the airlock doors with the hazard stripes. Angel rolled badly on her lock picking check, so she just casts knock again. Sure, it makes a loud noise, but after Black Earth Reaver spell, anyone listening would already have been alerted. This large room appeared to be a sizable armory, similar to the security room near the entrance, with numerous golems, a fire suppression system, a spear, and three more doors leading off. There was also some other machinery whose purpose was... I like the little indentations obvious, that are clearly supposed to be spots for spheres, spheres, but they're not but there right the now. still looked like a tough fight, Clearly, there would have been a lot more golems in here if they weren't like piled those, up outside yeah. the door and in the Eldritch Lab. All personnel must evacuate this area immediately. Due to the current security situation, it is not safe in this part of the facility. Yeah, because we opened that other room up. The lab? Everything in there is dead. Alpha did something. We gotta stop it. We have to be able to stop it. It'll be fine. Actually, that helicopter thing that's in the lava? That could have been his. So he could be in this room now, doing shit. Some units don't have visible eyes, like spheres and magma sisters, and based on your experience, dark ancients don't have to make their eye glow obvious all the time. Certainly Dell must have been hiding it for ages. Watch, we walk in and all the eyes turn red. We'd be like, oh shit! Wait a second, I wonder if it's possible to fool him. If he's in this room, if I turn myself into stone. All your plans are just turn into stone. Pretty much. Would I look enough like a construct? You'd look like a it's stone. It's a cool statue. spell, damn it. Yeah, you wouldn't a, look like, like that spell. constructs. All the ones you you've seen are stone. metal. The good news is, the room hasn't aggroed yet. We can just go in, see if they react. Don't touch anything. Hey, I learned my lesson the first <laughs> the three times. The first three times. <laughs> three times. What? I'm naturally curious. So, the controller's <laughs> behind uh... one of those doors? Is it? Well, you find the path wore off when you rest it, and Polaron's layout has you going around in circles, but you guys could figure I don't remember out that if he does ever use the this, the this isn't stone where your spell. Spell it's, it's a level 6 spell. It could, he, every time you we cast it, it could have been a heal. Room? Then I'm in favor of skipping it. Oh, okay. Don't bother going in then. We'll go to the control room. After we make him draw out and describe this whole huge room. That's, That's fine. Your it's thing still there. All day. And now we know what's inside. Yep, you can go on to the controller and all this will be behind you. Yeah, it's fine. <laughs> he says with some uncertainty. There's nothing that a GM can't say in a disconcerting way. The main hallway takes a big squared off. Yeah, he, he is better than almost every other level six spell. Although, find the path the is so the goddamn powerful, like it can do so much for you in the right situation that it, it could easily be worth it. Near a the entrance of this tunnel is a golem, minus a foot, which appears to have been sliced off by a set of vertical force bars. Beyond that is a full force field. Then alcoves containing two conducting golems, a fire suppression unit, and, and one unit of a type they hadn't seen before. But past all the shields and metal is a room with a floor of lava, and in the middle of that square room, a round pillar topped with an orb. Lava for floor doesn't make sense. You could have, like, an obsidian floor. The other facility had an orb sitting in the middle of a room, and that was the controller. And this one's surrounded by lava. Yes. The other one had water. Right. And the other one made pillars of ice. And kept shooting ice at us. Oh, and the ceiling is also lava. Just as Gineron the, controls just so the floor you know. and ceiling were water. Unlike Gineron, there is a metal grate from the tunnel mouth over to the controller's pillar. So instead of frozen ice and water bullshit, it'll be lava. lava. So it gets pissed <laughs> off, shoots up. Yeah, don't lava. don't fight you know, Polaron controller form. in its room. In That's just a really bad room. idea. Are there any dead golems inside the room? No, they all seem fine. No dead golems is a good sign. 
if Alpha had wanted to take the control sphere, he could have done it any time. Maybe not. I can't remember. That controller that we fought, was that because Alpha took it over? I don't 100% remember if I ever actually did stats for fighting Polaron controller. Because it's literally so stupid, like, you you just die. (laughs) Unless you were utterly immune to fire. That does seem like 100% his MO. I'm going to cast Mass Resist Energy Fire. Fire? Why would you choose fire? I don't know why he doesn't cast Mass Resist Energy all the time. So many of my later encounters, like... Oh, in, that's good. Like, yeah, in the Shadowfell and the boss fights like, and stuff like that, in real time. That are based around an assumption Angel that there's a good chance he would cast Mass Resist Energy, it, and he usually doesn't. Very close to touching it, so it would still inflict significant damage. No getting around. Like, that. I don't want to call you out, for, like, no, but <laughs> thirty is a lot of resistance. I would cast that if spell way more often. That. Angel takes a peek around the corner, spotting another door, followed by an almost unwalkable 45-degree ramp, descending the 80 feet to the very lowest bridge of the atrium, the bridge which extends to the cylinder in the center of the lake of lava. But there's also a warforged near the door, sitting with his back propped up against the wall. Unlike the other warforged you've seen, this one does not seem to have rotted away. Its fibrous bundles are still intact. And actually, looking at it more closely, you're pretty sure this is actually Temple One. What? Didn't he leave that body behind? Okay, that, no, that's a good point, Hierarch. The portal at Gineron, Black the is the one who should probably be casting Mass Resist time from this all the time, because it's just out with easier it. for him. see a hologram of it up top. Okay, that's odd. He must have jumped into another body at some point. Unless this controller has been so effective that it's actually protected itself from him. Well, it has been. He's been fighting him. All those golem bodies. You're right. Some of that is he has to jump away from bodies when he gets in a fight because the damage he takes in golems gradually piles up on him. So they decide to investigate that room first. <laughs> and in passing, the little one smashes the legless golem's head. Just to make sure. You know what powdered sugar looks like? Make it look like that. I walk up to this thing and alpha strike it. Nuts. The yellow glow surrounds the force field. All personnel must evacuate this area immediately. Due to the current security situation, it is not safe in this part of the facility. All personnel should immediately evacuate to the Yeah, service. okay. If mass resist isn't on your infusion list, that makes it a lot more expensive. Yeah. It should definitely be Black's job. Somebody sure. should have been casting it, though. I don't have diplomacy, so I'll have to use my strong suit. Intimidation. Like no, the when you no, like the no, final boss in episode sixty six. Hunting the dark ancient down. He had no, a special power that Ooh, light that electricity but resist good. is halved against him. Because the I just assumed someone was going to cast that. To the point that we cannot accept such an offer. First priority is maintaining control of the facility. You must evacuate this area now. So, are we a detriment to the control of the facility, or not? Status is. Status is, unconfirmed. Okay. Can you locate the area of the disturbance? The enemy moves rapidly throughout the facility. The enemy is a dark ancient. You know what that is? I think it knows exactly what it is. To protect itself from it. We have determined its capabilities experimentally. Huh. Smart. About two minutes ago, was it located in the lava over there? Where I saw something moving. Unknown. I screwed up my first diplomacy check, but I'm trying again. If you let us help you, you're guaranteed to catch him. This will be the third Dark Asian we killed. Several more ran away. I personally killed two of them. Your guarantee is impossible. This facility has been incapable as of yet of disrupting the entity. That's because we haven't been here. And it can't take control of us. Probably. We just got here and just wailed through your forces. Uh, well... <coughs> can you communicate with us throughout the whole facility? This is a, this is a tricky yeah. diplomacy can situation. Can directions to current locations? Like hot, cold, hot, cold, and we try and eliminate your threat? Once the entity manifests, we lose vision from that unit. We are then able to pursue it only using the senses of other units. What unit does it have right now? Uncertain. It is not in view of any other units. Are you able to repair the ones you lose sight of? Return them to functionality? It is possible to restore units once the entity has left them. However, during the last 24 hours, it has been impossible to repair units at the rate they are being destroyed. (laughs) We're helping! You're helping! Well, to be honest, some's our fault. Some's the system's fault. Well, to be honest, it's more your fault. Oh, of course. Yeah, yeah. When when I say we, I really mean me. We all know that. (laughs) It's pretty much my fault. Oh, what's your most effective combat unit? And do you have control of it at the moment? You are not authorized for that information. Fair. 
I, I don't care what it is. I just want to know if it's yours or his. Are you in control of your best combat unit? You are not authorized for that information. All right, let's go. It's not a bad question. I thought it was a good question. He probably has that one behind him, guarding him. I hope so. There's not a lot of room back there. One of the defensive units in front is something you haven't seen yet, but from what you can see, it doesn't look any bigger or more impressive than the others. Soon, they're standing over the body of the Warforged they thought they knew. It's like poorly one, described for some reason. Is it, I don't know, wrong to deface this guy's body? The controller claimed it can reboot its golems, but it seems that once Warforged get possessed, whatever was once there is gone for good. Whoever this one was before it woke from stasis and was taken over, it's long gone. But you guys call so him Alpha. The I Temple One. <laughs> Angel picks the lock, and they check I tend to call him Epsilon, it's although maybe earlier in the series I would just steer away from side. mentioning this it, even though smaller, most people have seen the whole series. With Itaran robots, including a pair of this strange new model, but the focus of attention was the back wall, covered in crossbows and ammunition, <laughs> some of which was displayed <laughs> almost like a shrine. Levitating crossbow tube near the back in which a crossbow with an unusual silhouette was hovering. Ooh. Crossbow floating in a tube. A crossbow floating in a crystal tube? <laughs> Just like ballista throw her into it. The secondary armor is off limits due to the current security situation. Do we want the crossbow? Yes. Of course we want the crossbow. Stupid question. Hey, you know what's awesome? We've already got fire resistance, so I can just blistering radiance. Okay, how far from the door is the crystal thing? About 35 <laughs> feet. But there's another relevant thing. When you look into the room, you notice two invisible shield units on the ceiling. Of course there is. Okay. You can police to throw me into one of them, I'll get it, then you take out the other one and we're good. How about this, alright? We close the door. Close the door. And, and walk, walk away. away. There, there's a lot of shit in there. I mean... Let's be honest. There's a lot of even shit. little one has limits. Hooray! A lot of shit in there. Maybe we can come back later after we prove ourselves to this damn condescending controller. We can actually help with its problem. Killing the dark ancient. The question is, what is Temple One doing here? He can't have jumped into one of them. There's a direct line of sight from Temple One to that goal, and vice versa. So he tried and got cut off. And now he's in one of these. He's in here. He's in here, right now. Right in here. It kind of looks like one of the ranged workers is missing. Well, that's fine. I hope we can catch him in a little ranged thing. Could it be hiding in here? There's not a lot of space in here to hide. The cylinder's transparent, and even the workers are actually medium-sized. They're not that small or that agile, so it'd be pretty hard to hide one behind a bigger golem's leg or something. Hey, controller, where's that ranged not spot? Not impossible. Uh, no. Yeah. Guess what? You can't see it? That's the Dark Ancient. Or he's already jumped into something else. Where, right now, can you not see me? There are a number of locations. Well, you need to get better at your job. It doesn't actually have cameras everywhere. It just sees whatever the constructs see. It doesn't have sensors over the entire place, I can tell you that. What's with the crossbow? The secondary armory is a strategic reserve in case of reinvasion from the Deadlands. Oh. Oh. Oh, so this is what we need before we invade the Deadlands. What's the Deadlands? I'm assuming it's the other plane. We're presuming it means the Shadowfell. You guys did translate one of those books from Ginneron that featured memoirs of Warforged who fought in the Dead Wars. Could you send one of your small units to escort us? It would give you vision over us. See, a lot of time I just get sucked into watching the video with you. Do <laughs> so I really have anything to say? I don't know. Of them have eyes. The that happened to so me a lot when I was preparing for the PDDC nominations Ooh. video. Yeah. Was I'd be like trying to find one thing, and then I'd be like, shit, I was just watching for 20 minutes. Here's the thing. We're not personal. Hey, the badges. I'm wearing a badge, damn it. That is uncertain. Okay, let's not fight the giant room for the crossbow yet. Don't get me wrong, we aren't leaving without it. The drone will let us know. That would happen to me with another gaming connected. comic too. I'd have to, I'd go, have to go look something up, and then I get stuck then reading the like can... ten are we comics. Ourselves like, by wearing these badges right now? No, no. I feel like we are. Why? Because she thinks we're personnel, and we don't have the clearance. You'd rather she thinks we're intruders? Intruders, intruders definitely have the clearance. 
The uncertainty is why she's even talking to us and not nuking us. But she has enough there to do it. 30 seconds later, one of the basic stabbing workers and also one of the ranged workers come around the corner, stopping about 15 feet away. That's her thinking, that if one falls, the other can warn us. They're like our dogs to sniff out Alpha. I like it. With their escort in tow, they scramble down the ridiculously steep ramp to the final bridge. Due to the ceiling covering the short walkway, they can't see the dome above them from here, but they come face to face with a really, really serious looking door, <laughs> which leads into the cylinder. This door is what extremely the hell does Alpha serious. Want here? Control of that military unit it is and severe. maybe to open a portal to the Deadlands. What was it he said? I have places, places to be continents to devastate. devastate. For all we know, this place could open portals elsewhere in the world and flood other places with undead. Hold on a second. I want to ask the controller something. Our guys are right here. It seems to be talking to you guys now. So this alpha guy has been here for quite a while. The intruder has been attempting to gain access to this facility for approximately four weeks. Four weeks. So why the high level of security now? The facility has been penetrated far more deeply in the last 24 hours, and unit casualties have accelerated <laughs> dramatically. Okay, so we're the reason. <laughs> yeah. He can only do so much by himself. We seem to be able to do massive damage. Controller? What's this room here? You are standing before the core of the facility. You think Alpha's in here? I don't know, man. I'm so gonna ram my spear up his ass. I don't care if it's ineffective. Are, are we opening this door? Why the hell do we want in the core? It doesn't sound like a Nightmare good idea War to me. Nightmare yeah, Warden asks, are the badges okay, supposed to look like then. something? And no, I... That's not uh, job. no, not I, the I think opener. they're, they're pretty abstract. You're making they're, some they're progress, just, but you're not there They were yet, just made to look like a symbol. Light surrounds right. the door. This area not, is strictly off limits. Not exactly, not like Star Trek badges, just different. Somehow. I fear we're gonna get company. So knock. I can do it. This door is off limits to all personnel at this time. You must immediately Turtle. evacuate to the surface. We just tried to get Turtle. in and we couldn't. I bet Alpha's not in there. Yeah, Alpha's not in there. What would happen if we shut down the core? <laughs> I'm guessing a lot of collapsing as lava flows down. Melt the whole pool. That just sounds like poor design. And probably Alpha will be able to get in anywhere he wants. We've got Must be a pretty big us. difference for that turtle moving from Malaysia to Korea to, China, idea, uh, to Canada. She may not go for it. It's a lot colder yeah. here. Have the controller order every golem, every yeah, single Yeah, reptiles don't usually like the cold that much. Except when it needs to be able no. to repair them. The flying ones, the workers, everything. But it can't control the one Alpha is in. It won't shut down. And that'll be the only one left. Nowhere to escape. Well, sure. Do you want to try convincing the controller? Well, we got two options. We can ask her to do it, or we can do it ourselves. <laughs> it really, what are we doing here? I want that crossbow. Yeah, the point is to get the crossbow. Now, <laughs> it would also be nice we now to have get our goal. control of the facility for our own research and other purposes. And there's only one way we're going to do that. Convince the controller we should be the new masters. Or we kill it. That's two ways. <laughs> or we have to be helpful. It would be nice if we could... Not now, being helpful is a bridge too far. There's only so much you can ask. Masters or something, but that would be a hell of a use magic device check. Well, there's that. That's another option. Or maybe you put on the little suit, and maybe... That's a possibility. I could put on the suit and order it to shut down every unit in the facility. I have a crazier idea. <sighs> ah! Advertising! What's your crazier now we say <laughs> let alpha take over the controller and hope he doesn't nuke the place then destroy it i told you it was crazy yeah but alpha's trying to get to the controller already help him how give him what he wants trigger a boss fight then win we can take him out as the controller it's just a sphere what's it gonna do <laughs> all right before we later him. arrest you actually ran away from the other controller for the record it was beating the crap out of you now Part of the problem was you weren't fully committed to destroying it from the start. And that was part of the problem. And it took a lot of extra damage while some of you valiantly tried to find another way. On the other hand, that was a room full of water, water. instead of lava. Really? We want to show up to the controller and be like, here's his head. There's no head. He's like a dark energy entity. Okay, I found a spell. I cast Locate Creature on Alpha. Kit, let's just shut off the core. Take this whole place down. We'll always have that option, but with Locate Creature, we can follow Alpha and hunt him down. If that doesn't work, then we can look at more drastic measures. Right, I like that too. We'll try that first. No save, no SR, as long as he's within 900 yeah, pull feet, very it long. works. So I cast Locate Creature. Now let's see. I knew where he was a little while ago, but I'll have to figure it out again. 
This is a pretty big facility, but 920, 920 covers pretty much everything. Even if he was up in the death cannon room. You find out, he's the controller. Ah! The direction you're getting is directly ahead of you, but very steeply up. Uh, I could cast my flake buff. That kind of showed up at yeah, but effectively. We had to go up through the heat, but we have fire resistance running. Let's just go through the heat. We can do mass flight. It's much more direct. What if flight got dispelled? That'd be some shit. I'd survive. I have one maneuver that lets me fly briefly. I'd just charge to the top of a bridge. I'd just believe it's serious and melt. No. <laughs> that that Terminator 2 stuff again. Die more slowly. I'd rather die quickly. Or preferably someone cast Dimension Door. Though so I might survive long enough to get out. If, if Draven cast Mud to Stone, it would heal me to full. Yeah, you keep saying that. Really? If we're all in the lava, <laughs> nobody's casting anything. If we all fall in the lava, it's game over. Let's be honest. Okay, so Mass Fly. Wait. Before you waste a casting of Mass Fly, I stick my head over the railing. What? See if it's safe now, with the resistance. Oh, I see what you're saying. <laughs> you can feel that it is hot, but it's less painful it's... than sticking your head in the oven now. It works! No All right. Aren't you glad I'm slightly masochistic? So, do you Mass Fly your NPCs, too? Liz and Rainbow Dash? I get to ride Flying Rainbow Dash? Awesome! I keep forgetting we have Rainbow Dash. Yeah, me too. Laura casts haste. So with mass resist fire, mass fly, and haste, they take flight into the burning red-orange space of the atrium, leaving their robot escorts behind. After all, Raven can sense the Dark Ancient's direction for himself now. As they start out, they note that it gets much hotter when close to the lava, such that they will take some damage if they stray within 10 feet of it, but otherwise they take no damage. At least the flying the Rainbow Dash wouldn't scream like those fucking Thor goats. This is true. Rain Rainbow Dash is uh, pretty docile in the noise department. As they head out and up, Draven's spell lets him sense that the target is moving, and it quickly becomes apparent that the Dark Ancient is not just flying, but is aware of them and is attempting to keep the bridges between himself and the party, as they wheel around, catching only glimpses of yet another of the helicopter-like magma sifters. Can we see him? Only occasionally. He seems to be maneuvering to keep the bridges between you. Fly is maneuverability good. We must fly as well as he does, if not better. You'll have to make opposed dexterity checks to jockey for position. Each round, the Dark Ancient makes a dex check, and each of the PCs do the same. If the PC ties or beats his check for that round, they get a clear line of sight to target him with a ranged attack or spell, and in the first yeah. round, Angel, Mora, and Draven succeed, pulling tight over the bridge and getting a clear line of fire for a moment before the possessed magma sifter can duck under a lower walkway. I got a two. How did you get a two? Armor check penalty. Okay, um, make a reflex save. Fourteen. I'm going to assume your number one priority is to remain within 30 feet of one of the others, so you don't plummet to your doom. So while you roll shitty and struggle a bit at that, you accidentally veer too close to a trough of lava and take 17 fire damage through your resistance. Oh. That's Again, fine. people so think my like behind, my lava physics is stupid, and round, uh, tough luck. That's just how it works. Black, you also it's very hot. <laughs> this round, but otherwise you fight just fine. I shoot it for one fire, four cool, and eight physical damage, plus six from fell the greatest foe. These things are so f***ing immune to your one fire damage. I force orbit for thirty-four. Yep. How many damage dice did you roll? Ten. He takes ten damage then. He used psionic damp power to take the minimum damage from your spell. That's for one spell, right? Yeah, yeah. It, it's an immediate action. It's not like a buff that sticks around. Warner shoots for eight damage as well. It, it's crazy enough as it does is. Not it doesn't fight need to back. have duration. It's all his effort to avoid them. So we do one more round of opposed dexterity checks, but this time the villain rolls really high, and none of the heroes is able to outmaneuver him as he dives through the gap into the armory level bridge at full speed. I like this shot. Essentially a He's got the force field things. He's got the skidding to a stop. With the squealing, scraping noise of metal on metal. F it, we're going after him. As you streak down past the bridge, you see one million, one ranged worker oh, yeah. <laughs> the other way, then suddenly <laughs> the, turning the workers trying to follow them. Aw, they're still trying to follow us. Poor little guys. As we swing by the bridge, I yell out to the controller, retreat all your units in the security rooms and shut them behind doors, he's coming. You made a good call shouting into the bridge because there's a much better chance it can hear you there than in the middle of the atrium where no personnel should ever be. He goes into either room, the controller will pick him out like that. But he'll also have loads of bodies to jump around. We have to hope that the bots will focus him. He's got to be their number one priority. The party swoop down into the hallway over the wreckage they've seen before to find the magma sifter wedged under the armory door, physically uh. blocking it from closing. So he's already in the room. Joy. Are we still picking up the Dark Ancient right there? No, he's inside the room. 
you can already hear fighting. There's definitely some rock'em sock'em robots going on. Let's go hell. If we can hit him with the dimensional anchor dagger, we have to man the door. Nothing gets out. He can bounce around all he wants in the room, but as long as he can't pour it out, we can get him. I think the theory was that if you could this catch him so alone, rough. you could anchor him and he'd be stuck, unable to teleport. But if there are other bodies, I, around, I obviously have great faith in their ability to just survive from fighting shit golem, because if he there could, is you don't know whether the so much shit to fight. Fight in some of these rooms. Stay with the body. Either way, once he's in the room, it's all bad. Can you cast some kind of area thing that blocks teleportation? Just I know there are so much. like that. They're all slow to cast, like minutes or hours, and they tend to cost a lot too. More meant for long term than for combat. I can tank this, and you can just keep recycling your bullets to throw, tossing them into lava. Actually, if you want to, we could fight them near the edge. Another way is we open the door, I get my hands on Alpha, I ballista to throw him back out of the room, and we beat the shit out of him in the hallway. Oh, Remember, man. he takes some of the damage. If we do a massive amount of damage, he'll die. He's going to oh, all kinds of effort episode. to avoid damage, and we just hit him for 30. Yep, he takes some fraction of that 30 body damage as real damage to himself. He's got to be hurting, because he's been fighting other golems all through this place. So they head in, most able to roll under the door easily, though Black would have to squeeze. Angel barely has to duck, but she chooses to slide in anyway, putting one hand on the door so she slides in, then up the wall, then casts Knock for the hell of it. That's some Mega Man shit. So which one is That's pretty Mega Man, yeah. He's the fire suppression golem. Whatever's biggest and baddest. He's not worried about offense. He'll be in whatever is the toughest. You know it's this way, heading to a far room, but you can't pinpoint which one out of all the units over there. They all seem to be facing away from you towards that same place, which means you can't see their eyes either. Controller, lock those doors down. You know, he's running away from us instead of just teleporting. It's possible he could be out of dimension doors. He'd have to be really low on stuff because scions run on points. I'm certain he'd save enough points for a dimension door. Doing that also takes three rounds to arrive and lets the controller know where he's going to be. Oh the spherical God. slicing golem wins the initiative and attacks the fire suppression the system. Next next to the next episode is 48 minutes long. He takes his confirmation that the Dark Ancient had possessed the ice covered golem. Still hasted from the beginning of their flight only a few rounds ago, Mora shoots three times, unable to penetrate the golem's frost armor, but each shot chipping away at the protective ice until Little One Searing charges it for 22 damage. Should I bother rolling the fire damage? It's 5d6. He starts the battle with 70 fire resist. Wow. Well, he is supposed to fight fires. The basic golems act, but most have a hard time getting into range to attack the possessed golem. We're just attacking the big one, right? Yeah. Nothing else is aggroed. They all seem to be going for the same target. Yeah. It's a good thing one of them went before us. Hmm. He could cone of cold and wipe out a lot of things, but he opens the door. The controller doesn't stop him? I'm sure it would love to, but it has a limit to how much it can do at once. The door opens up to reveal a smaller room oh, containing an know. upsized version of the geo-elemental power source they've seen before. Oh, I know what he's doing. He's in the fire suppression unit. Here comes the magma. You're always so many steps behind. He casts energy burst. Psionic fireball? Not quite. That would be energy ball. Energy burst is a power scions don't usually learn because they have friends. It's a 40-foot radius burst centered on... Yeah, the, Please be fire, please be fire. Nope. It's That, that power is so sonic. strong, really? but if you're in a hey, party, minus one damage per die, you can't use it most of the time without killing your party. Friends. I'm happy. Look where I am. It just misses me. Damn it. Some PCs save, but Angel actually takes the full 41 damage for once, because the saving throw against the sonic power is fortitude oh. instead of reflex, so her evasion doesn't apply. It damages a number of the golems around, including the sphere, though some of them are protected by their spell resistance. But for all the combat damage this does, it yes, also Terry, impacts this Dan equipment would over definitely here, learn and this power. does a bunch of damage to the controls on this side of the power source. Oh, that's why he went sonic. Now, technically the lava doesn't come up these cylinders. They require a shaft down to a volcanic ley line, and equipment goes down into it. Ah, I was kind of hoping for magma. But there's Technical a lot diagram. of sparking, and the lights flicker severely. And when they come back on, the level of illumination in the room is very dim, like emergency lighting. He's drinking our treasure! He's going to wreck the facility so we can't use it! All right, I'm not f***ing around here. It's going to be a maximized orb of force. So damned expensive. But he's drinking our treasure! <laughs> so expensive. What do you say? Extra graphics yeah. this You're time for some treasure. reason. No, Why that not? doesn't make sense. It's not like I invented it. Draven doesn't really have a catchphrase. You know what you should say? 
That belongs in a museum. A huge beam of energy shoots out from the wand attachment of Draven's custom crossbow. And he dampens it. Takes minimum damage, so 10. Oh, I forgot about that. That costs some power points, right? Yes, but not as many as you'd like. No, not enough to be worth five charges. What's it again? Damp power? I want to look he's, it up. I don't know how uh, to make it over there. He's not going to be happy. Haste, right? You should still have haste for a few rounds. You could blow your belt of battle. I could. I should, because this guy... He's like the end game to me. He'll probably just teleport away. We need the controller to clear the room. This ability costs three power points? Yes. That's f***ing bullshit. He can do that every round for almost no cost. Psionics are f***ing bullshit. He can only do it once per round, right? Correct. He can't do it again right now because it's an immediate action and he already spent his for the round. So if you can't do it again right now, I should sound lance him. Sound lance the shit out of him. If the controller could clear the room of all right. constructs and I shove the dimensional dagger up his ass, we can beat him till he f***ing dies. Probably. This guy is bullshit. I'm getting madder and madder. <laughs> Black gets a strong so, damage roll for his sound so lance. Rage. the Dark Ancient fails his fort save, taking all 48. After which, his fire Ooh. suppression system body was below half health. They've learned by now that you have to kill a Dark Ancient either by accumulated damage or by killing their body before they can jump to another one. Though, they usually have an emergency jump once per day ability, making that a little harder. Either way though, dealing more damage is ultimately their best way to get rid of him. Battle Belt, do it again? You could. Do it. He's drinking our treasure! Alright, belt of battle. First hand, boom. Second hand, hey, that's not bad. 46. Fail, 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 fail. No, he passed. Still takes 23, though. God damn it. That was good. I bet I could have dropped him, though. Mission accomplished, everyone. We've taken down his power supply. The controller can't possibly defend itself now. Everyone? He's trying to frame us? Those badges work like a charm. What? How dumb do you think the controller is? Are the badges rigged? No, he's Is bluffing. it really dumb from the controller's perspective? Until there's nothing left to stab. The workers act, but while a few of them shoot, most pause and do nothing as though confused. Then, at the top of the round, the sphere golem whirlwinds... everything. The dark ancient, little one... Um, it's going to hit the other friendly golems too, because it can only control the maelstrom of waves so much. I am disappointed. <laughs> the slicing golem spins around, hitting everything for like 30, but Spin! Mora shoots off the last of the ice, and Angel finishes off the fire suppression unit. This obviously f***ed him up. The golem is falling apart and collapsing, but though you see bits of dark energy leaking out, it's kind of anticlimactic. There's no big light show, no moaning wail like the others. He made the jump. Kill them all! We have determined that you are not authorized person. No. Oh, God damn it. <laughs> Kill them all. Too many converts have been detected. Kill them all. Kill them all. Who's next? Ungrateful. Ungrateful. It does not seem unreasonable from the controller's point of view. Suddenly everything seems a lot scarier. Isn't there like a cure spell that works on robots? Yes, repair spells. They're on my actual spell list. Think it'd work on that thing? I can try. I'm going to delay my initiative until one of them makes an aggressive move towards me, then I'll kill it. There seems to be some kind of confusion. This one's just rocking back and forth. This one wanders over and beats on the already destroyed fire suppression unit. This one, uh, the one that's badly damaged, limps over and attacks a little one. Because, I don't know. Take 19 damage and 4 charges. You can use the rod to turn those charges into healing. Do I have that? Oh, yeah. You don't need to do it urgently. They do persist for several rounds, even if no more charges hit to refresh them. 1d6 per charge. Not terrible. You could build up more charges, then heal for more. It's not even that. It's getting rid of the charges before they turn into damage. You think you can repair this thing? Probably. Yeah, sure I can. I'm supremely confident. Okay, good enough for me. I Elder Mountain Hammer the power source. Okay. He can't control the controller if it's got no power. Draven will fix it later. I didn't think that's what you meant. If we turn off the f***ing thing, he's got nothing. No, 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 no. It's done. No, oh, f You said you could fix it. Yeah, assuming it was still working. Draven thought you meant, can you walk over and cast Heal for Robots, like, as a gesture of good faith And here we have Back to the full best power. little one I, moment. I <laughs> Wipe out everybody, then repair and bring it back up later. It's it's fun. You get more XP if you kill everything. You don't actually. You get the same XP for overcoming problems. Why did I say anything about attacking a controller? We don't know that! We have to assume that! <laughs> now we're working for the Dark Ancient! Not if we shut it down completely. He didn't destroy this. He only damaged it. That's because we killed him too fast! <laughs> Maybe! I don't know! This logic worked for me. Whatever, it's in character. I wish, in character, I could be like, What the f*** are you doing? I'm serious. I know Raven's having an egg over there, but we shut down the whole thing building, then fix it later. Little one Elder Mountain hammers the already cracked column for 30 
39 damage, ignoring hardness, exposing more of the inner workings, such that you could even see down to the lava 30 feet below. This generator is definitely shut down completely, and the light bars in the room turn red. Code red, risk red, wait, what code red? There's still power? There's still some kind of power, but it's a lot darker in here, and redder. There's still reserve power. There's a backup supply. But the lights went out the first time, when he hit it. Briefly, then came back up, but a lot dimmer. I thought you said this was a major power source. It was. Sorry, guys. I thought it was going to kill everything. In fact, the minions do shut down, as does a damaged gold, but not the sphere. It's a higher priority. So this has limited its capabilities. I'm still actually quite disturbed about the whole, we've done it. We have done it. Alpha was trying to get the controller to think we were working with him. The controller was already confused about you guys. A lot of the stuff did not match up. I'm sure it's not confused anymore. Yeah, I, yeah, I don't think there was. Uh, I don't think the badge is supposed really to look like anything in particular. It's just an abstract symbol that I thought looked good enough. To... Shut it down. Actually, you've got the ability to pick up where Alpha is. You have to locate creature. That's right. I forgot about that. That's an interesting point. He's currently in this direction from you. He doesn't need. Ah, uh, this is so snooty ass of me. Before we follow him, can you hit me with that healing wand? I've got four charges. But Don't it, want this to get was this was the farthest. I'm sure, still not running off the, on my own. But that it had line of sight too. One of the doors to. on the north side of the room starts opening the hard way. Something trying to force it up from the inside. How are their eyes? Just out of curiosity. Normal white glows. So I'm not <laughs> confident they're peaceful. Totally <laughs> fine I'm white glows. <laughs> Are those missile pods on their shoulders? These are not maintenance robots. <laughs> What's your most powerful unit, we ask? What is Polaron's most powerful unit? That is the question. Next time on Tales from My d, &D the, uh, the implied answer may be misleading. <laughs> okay, guys. Next episode is just shy of 50 minutes long. So we're going to watch that, and it'll be 10 past midnight, and then I'm going to end this stream. Sleep for eight hours-ish. And then get up and do this again tomorrow. Yes, those are absolutely bad cats from Battletech. <laughs> they're they're stylized into my style, but they're very very obvious mad cats. Yes, it'd be easy to justify that from a plot standpoint. I've been waiting for you for like five months. You guys weren't supposed to f off in the desert. <laughs> Honestly, a monitor could have been following us all the way here. If he's got decent stealth skill, I wouldn't see him. And if he's stealthy and invisible, Angel probably wouldn't also, either. I've it's, actually been powering up. It's my interesting fireball. how this is working, how the stream is working out for the arcs. Because oh roughly God. halfway through I'm the day, sure. we finished episode I'm 26, longer. which is one of the big, which is sort of the first big finale kind of ah. episode. And then this is, we've gone from 27 to, four, to 40, and 40 is an the next really big finale sort of episode, which is why it's almost 50 minutes long. So it's kind of interesting that the streams kind of naturally broke down into seven and a half hour-ish arcs. Okay. Here we go. Tales episode called D &D The Campaign. Age of Epsilon, <laughs> just in case anyone was not thinking it was serious. We're not Personnel. Yes, we are. I'm wearing a badge, damn it. That is uncertain. Hey, controller, where's that range spot? Unknown. Guess what? You can't see it? That's the yeah. dark ancient. Or he's already jumped into something else. You know how it is. Places to be, continents to devastate. He dives through the gap into <laughs> I'm the glad you're having fun watching full it, you mean? Mission accomplished, everyone. We I hope I'm contributing it up. Everyone. He's trying to frame us? How dumb do you think the controller is? We have determined that you are not authorized personnel. Oh, God damn it! You think you can repair this thing? Probably. I Elder Mountain Hammer the power source. Draven will fix it later. I didn't think that's what you meant! But at that moment, one of the doors on the north side of the room starts opening. I'm not confident they're peaceful. <laughs> I'm confident they're not. Are those missile pods on their shoulders? Opening the door was something of an accomplishment for units with no proper hands. I but did make a mistake by not giving these things one slide the door more up different a damage type started, their missiles. The kicked in, a counterweight helping it to rise the rest of the way. Opening it with its PVCs. A huge battle mech just opened I'm the door. I'm glad you like me laughing at my own joke. Although some of them aren't my jokes, some of them are like the players. And First, just it launches them. a canister which bursts in a blinding flash. Graven and Mora, make a will save. What? Make an easy will save. Who's shooting me with a will save? Who's got two racks of SRMs and no thumbs? 
<laughs> this guy. Draven saves while Mora, who also has a very solid will save. Okay, that was my stupid joke, and it did make me laugh for some reason. So. The targets Black and Liz with an incendiary <laughs> round, but it didn't hit me with that. I'll take fairy sprinkles over that any day. Now, actually, that's probably the least effective. Yes, with fire resistance 30, it doesn't actually do enough to harm you guys. It's safe for half, but there's no point. Liz is weirded out. She's not used to being... I called them SRMs as a joke. Extra. That's not... A, they're not officially called However, that, but does it really matter if they don't turns, exist as printed materials? Laser designates Draven as a touch attack, giving him three Polaron charges. It's got a hard-on for you. I'm not the one who smashed the thing! Black, the other one designates you for three charges. Though it almost missed your touch AC. But yeah, there's, there's a bit of a flaw that the, sloth gives against the they're, first they're missiles, the only way they... They're only missiles that do finish. damage or fire damage. Well so it's like bloody. kind of limiting for them. Will probably die. Yeah. I'll fight for closer. Liz runs up they and had like the sphere. One kind of she does decent damage, but it's fragmentary not or something. Quite enough. What did she use? Mountain hammer? Uh, actually, she didn't use anything. Hold on. Liz isn't that dumb, even if I am. With her not being played stupidly, she gets another 2d6 from Mountain Hammer Yay. and is dead. Woo! So that was actually very useful of Liz. Thank Except you, Liz. That was. The sphere. Except it's dead. Liz smart. Blind and unable to target anything, Mora activates her amulator of the disc, floating up to the ceiling to avoid any hand to hand. <laughs> she returns to her home planet. Any raised attacks. Angel full attacks one of the new golems. <laughs> Two hits. Total of why, why did I not some physical, some put in a disc? Yep, he takes all your funky damage. Which was one it on like a, the wrong layer that or one, something? One I never die. noticed that before. Mm, she just floats up. Decisions, not, I didn't decisions. see a disc. I'm going to hit this guy with rallying strike. 27? Nope. That's a miss. Again. AC 29. That's Someone pathetic. was mentioning like that little ones, like, uh, disabling strike, whatever that thing points. is called, works almost every time. His healing strike has a terrible success rate. Ones. Even though it just has to roll the hit, there's no saving throw. Then the artillery golems. Artillery golems? <laughs> you could fireball them. My wand of fireball is trash. I'm going to scrap it. I orb the damaged one for 29, then back off around the corner. Shoot some dust at you once, then you're running? Just around the corner. I can pop back in next round. Well, Draven's broken line of sight, but at the start of its turn, the one that targeted Black fires its artillery beam. It hits you for 4d6. Oh, yeah, the, plus the artillery beam is bad charges. news. So 14 plus 3, 10 damage charges. Take 44, minus 5 from your armor's electrical resist. Does it get to attack too? Yep, that happened automatically. At the end of their turn, they designate someone with the ray. At the beginning of their turn, it hits you with the laser guided death laser. That seems a little redundant. You'd think so, but you'd be wrong. Forgot how damaging those charges are. You can use the rod to remove them. I'm gonna have to. Then it plants itself in place and launches three successive incendiary rounds hitting this area. Wait, they're targeting me? Indirect fire, 15 foot radius. The question is if three rounds can penetrate your fire resist. The three attacks combined to count as a single attack for 12d6 fire damage. Because oh, yeah, I, I did so. do that. I did let them combine, but it's still. And they still have fire resistance 30. It's all fire ah, all the time. 31, b You take one damage. <laughs> I'm offended. The other one also uses his full attack to triple incendiary because that's their go-to anti-infantry move, but this time it fails to deal enough damage to overcome the mass resist spell. Then the artillery golems designate Black again and Liz, giving them each three new Polaron charges. Two can play that game. I cast Blistering Radius right on top of myself. Most of them are shut down. They can't dodge anything. Yeah, the little guys are probably gonna die soon. No, they're pretty toast. Their minion evasion and stuff doesn't apply when they're disabled. How long is Moro blind for? Like, a minute. Oh, so she's out of the fight. She can heal herself. It's touch range. We can come to her. I'll use my ring to drop a wall right in front of Black. Laser that. They probably will. Liz was about to move to break line of sight because she saw that laser went bad. But she's getting used to their weird powers now, so she moves up behind the wall of force too. <sighs> should I zap myself with the wand to remove these charges? Or should I come out and shoot these guys? I don't know what their AI is. Will they stay focused on the wall? I have an idea. I think that breaking line of sight breaks their targeting. I still have the charges. Yeah, I know. Yeah, so that's the question. Does breaking line of sight break it? You want me to test it? For science! I was gonna say, does this happen every time? Sounds like a poor use of resources. If, if it blasts me, then we have to waste a bunch of spells healing me. Mora can't do anything but heal. Go for it. Come on. It's in the name of wow, experimentation. That's a dumb achievement. Damn, don't talk Although, to me. Obviously, that way, I knew it was a dumb really achievement tempted. because it says for her. Because then we can compare whether a solid wall and a wall of force do the same thing. Because wall of force breaks line of effect, but they can still. Yeah, see Draven it. for oh, science. 
Using the corner for cover as much as possible, I'll orb of force again. For science. You targeting the damaged one or the one that hit you? Damaged, clearly. Revenge isn't really Draven's thing. Take 40. It's way past bloodied. And you'll be happy to know that you don't automatically get blasted for 4d6 plus 30 damage. Wow, that's a lot. <laughs> <laughs> Bravo. With the currently designated <laughs> target clap. behind it, the deadly uh. beams harmlessly strike the wall of force instead. But a golem fires a full volley of glitter dust rounds. I like when they're very the dangerous, Raven, but you can strategize around it, triple glitter dust which is what this fight is doing. Force cool. Suddenly, you guys are so incredibly sparkly that I'm giving you minus one to hit. You're dazzled. You are so sparkly, even more I can see you. The base difficulty of the will save isn't that hard, but safety seeds of the artillery golem are increased by the number of charges on the target, says that Black very nearly failed one of the rolls oh, yeah. and Liz was blinded. The other golem tries to trip the disabled is more effective. Is again for sure. unable to beat 30 resistance on Because I'm shiny. Nine? Bloody hell! I'm yeah. looking off and wanting yeah. myself. Very shiny the regular crap. golem critically slashes Black for 38, who unleashes all his backlash effects, including the two-use-per-day amulet and the ring, which only works on crits, dealing 47 damage back, such that the unit veritably explodes out the back after landing the blow. <laughs> I have to heal now, but I'm in reach, and my concentration skill isn't good enough to make sure it works. I'd better kill this guy then. But Black falls just short of finishing the damaged artillery golem, so Angel yeah, drops from above and shreds what's left of it, causing the golem's death throws to release the incendiary volleys harmlessly into the ceiling. Finally, rallying strike works, does the same damage as a normal attack, but everyone within 30 feet heals 20. This thing can't be allowed to go again, because I'll take 50 damage plus the 46, and I'm at 49. Black wasn't targeted this round. He still has the charges. Yeah, but they both targeted Draven this time, and I have to stay out of line of sight, because I take 100 damage. Damage. But if you do, it yeah, should yeah. be able to don't, laser don't get shot for 100 damage. All, as far as we know. Oh, that's right. Then black should be okay. We think. Theoretically. So I should really use the rod to get rid of my nine charges. Hold on, Draven. Before you do anything, you realize your locate creature is giving you a different direction now. Where? The damaged magma sifter on the floor, the one that had skidded in before they got here to block the door from closing, jerks into action, half flying, half skidding <laughs> back down the hall, looking to jump the low gnome height railing of the enclosed bridge. What? I thought that was destroyed. It was right there the whole time. That's why it showed us that direction. It's pretty beat up, and he had abandoned it when you first entered the room, so it was inert. Since you killed okay. the fire suppression system, he's been playing dead in here concealing any glow that would tip you off. It's acting at about the same time as Draven, and you get some kind of warning from the locate person, so you can take an action before it gets out of view. Okay, it's okay. Oh, but it's kind of damned in my spell again. But, but I have to try. Orb of Force? Yeah, he only takes 10. He does not like taking even 10. That means you're not wanting Black's charges. Yeah, but th this guy's drinking our treasure! Wasn't it like two minutes ago you were talking about how Draven isn't about revenge? Whatever. This guy. You know what we should do? We should give Liz the healing wand. Liz? I don't know if she'd want to do that. It's not very orky. I have five charges. If I take the beam hit, I'm going to be at minus one even before the rolling part. But he didn't target you this round because they both targeted Draven. It does not laser this round. On the other hand, this thing has the feat that allows it to make ranged attacks without provoking attacks of opportunity, which is important because their options are either move and fire once, or not move at not all, move. not even a five foot step, and brace themselves to fire three times. It hits Black with a pair of glitter dust rounds, actually blinding him this time, thanks to the plus five save DC from the charges, then hit Little yeah. One with an immobilizer round, effectively a single target slow spell, but he saved, and it actually misses Angel with the targeting laser due to the plus one AC from Haste. It's currently designating the ceiling. Despite being blind, the cleric still hits twice for 30 damage, and two hits allow him to trigger his rending gauntlets for another seven damage. This model, not having any damage <coughs> reduction, is Damn bloody, it. and Angel Angel and little one finish it in <coughs> short order. Draven goes around quickly healing everyone who still has charges, but the Dark Ancient is moving slowly in the lower parts of the lava-filled atrium, so they don't want to even wait for those who are blind to recover. They want to head him off if he's going to the secondary armory, checking on the controller along the way. Force bars are down, but the solid wall of force is still up, and the golems remain, trying to look menacing. Which they took to be a good sign. 
whatever the Dark Ancient was up to, he hadn't taken yeah. the controller yet. And just to make sure, Draven blocked off the controller's hallway with a wall of stone spell as they continued on. The secondary armory door was closed, and according to Draven's locate creature, the enemy clearly was not in there. The Dark Ancient had stopped briefly, but suddenly it's moving again, and much faster. First one way, then it virtually reverses direction, all moving low in the atrium, well below you, possibly in the lava. It sounded it's like he was there. teleporting, but for what? If he's going down, he must be heading for the core. I don't know, but if there aren't any more bodies around him, we'll have to lock him down with the dimensional anchor so we can finish him. I have a dagger. I have a scroll. Whatever the case, he was moving pretty fast, but then stopped again, near the center of everything, but much lower down now, as they return to the huge heavy door of the core cylinder. I only got a 36 to open it. 36 will do it, since the controller isn't actively hosing you this time. The door opens up to reveal a big round room. Just an empty room, 40 foot diameter. Is Alpha in here? Nope, he's further down. Again, you only get a vector, so you can't really judge the distance, but he's definitely downward, and not straight down, like off in this direction. I thought this was the lowest part of the facility. It should be. This was the lowest walkway, and the only thing below this is the cylinder in front of you and the square pool of lava. Start searching around. Search everything. Searching. The controls are fairly well concealed, but Angel easily finds them. They don't seem like door controls. Out of the way. Yep, yeah, Jade Spider. Like going uh, he started moving rapidly. As what? This whole space? Moving the, it's all an elevator, the thing it around. Uh, doesn't go up. The floor because it has different w- different places that it can launch to. Doors slide in he's place, moving it through the, the, uh, off at the, top, the space is allocated down, for it. Very poorly lit, with only the emergency lighting. I'll light up my base. Pretty soon, it becomes clear that you are lower than the surface of the lake of lava as you continue to descend the dark zone. down? Emergency power barely sustained. The entity has taken control of the strategic withdrawal unit. What is the strategic withdrawal <laughs> unit? A unit Can't designed be to be used if the controller were in danger of being compromised for a strategic withdrawal. An escape pod? Essentially. How big is it? Sizable. My power level's extremely low. If only someone hadn't destroyed that power source. If necessary, units in the secondary armory are able to function independently from facility power. However, they're ill-equipped combat the entity. Can he be stopped? Its goal is uncertain. However, strategic control unit has backup connections for some of my control circuits. This is Polaron, the Imperator. He's activating the portal? God damn it. What is this guy trying to do? Does the portal require power? The portal is constructed at the polar nexus, the greatest known confluence of volcanic ley lines. Once activated, it is self-sustaining. Let me guess. You can't shut it off from where you are. The unit's backup control circuits are duplicates of my own. Due to closer proximity, it will be able to overwhelm my commands. Okay, from now on, I won't (laughs) break things. Oh yeah, can we put a countdown on that? Can you get us there faster? All right, blast a hole in the elevator floor. We'll fly down. He's still going down. Yeah, but we can fly faster. Just blast it up and let's go. From now on, I won't break things. I won't break things anymore. Ten. No, I meant important things. Seven. Break the floor. (laughs) (laughs) That's hilarious. I'll see if I can make it go faster. Mora will help. They do hotwire it, increasing the speed briefly, but they've already descended almost 300 feet. Any blindness has worn off. They've done all the healing and recast all their medium duration buffs, but at 330 feet below the starting point, automatic braking initiates, slowing it to a stop 350 feet below the last bridge. Though the additional speed gives them a bit of a bump. I've been planning this sequence for so goddamn long. short duration buffs, like Mora's haste and black recasting fell the greatest foe on Angel. The 350 music. feet? How did he get down here so fast? He didn't use the elevator. Dimension door? The strategic withdrawal unit can be launched several directions from his hangar. To the atrium, down to the core, or up to the surface. The room is 50 feet high, 100 feet wide, <laughs> and pretty damn long. That is a huge room. The walls of the massive chamber are just a ceiling-to-floor waterfall of lava. Oh, God. The Always flow a good is sign. pretty smooth and controlled, and the splash zone is less than five feet. But the room seems to be heat shielded, and the ground is not lava. That's the important thing. There's also a large, round, active portal with a small ramp up to it. Where is he? Your spell points you directly at the portal, though your keen deductive sense tells you that if he had been transported anywhere by a portal, the spell wouldn't point 
at the portal. It would stop working if out of range. There's room behind it? Yeah, it's like 30 feet high. So what happens if he doesn't stabilize it? Probably astral plague. We're okay Here right now, but if we don't contain we it and it goes off, we'll go. probably fry all the Arctic. Yeah. Poor penguins. The Arctic? You don't seem to understand. This is the polar nexus, the most powerful nexus the Atari has ever discovered. These ley lines travel all across the continent. It'll split the world in two? Unfortunately, it took so long to finally get down here that we've missed the volcanic maxima by a couple days. There should still be enough energy to radiate most of the continent. At least the northern half. Don't worry guys, he's monologuing, we've got this. He steps out from behind the portal, or rather, he straightens up. Oh, he's huge. Gargantuan. Its space is 4x4. Four four. I knew it would be a big f***ing mech. The strategic withdrawal unit, though not literally stitched together from regular golems, has many parts clearly based on the standard golem designs. For example, its left arm heavily resembles the weapon of a fire suppression system. It also has huge mecha wings. What happens if we dimensional anchor the portal? You want me to knowledge arcana? Your guess is the dagger's magic is too small to affect something of that size and power. If you could cobble together a dimensional anchor-like effect closer to that magnitude, you estimate about 30% it shuts down, 50% of some kind of dimensional catastrophe, and you're leaving 20% for the who the hell knows. Not bad odds. Around the shoulder area, a pair of Those are bad odds. Just power up. Twin shield generators? I shoot him for 29. You do 29 damage to his shield's temporary hit points. I so wish I had Ballista Throw prepared to throw him in the lava. All you have to do is stand still and concentrate for five straight minutes, change out the maneuver, and then rejoin the fight. We're hasted. I'll searing charge him. I literally turn myself into a spear using the dagger as the tip. You realize he still has a good sized temp HP shield. It's important that this fight is based so much anchor. on the Actually, shields that the thing has, because shit. of course, so fast, by the time we get to, to this stage in the, in the dungeon, it was safe to assume that Epsilon's actual hit points, that like one one quarter of all the damage oh, yeah. that he was taking for real higher than would be very low. Well, he saves against your strike. You deal nine damage, but are still not through the shields, so he is not dimensional anchor. Like a Deflected 60 shields around. Flung out of your hands, clattering to the stone yeah. floor. That, I'm not that say handles it's most of the damage. Why? If it didn't activate, then why does it fly away? I'm using it as a weapon. You just went full force into something that didn't give at all. And, like, I don't know. Just seems cool. Maybe okay. questionable Next ruling time, on this I'll one, but I don't think it's important. You did also learn that his shield will have fight to be time, down to teleport away him. time. He should get an attack of opportunity, though. Swinging this blade that looks like several of those flatbed haulers stacked end to end, <laughs> he deals 26 damage to you, plus two polar on charges. There are the charges. It's more smashing than chopping, really. Yeah, against something its own size, it would be a cutting weapon. It's a little sharpened, but against normal sized enemies, it's really just crushing. Also, as the blade clangs against the metal, you are pretty sure that thing can hit multiple squares at once. Okay, okay. separate guys. <laughs> Mora hits him with targeting rate, so everyone gets plus three to hit. For this round? Some, for some people have complained about the echoes, wow. but the echo is 100% intentional. It's only in like the time, in character in the giant room shots. If he has DR and the temp HP, we'll never get through. I'm hoping we can target the shield generators. Can we, or are they treated as part of his body? You'll find out when you try. Graven doesn't find out, though. With a slew of terrible rolls, he can't score a single hit on a shielded, armored escape pod. Uh, uh, escape pod, my ass. Just cast a spell. At least it always works. Liz's turn. Once again, Liz is not sure how to approach this situation. <laughs> Give her the wand. Let her zap it's so the big. This the room is death. Fight. I got two charges when the sword hit. Have Liz deal with them. Okay, sure. I'm no healer. Liz seems quite unsure about the thing, but it's pretty much point and click, and she's going to. If there was a TDDC video game and you give Liz the wand, she would have to say, "I'm no healer." Size, which isn't a scorpion. Liz moves up to get into the rod's sixty-foot range. She's going to stay on the ground for now. She's aware she can fly. She's not too dumb to fly, but she's more comfortable on the ground. And plus, you showed it to spread out, and if everyone else is airborne, then staying low is spread out. The rod removes little one's charges, healing him a small amount. Come on, bring it. Bring it. No, it's supposed to hit me. This body's really more beta style, but it does have some appeal. Didn't we fight beta? Didn't we kill beta? What's your name? Epsilon. They're so rude. Well, we've just been just because it's trying to kill off was the first. a million people. He didn't quite make it. I don't know, hundreds of thousands of people, minimum. So we never met Alpha? We just assumed. 
we've heard some Greek letters. He's going to whack you and move. Hits you for 23 and another two charges. Then you get an attack of opportunity. Ah, no. Then he puts his other hand on a portal and vaults over to here. Come on, he's that agile? I know he's got little wing thingies, but he's got wings. Then these two little things pop up, and he hits you and Rainbow Dash with his targeting beam. He it is pretty Metal Gear. It <laughs> charges. I could nice move. But no, wait. It's a teleport. I can't do it down here. You can try. You actually can do it down here. This is the portal area. Teleportation spells aren't hampered here. We have to dimensional anchor him then. Black Knight's moves into flanking position, dealing 29 damage to his shields, which we charged at the start of Epsilon. It's convenient that the you logic, which makes sense, down. also so allows them to use People their own powers the in, the, when the shields are down, <laughs> in the zone for the boss fight. The generators. Uh, another 28 damage? You have almost broken through the resistance. One more. Damn it. Helm? No. But I ran for nine. I just kick it. Nine? breaks through. It gets reduced a small amount by DR, but finishes off the shields and deals one damage to his body. Ooh, one damage! Dash moved to block line of sight between the golem and Draven. We're just gonna let her get hit? She has more hit points than I do. She can take one hit. There's nowhere she can hide anyway. Well, maybe you can hide behind her. And I tell Liz, if you don't use the rod on her, I'll shove that rod up your ass. Keep that that's horse alive. Hey, thank you, little one. That's that's very helpful for morale. AC twenty seven. It has a respectable touch AC. <laughs> yes, Quill is like have all that. You for rolled a, a drop two. Of blood. How do you get twenty seven <laughs> plus seventeen to hit plus two bane plus two flanking plus three targeting ray plus one haste? Take thirty seven damage. The targeting ray is a big help in boss fights. Okay, then second attack thirty three damage. That actually destroys one of the shield generators. 31 damage. Ow. If you didn't have reach, I'd say you can't hit both of them, but you're good. Guess who just became target number one? Little one snatches the drop dagger while soaring past right up into a brutal sword attack, but he barrels onward, plunging the blade into the huge mecha head for seven damage. It does DR some of it, but not all. He takes two damage and is dimensional anchor. Mora uses her bard song to inspire greatness in Little One for 16 short duration no hit points. Teleporting this two time. To hit. What? Give it to Angel. You're ripping the shit out of it. I still have heart seeker charges. I get plus one to hit and damage if I move within 30 feet, but then I'd be within 30 feet of that thing. Choosing to stay in cover rather than risk a point blank shot, Draven fires over top of the massive horse, missing his first shot by one. He still deals 15 and 19 damage, though each hit is reduced by 5 by his DR. <laughs> God damn it. The generator is still functioning. Barely. Ignoring the shot that missed, if just the plus one damage from point blank shot had bled into the other attacks. Do you want Liz to fly up and pop that pimple over there, or follow the previous orders and <laughs> Liz's, Liz's expression is like, you know you want, eh? I can kill it. Yeah, you should heal Draven. Rainbow Dash can take a hit. I consider flying back into the elevator, so Liz hovers closer and uses the rod to remove all Draven's charges, though the healing itself is wasted on just one point of damage she has suffered. First thing on Epsilon's turn, the artillery beam goes off and hits Rainbow Dash for... <laughs> I like that Rainbow animation. Dash. That's who had the charges. So she takes 98 damage. Oh, she has 53 hit points left. I would have been at two. And that's because of my plus four con amulet. She has 171 max HP. She's pretty tough. She's got to get out of there now, though. Though if he kills her, not only are we raising her, but I'm gonna his and <laughs> Epsilon's one remaining shield generator refreshes the shield back up to 30, and he blasts a cone of cold from Angel so down to Raven and Rainbow Dash. 40 damage, reflex 18 for half. Does he get a bonus for cover? I love the uh, head opening up to a beam, though. Raven plus two to his save versus cone of cold like because ass. he's hiding behind a giant Rainbow Dash. Plus two? That's not much. Better than nothing. 18. Wow, the plus two save did it. Cool. And I will remember, finally, to use my Ring of Mystic Defiance to prevent 10 spell damage. Oh, Everyone yeah. hit by the cone gains one charge, whether you save or not, feel the wrath. Then he's going to spin around and hit both Little One and Black with one sword. Tetris Blade. I'm opened up, by the way. Yeah, you're not trying to block it. You want him to hit you. You're just trying to get hit? He hasn't seen the power of Sirius. Okay, then he hits you. You each take 31 and two charges. 
Black's counter damage deals 22, virtually knocking out the remaining shields before Epsilon's turn is even over. Then, since you two are still clustered close together, he'll designate Draven and Rainbow Dash again. A 10-foot beam sweeps... It's hard for him to miss with a touch attack. And yet, he misses Draven. Okay, well, I Impressive. roll the number of charges, and Rainbow Dash gets... Seven. I saw that roll. That means we could actually get up to <laughs> ten. For anyone questioning my sanity and fairness, I did know you would have the rod for this fight. Not only would you have the Reconstructor to partially counter the charges, but you fought the artillery golems first, so you'd understand the mechanic. I hit, hit, hit possible crit? Can I crit him? No. Aww. It'll be nice when we ever get to fight a fleshy creature. You guys should all buy items that let you crit against constructs, since you just fought like all the golems and there probably won't be any for a long time. Black is beating him down and kicks him right in the face. How does it feel to be weaker than serious? It's no surprise that you have to compare me to gods. Wait, let me rephrase that. <laughs> should I like wall of stone the portal? Jim said it's all staticky looking. It'd probably be a horrible thing to go through. Probably. If he even can while anchored. Rainbow Dash moves in and kicks for a hefty 17. Then Angel ravages it, taking full advantage of the targeting ray, Heartseeker <laughs> amulet, and the gargantuan damage boost from the Fell the Greatest Foe. Is it bloodied? Yes. But as soon as it yeah, hits Black, Black, Black gave two him new a shield bit generators too emerge from his body there. and instantly refresh a new 60 hit point shield. Mora chips away at the shield while Liz rods Rainbow Dash, removing More 8 damage charges and healing 28 damage in the process. Damn, Max. If he just refreshed the shields out of turn, but he's going to act again soon to refresh them again, Mora got them down to half. Yeah, attacking will do nothing. I'm going to adamantine my weapon. That is plus five damage when his shields are down. If they're up, it does nothing. Right, but I'm one of the last to act, so the shields should always be down by my turn. Now he's going to artillery beam you, because you have four charges from being sorted, <laughs> like just and you flip take it, face 66 him. damage. Wow. How's your health? He's getting low. And I can't just five foot over a heel, because I'll still be in his reach. My concentration's not that good. He hasn't missed an attack yet, so it's not a good gamble that he'd miss an attack of opportunity. It is a sword the size of a flatbed truck, made of four smaller flatbed trucks. It'll almost be a shame to kill you. You've made things so much easier. It's so annoying. Such a jerk. He can't move, then Kona Cold, then move. And he could if he wasn't dimensional anchor. You guys are spread out now, so he designates Angel for nine, giving her a total of 10 charges. Then he smashes Black and Little One for another 30 damage. Are you still standing? I immediate heal him, regardless. That's going to leave you standing either way. It depends how much he rolls. Ooh, it takes one less attack of opportunity if you go down. 2d4, no bonuses, you get six. Well, of my 159 hit points, I've taken 158, and that's counting the 16 Mora gave me. Well, counting the short-term hit points? Yes, all his hit points are short-term right now. That's the problem. Yeah, pretty much. I'm actually at minus 15 in a few rounds when the bard power wears off. Epsilon moves, provoking a lot of attacks of opportunity, taking more than 20 damage each from the melee heroes, instantly shredding his shields, which just Ooh. refreshed for the round. And already one of his new shield units is not looking very good. When I hit him, I heal two hit points from my stance. Three hit points! I'm on my way, guys. I'm on my way. Then he rockets right into the lava, right through the molten wall. I did not see that coming. I guess submersing him in lava wouldn't have worked that's, that well. That's how it got gets here from the hangar. Like, it right, could launch from everybody. the hangar to Can here or to the, the atrium. Gate? I'm going to try that would be to through the lava. I'll help. Even if we break it and irradiate this place, that's a lot less bad than the alternative. It sounds like it could hit all of Vistria through the ley lines. If you need help breaking it, let me know. We'll see if I can deal with it first. I reach across and grab your shoulder, and I'm like, stand up, man. Black's heal spell restores a massive 130 hit points. Liz rods away the 100 damage worth of charges on Angel, while she in turn brings her disabled device skill to join Draven's used magic device, trying to stop whatever Alpha was doing to the portal. I'm wondering if there's some way to taunt him, to prioritize me over you guys. I think I did uh, Another one, little one, it went into the Master of Nine stone prestige stone. class. Shit, that's a good idea. Even as they start trying so to he was, he was working on getting panels, things from different disciplines as he went before, and then once he gets into the prestige class, he kind of has access to all of four charges for a total of 59 damage. But Epsilon's hijacked mecha doesn't properly emerge from the lava, simply using his free actions 
but using the strategic withdrawal unit's apparent immunity to magma to remain concealed for another uh, Epsilon round. 1999. Anku doesn't, it's doesn't not that Anku up. takes a souls so much, he's more in charge of making point. sure they Portal. don't get As lost and don't more stay, like, alive forever. He doesn't like the Dark Ancients for that. If he could, if he could kill the Dark Ancients and send them home, he would. begin gliding out of the lava on both sides of the room. Some flying, all This phase was much less impressive than it was supposed to be. to move toward the hero. I wonder if that's his doing or the containment failing, like those things that swarmed us in Ginneron. You could cast a wall of stone shaped to ramp lava straight onto the portal and destroy it. If we could break up the lava, uh, I don't know how many total achievements bring the lava, There were probably a couple of duplicates. I don't think I was tracking it super well. I mean, I made them up as I was going along. Even an angel investigate the portal. They can tell the portal's controls are passively powered by the heat energy, but the portal itself is drawing the elemental energy of the volcanic leyline nexus and translating it into the astral power required for a sustained teleportation gate. I'm trying to cut the power off. If we shut down this gate, he'll come at us hard. We'll kill him then. You find a maintenance panel that you are able to access, but the problem you're running into is that this thing is huge. And now that you can see inside, it's built with a radial axis of symmetry. So you can access this node here, tear it up if you want, but there are many more around the ring. How many are we talking about? Lots, like a dozen. Uh, let's say a dozen. Twelve. Ugh. Now that's your first look. It doesn't necessarily mean that's the only way to take it down. And even if it is, you aren't sure how much redundancy there is. If you take out half these nodes, would it still be operational? And even if it is, would the loss of half of the nodes reduce the effect he's trying to create? Yeah, there's a lot of map work going into this art. <laughs> no, JSS. maybe that's what he wants to do. To chart uh, we'll go, it, it took a long time. It took a long then time before I could get Angel's voice well, without uh, doing a lot it? of takes the said this thing has a copy or of his pitching my voice up like I did in the so early episode. find the receiver for his instructions. Yeah, yeah. Angel, Angel took a lot of tries. <laughs> a lot of work. Rainbow Dash kicks one of the elementals dead, but in doing so, uh, other female voices that I do, and there are like a couple of them, are not great. I'm getting Even better with that with time. Rock. If we all have to resist, just let the elemental beat on us. See what happens. The pulsing 1d6 fire damage around each of them. 5d6 cannot get through the buff Draven gave you all. Even if they stack. Right, so... Do they even have an attack at all? That's what I mean. Don't attack them, don't kill them. Who gives a shit? Just let them beat on us. That's an interesting take on it. If these things can dispel fire resistance, what happens if we throw one into the lava after him? Hit him with one. Like, if it takes out Theoretically, the fire elemental is being able to kind of dispel fire, fire resistance. resistance is a spell and then also, yeah. when they die, they leave behind a rock that could be used really to avoid the, the, the like huge fire. omega beam or whatever I called it. Protect against fire. Theoretically, That's, it was interesting. It I don't, in practice, it didn't seem to work out that interesting. And a lot of weird stuff. Liz Rod's little one, removing the last two charges in the party, black casts stone form anyway, and moves right up to the lava nearest where Draven's spell located the Dark Ancient. As I'm rushing over, you're doomed to fail, because my kin are not afraid to die. Speak for yourself. What can you do standing there? It would be really, really bad if, for example, he grabbed you and pulled you into the lava. Here's the thing. I, I don't understand. Oh yeah, Wilco, no, I, I definitely used WoW raids. Not specific nation, ones so much, but just like in general as an influence something. for planning encounters he like this. basically admitted his goal is genocide. Stone body doesn't help, but the party's 30 fire resist means the 5d6 damage zone is completely harmless. But stopping in the 10d6 zone right near the cascade of molten rock is likely to do a little damage to him, and actually trying to enter the lava could hurt quite a bit. If he does pull me that in... It's that actually looks kind of cool the with thing, uh, whatever the blending fail, mode I was using to no show courage. the goal of hiding in the lava. Hey, who's to say I don't have any? He's pretty chaste. Magma. Now. Now? <laughs> I'll move up beside him, but in the 5d6 zone. I'm stowing my shield and extending my sphere to full length, and I switch stance to Iron Guard Glare, then I ready my action for him coming out. Mora shoots down three of the Fire Elemental minions, the closest of which was more than ten feet away, out of his dispelling range. As some of them come in towards the heroes, Angel kills one with an opportunity attack before it can get in range of Draven and Liz, but its death burst does dispel Angel's fire resistance. Is Angel going to take fire damage just from being in the room? No, it appears the core room is constructed so that heat from the lava is being contained or siphoned off somehow, probably similar to how the bridges are protected. Another fire elemental sneaks in and self-destructs, <laughs> taking out Draven's resistance as well, leaving behind another chunk of black rock. But then one comes right out of the lava falls, uh, failing no, it to was 
never it was never established at the table whether Black has children. He he left it kind of open. Possibility. His proximity to lava. Yeah, you might want to back off from the lava now, or you're gonna live up to your name. Well, you guys standing right there is too tempting. You can obviously take your ready back on door from the dark ancients. Like they they recognized that with the with the creators dead, all the all the warforce were gonna die eventually. They didn't want to die. They found a way to, as they would put it, transcend. a sword that can hit four squares. First, anyone without 30 fire resistance stealing bodies from other more damage, more radiating force. off the red-hot body of the gargantuan mech. Then he brings down the massive blade to crush Black and Little One. I'll use my shield block maneuver to I'm add I'm not sure that the Tetris blade AC. really Again, made that much of an impact, but I, I like showing off the, AC like, choosing what? the template 41. every time he smashes yeah, it down. Make it miss. Oh, no. I put away my shield earlier. I can't use shield block without the actual shield. Oh. Oh, at AC 37, that's a hit then. You both take yeah, we, all, we all make mistakes and when we play charges. our characters. Then he cones nearly everyone again with his prototype fire suppression cannon. Shouldn't we get attacks of opportunity? Or he has to cast defensively if it's a spell. He's not actually spell casting though. His arm is based on the fire suppression system's cannons. Its cone of cold is a weapon for him, much like his sword. How much do we take? And by we, I mean them. It's one charge and... 54 cool damage, save Ooh. for half. That was a hell of an 11d6 Yeah, that was a rough 11 trying to work here. Then he's going to targeting beam. He can get up to two targets as long as they're no more than 10 feet apart. So he can hit Draven and Rainbow Dash again. Because of the threat of lava, I was working at the top of the portal. Okay, he'll just have to hit Liz and Angel then. I'm working near the top too. Oh, well then he'll target you and Draven. Damn it! They're actually still too far apart, working separately on the 30-foot diameter portal. So it settles on zapping just Draven for nine charges. Liz is pretty hurt now. It and settles on zapping. That was a poor line read. Fire spell. It settles on zapping. Black, who will take another 10d6 if he doesn't move out this turn. I should really move away from here because my health is low, but my instinct is to attack, to go all out. We're hasted. We have Bane. Little One has attacked him since he re-emerged. And buffs. he can tell that Epsilon added some kind of AC buff while he was back there. You were pretty much auto-hitting him before, so you probably won't miss a lot now with your main attacks, but he is harder to hit now. Despite the danger, Black only 5 foots out, still placing him in the 5d6 damage zone, because if he moved any further, he couldn't full attack this turn. An attack he does, smashing through the last of Epsilon's shields for the round, and fully pulverizing one of the two fresh shield generators. Just one more that we know of. One more, unless he has more secret ones to pop out. Gonna pop them out of his ass. Yes, he's gonna go full baboon on you. Rainbow Dash, who still has her fire resistance and flight buffs, charges across the room to kick the mech right in the shield dome for 24 damage. Mora hits right two the dome. three shots as well, despite the increased armor class, piling on more damage against the remaining no, shield e Epsilon general. does and enough crap, he doesn't get shism as full well. Full attacking, not even bothering with his searing blade boost against a lava immune golem currently radiating heat back at him. But with the shields down, he just laid into the strategic withdrawal unit, planting his spear deep in the second shield generator, and then starting to tear into the mech structure. As you're shredding it, you start to see black energy coming from some of the wounds. Right, we don't have to kill it, we just have to kill him. Forming an indistinct dark shape around the front, forming red eyes. Dimension door? That looks no good dimension too. Door from him. He's trying to hang on, but he's too far gone. Now you die a coward. Take you with me. As the Dark Ancient dissipates, the golem starts glowing white as it propels itself back into the lava. Die. Uh, Liz, heal me. Liz removes your charges. The machine doesn't get any other action this turn, but as time's ticking down, the lava in this area starts glowing white. You're not sure what makes lava glow white, but it probably isn't heat. The black does take. Ow. It was supposed to be able to use this. It was supposed to use this ability uh, in the room magic, and have them like force them to think about hiding left behind left the rocks left wall. behind by the elementals to take force. cover. I like that plan. Dispel magic. Uh, Which would have reduced but not prevented all the damage. I can put up a pretty decent wall. I can cast a thirty-foot-wide wall of force all the way up to the. Being hit by this beam would trigger all their charges and do a lot of damage. It would just be bad. All those walls are good. 
And just for the hell of it, as the beam is fading, it collapses the force wall. As the blast dissipates, the lava There's still no good rules out, reason for that. It's just cool. back into its intended path. Though you guys who are closer have to hop back from a dangerous splash of lava here. No, I'd put up my wall. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> Out of combat now, the main danger has passed, but they still need to make sure that Epsilon is meddling with the portal does not come to fruition. Can the controller hear us down here? Yo, can you shut this down? I do not currently have sufficient power to shut down the portal. With physical access through the device, it may be possible to shut the power back into my storage circuits. Repower the facility? At least temporarily. The main power source is still down. Yeah, sorry about that. Just tell us how. They already figured out that reversing blah, blah, the power stuff. could send it back down the volcanic ley lines, where Alpha expected to create a harmonic reaction, transmitting the harmful astral energy under the sea all the way to Vistria and Korostrad, if not beyond. Uh. But the controller helped guide Angel, Mora, and Draven through the process of grounding some circuits and backing up others, which are never intended yeah, that's to what handle ha that's this what happens when you make the music like that power a year in advance or something, and you're like back into planning the facility's for all that stuff. Reserves. Sure, we do that. There aren't any more of those things, are there? The only strategic withdrawal unit has been destroyed. Can we break this thing? What, the portal? He's not the only one. Didn't the others have the same ambition? Shouldn't we shut this thing down more permanently? I'm not opposed to that, but I am opposed to breaking What's things. my personal well, favorite episode? To, unless you ask me to. What is it for? This portal was designed to be the keystone of a global instantaneous... Yeah, I really don't system. know what my favorite Teleport episode would be. Circles. But then they all died off from the astral plague. That this is this have. is one of the ones I'm most proud of for sure. But that's like why the one of I, I don't know. The energy okay. this thing runs on. Can we use that? One of the things about watching the series is there are so many episodes I don't even remember good. that are like really better than I remember. Idea. Maybe we can reconfigure the portal into a focused energy beam to recharge it. I was just thinking, why are it in? But okay. That all will have so to wait for more So, one of the research. cool things As with back the, the TVC awards was um, people were voting for favorite episode and nominating favorite episode. And there was an episode I didn't even remember, but it's the one where they're all seeing, like, the, the possible oh, yeah. pictures. Hexes. <laughs> yeah, Hexes, Hexes is really good. Little guy. I need a pet. You had one before. <laughs> Seven. You might it. Want to upgrade and obviously I had to go back and watch to get footage and I was like, wait, this is awesome. Or near Polaron. Yeah, that that is, I did a, so much work for that episode. It was very cool. Have you seen the cost of the golems in the monster manual? So we can take these guys out of the facility? Those ones work anywhere. I just want to look at that crossbow. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Do you believe us now that we're on your side? Your badges were misappropriated. You are not authorized personnel. <laughs> and you caused significant damage to Polaron units and equipment. However, some of that damage was in self-defense. Some? Oh, yeah. <laughs> and you protected the world from a deadly misuse of the facility, which I was unable to prevent, and helped me regain control of the facility. Yes, I will designate you as authorized personnel. Is there any way we can convince our angels and Taran? <laughs> We're authorized. I don't want to lie to the controller. I don't think it will end well. Are we allowed to use the equipment in the secondary armory? For what purpose do you require access to that weaponry? We expect to have to travel to the Shadowfell soon. Zaheer is being held there. Yes, we have to rescue Zaheer eventually. At some point, we're going to have to fight the Vampire Kings. We're going to have to fight the f***ing Vampire Kings. You're saying that aloud? Yeah, sure. Do it. Yes, I already did. Access granted. Displayed on the back wall are 100 the magic masterwork words. silver crossbow bolts and 100 masterwork cold iron bolts. There are 9 masterwork crossbows and a 10th one which has broken down with time. Four are medium sized, five small. But Draven immediately starts identifying the one levitating in the crystal cylinder. Though it was medium sized, it would automatically resize for a small or medium creature. It's called yeah, the Jade Spider. I, I don't know that the Hex's prophecies are as awesome as the keen, another gaming comic Matrix prophecies. Because I'm not writing every side of that equation. <laughs> but. But it's currently equipped fun stuff, with though. a greater true death weapon crystal. That's ghost touch plus 1d6 damage against undead and the Crossbow ability does to so many them. things. But that's a weapon crystal, so you could take that out and stick it in any weapon if you want it. Who wielded this before? Itarn Van Helsing? Those okay, but properties. you it go back and you rewatch Hexes and Draven's immortal now, and you're like, oh shit, I get it. Bright, 
making yeah. all creatures in the cone dazzle. Yeah, for but he's, one to he hit. was immortal oh, oh, before oh, hexes, the to be fair. Has a hidden five that round chamber wasn't like a crazy prediction. Five bolts, which could all be different types. The crossbow can be reloaded normally, but you can also load the crossbow with any specific bolt from the chamber as a free action. <laughs> no, but, but watching hexes, we didn't know that. Creates a five square so, yeah, yes, even though. Area centered on the wheel, right. wherein any yeah, yes, gases or clouds are dissipated. Albtrom was after him. Uh, yeah, Albtrom was after Oluana. Plus four to saves against effects of gases and clouds. This effect can then be Then I'm just an idiot, but whatever. As a swift can you make a sword like this? Who's gonna get this thing? It was Last so cool. thing is the daylight capacitors. It has these three glowing energy tubes. Three times per day, as a swift action, you can make a ranged touch attack. Range 100, if the hit target is undead, they take 3d6 damage, or 3d8 if they're sun-sensitive undead. That's just a swift action, so you can do that and still attack or cast. Finally, once per day, it There's can so many of these powers that he just light. never uses. Cast level 10, obviously. As a swift action? No. Full searing light, still a standard action. You know, my math isn't that good, but this is worth over 100,000 gold. It's kind of an artifact. The other thing you notice, on the wall display, in addition to all those other bolts, there are five bolts displayed prominently in the middle, within Gnome's Arm's reach, with a plaque underneath written in Atari. Okay, let me get out my translation book. Oh man, we're gonna have to start another arc. Next time, on Tales from My Dear. Tomorrow when I stream the rest of the series. <laughs> uh, thanks. Thanks for everyone who hang out, hung out today, or just throughout the day, <laughs> or who's watching us later on the video on demand. Like, <laughs> this is weirdly tiring, but still pretty cool going through it all, especially with you guys getting to see your what I'm you think of things as they're going on. I'll see some ass. of you You're tomorrow, same place, ass. same time. I have a dagger. Dimensional anchor. Ugh. Dimensional anchor dagger. I have a scroll. Dimensional anchor. Okay. Uh, dimensional anchor scroll. Dimensional anchor scroll. Dimensional anchor scroll. Dimensional anchor dagger. Will anyone know what uh, this is even? Dimensional anchor dagger like, scroll. Why this is supposed to be funny in ten years? Probably not. Oh man. Yeah. Start time nine a.m. Eastern time. Whatever time that is. The other times. The, the time seems less specifically important since it goes for 15 hours. We, we we got through episodes 1 to 40 in 15 hours. Episodes 41 to 66, also 15 hours. Give or take a minute or two. <laughs> so, yeah. All right. I got to end the stream now and try and get to sleep somehow. Anyway, end the stream.